I request all the participants to kindly settle down.
Uh, very good morning, everyone. So our dignitary is on the way. We are just starting in next couple of minutes. Thanks for your kind patience. And thanks to our virtual participants who have joined us. Dr. Rajendra P. Joshi, Deputy Director General TB, Central TB Division, has joined us virtually. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us. And we are grateful for the support extended by the CTD. We are just starting in the next couple of minutes. Thank you so much, sir, for your kind patience.
A very warm welcome and a very good morning to everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I request all the participants to kindly settle down. I will Myself Tripti Agarwal, Technical Advisor, Corporate Partnerships, The Union, is your host for the event today. On behalf of the Union, Deepak Foundation, and State TBCL Gujarat, I welcome you all to this national conference on fostering partnerships to end TB. TB is one of the major health challenges India has been facing. India carries an estimated 26% of the global TB burden. India's national TB elimination program aims to meet the ambitious goal announced by the Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji of meeting TB-related SDG targets by 2025. Though TB is a communicable disease, but at the same time, it is curable. In spite of lot of progress made in the diagnostics and treatment services, we still have lot many challenges that needs to be addressed. This establishes the fact that TB is not just a health-related issue, but goes much beyond the purview of the health department. If we have to achieve the TB-related targets, we need better diagnosis, shorter treatment, access to services, better nutrition status, and a stigma-free society. For all this, partnerships are the way forward. With this background, to discuss upon the challenges, possibilities, opportunities, as well as deliberations for partnerships, we are all here today at this national conference. The objectives of the conference are deliberations on the challenges and requirements of the program, sharing corporate engagement models and future options in TB care, and discussions on partnerships as a way forward to reach the last mile. Sharing the context of the conference, I now request the dignitaries to raise the dice and join us for the lamp lighting and inaugural session. May I kindly request Dr. Jay Pawar, Director Deepak Foundation, PhD in, PhD in Zoology. Dr. Jay Pawar has nearly 24 years of experience in implementing natural resource management based pro development projects ranging from large scale multi sectorial water resource development, animal husbandry, and development initiatives. Dr. Amasha, Senior TB Advisor, Health Office USAID India. He is a senior public health professional with 15 years of work experience managing large, complex, and integrated programs focused on infection diseases. He is a medical doctor with a specialization in public health. Dr. Amasha, please. <laughs> Mr. Mohammed Shadab, Senior Manager, Corporate Partnerships, The Union. He is a postgraduate in development extension from Jamia Media Hispania University, trained in various countries in partnerships and workplace interventions. Dr. Kuldeep Singh Sachdeva, the Regional Director of the Union Southeast Asia, has joined us virtually. He is a medical doctor with over 32 years of professional experience. More recently, Dr. Dr. Sachdeva held the post of Deputy Director General Program Manager, NTEP Program at CTD. Thank you, Dr. Sajdeva, for joining us virtually. <laughs> Dr. Rajendra P. Joshi has also joined us virtually. He is the Deputy Director General from the Central TB Division. He holds huge experience in healthcare delivery, currently heading the NTEP program as DDGTB. <laughs> May I request Dr. Upendra Gandhi, Regional Deputy Director Up Madhodra to kindly join us on the stage. <laughs> Shri Deepak Mehta ji, the Chairman and Managing Director, Deepak Group of Companies and Trustee Deepak Foundation. 
He holds business acumen, leadership skills, and dynamics uh, enabled DNL to take six strides forward and achieve many milestones in last 40 years. Thank you for joining us today, sir. We also have Shri A.M. Tiwari Ji and Shri Bachanidi, yeah, and Bachanidi Pani Ji who will be joining us in some time. I request the dignitaries to kindly do the lamp lighting on it, please. Now, we have Sri A.M. Tibari sir, the senior advisor Deepak groups also amongst us. I kindly request her, request her to please join us on the dais. Okay. Proceeding further, we go ahead with a green welcome of our dignitaries. I request Dr. Jay Pawar to kindly welcome Sri A.M. Tiwari Ji. May I request Dr. Akash Lal to kindly welcome Dr. Upendra Gandhi. Mr. Muhammad Shadab to kindly welcome Shri Deepak Mehta ji. <laughs> Dr. Jay Pawar, kindly welcome Dr. Amar Shah, please. <laughs> Dr. Mukesh, kindly welcome Dr. Jay Pawar. Okay, Ms. Sushma, kind, kindly do the honor. And Mr. Shardul, kindly welcome Mr. Muhammad Shada, please. And thank you to Dr. Joshi and Dr. Sachdeva for joining us virtually. I'm going to kindly invite Dr. Jay Pawa, Director, Deepak Foundation, for the inaugural address, please. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you. 
A very good morning to all of you. Uh, it's a pleasure to welcome all of you here today. I take this opportunity to welcome the August uh, dignitaries on the dais. Uh, Shri M. Tiwari sir, Shri D.C. Mehta, uh, Shri Rajendra Joshi, uh, Shri Sanjay Mattu, Shri K. Sajdeva, uh, who have joined us virtually, uh, Dr. Mohammed uh, Shadab, Dr. Amar Shah, Dr. Gandhi. We also welcome uh, Shri S.K. Anand sir and Shrimati Archana Joshi, our former director and advisor. Uh, it's, I'm feeling extremely happy today to have all of you. You have, uh, you know, come, uh, you've taken out your time and you are, you are with us today here um, at this uh, national conference on tuberculosis elimination for fostering partnerships. Uh, Deepak Foundation has been working in the past in tuberculosis, uh, you know, through various of its initiatives like its mobile health units, hospitals, and other, you know, clinical services interventions through other nutritional interventions. Uh, in 2020, we started uh, working in a big way on a large scale uh, when we entered into Madhya Pradesh uh, through the NTEP. And we are working currently in uh, 22 districts. And now, you know, uh, we look forward to expanding all these services and contribute to the Honorable Prime Minister's goal of TB elimination uh, by forging partnerships, looking towards collaborations. So we hope that whether it is the corporate world or it is the government, civil society organizations and academic institutions, if we can all come together and, uh, you know, create certain, develop certain programs, uh, collaborative programs wherein there's a lot of research, implementation, um, possibilities, and uh, how we can, you know, all come together to improve our services and expand our work uh, and reach out to all those people who are not yet reached out, you know, in certain far-flung areas, uh, reaching out for t uh, TB elimination is still very much a, a concern. So our idea is that, you know, take a step uh, to bring everyone together. And this is, uh, today we hope is, you know, one opportunity where we have taken to bring all the different sets of people together, eminent people working in their own fields whether it is the corporate world or, you know, senior functionaries from the government, international agencies, and also academicians, researchers. Uh, we have an opportunity here today to deliberate, to interact, and conceptualize certain partnerships. So I hope uh, we will be able to achieve the objective of this uh, uh, conference today. Uh, I hope, apart from, you know, the panel discussions, we have eminent speakers today. So we would like to hear um, all of them have their ideas. There are certain researchers who have, you know, who are also going to be talking about their um, uh, inventions. We have civil society organizations. There are so many corporates who have been taking up TB elimination program in their own, uh, you know, uh, areas through CSR programs. So I hope we can all uh, deliberate a lot there's also an opportunity to network over lunch or, you know, apart from that also, you know, we, we hope to take the partnerships and interactions further. Once even the conference is over, there's an opportunity for a lot of interactions because we hope we will forge good relationships, working relationships that, you know, we can carry forward. Uh, so um, with this, I uh, end my welcome address. I hope we uh, all enjoy listening to the eminent speakers today and uh, look forward to a um, lot of interesting talks today. We have a couple of other interventions as well, which we will be, you know, announcing uh, as the um, uh, proceeds go on. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am. Moving on, we have Dr. Amar Shah, the Senior TB Advisor, Strategy and Innovations, Health Office, USA, India. Over to you, sir, for your welcome and for your address, please. Uh, respected dignitaries on uh, of the dais, uh, uh, warm greetings from USAID, India. Uh, 
I think at USAID India, we are really uh, feel proud and fortunate to be kind of you know, associated with the uh, TB control program of government of India uh, since more than now two decades. And uh, uh, overall, I think as a philosophy, uh, USAID believes in partnership and the innovation. That has been the forefront where we duly, truly understand that like uh, what we bring to the table uh, is more of a catalytic support where collectively whether we can improve some of the strategies which can be kind of useful for the country to scale up. Uh, I think for TB control, uh, something which I learned over my uh, career is it's a more complex development challenge. And uh, this is something which you need uh, uh, just diagnose and treat strategy is not going to work. Uh, this is an area where you will require a multi-stakeholder engagement and a collective wisdom and efforts will be required. And in this step, I think uh, uh, we truly congratulate uh, Government of India on you know, thinking so deep on it, uh, taking strides, and I think the uh, world is actually looking at various models and learning from Government of India and the state. Uh, I also feel that like uh, we we have a truly champions like uh, when I see uh, state of Gujarat which has been the uh, forte where philanthropy is in our blood and I just want to share that because uh, I am also alumni of MS University and so I also feel nostalgic and like so almost ho uh, homecoming and uh, so this is where you no know, people are really looking for where uh, the TB related innovations and support to the needy patients and the probably interventions which can actually reduce the TB transmission, something collectively we can kind of see. And I'm really happy to see the overall gathering here where we have a really mix of you no know, few of the so known spaces for me, but I think the it's a collective uh, where the industry, the technocrats, the actual public health, and the uh, people, the uh, the wing of the entire uh, the uh, philosophical guidance and 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 the the partnership between the uh, both uh, central and state level government, uh, where they really unite for this cause. Uh, also, I think we feel very proud to be associated with the union who is our technical partner in this initiative and they bring these technical ideas. Uh, so under the banner of uh, uh, 75 uh, cities for 75 uh, uh, corporate places. So I think this is something which we are striving for this month and we really want to congratulate uh, uh, Deepak Foundation uh, who have uh, organized this excellent gathering uh, because something uh, you are um, uh, actually providing the platform for people to organize and put their thoughts together. And I'm really looking forward that this kind of you know, consultations would not only infuse some of the ideas, but I think where uh, we can collectively work and uh, go to the uh, end mile and actually achieve the TBL emission by 2025. Nothing is impossible in that sense, and this is what I also, uh, over the years, I have uh, experienced, that something which we were not thinking of, let there, it will happen in 10 years, and we actually see that on ground happening in one year. So let's do it and end TB collectively. Thank you so much for having us here. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Dr. Shah for your address. We have Dr. K.S. Sajdeva, Regional Director, USEA, from the Union Office, who has joined us virtually. Over to you, sir, for your address. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you, Dr. Uh, dignitaries on the dais, officers, and present virtually. Dr. Joshi, the Deputy Director General of Central TV Division. Dr. Sanjay Kumar Matu, uh, the Additional Deputy Director General Sensitivity Division. Mr. Deepak Mahata, Trustee of the Deepak Foundation. Dr. Amar Shah from USAID. Dr. Jay Pawar, 
Dr. Upendra Gandhi, Mr. Tiwari, Mr. Pani, and uh, my colleagues from the union. So it's quite a proud moment, and also we stand uh, at a point in history where we are looking towards TB elimination in your future. So TB, which is a disease uh, 10 to 20,000 years old, we are only talking of elimination in the last five years. So what is it that which has given us confidence to talk about elimination since last five years? So there are three aspects to it. One is the science.
ਤੇ ਦੇ ਕੋਲ ਰੋਲ ਕਰ ਸਕਦੇ ਹੋ ਜੀ ਹਰ ਇੱਕ ਆ ਮੇਰੀ ਕੰਫਰਟੇਬਲ ਦਾ ਜੀ ਜੀ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਤੋਂ ਮੈਂ ਪਸੰਦ ਕਰਦੀ ਆਪਣੇ ਨੂੰ ਤਾਂ ਸਹੀ ਹੋ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਉਹ ਮੁੱਦਾ ਆਈ ਕਮਰਸ ਨੂੰ ਤੇ ਜੀ ਅਗਰ ਉਹ ਜਾਂ ਮੈਂ ਤੇ ਜੀ ਉਹ ਦੇ ਸਪੋਰਟ ਆਫ ਮਾਈ ਟੀਮ ਫੋਰ ਟੈਕਨਸ ਐਂਡ ਨੈਸ਼ਨਲ ਟੀਵੀ ਇਨਵੈਸਟੀਗੇਸ਼ਨ ਫੋਰ ਅਨਿਵਲਿੰਗ ਡਿਪਾਰਟਮੈਂਟ ਸੋ ਵਿਦ ਥਿਸ ਆਈ ਵਿਲ ਅਗੇਨ ਲੁਕ ਫਾਰਵਰਡ ਟੂ ਵੈਰੀ ਅਦ ਪ੍ਰੋਸੀਡਿੰਗ ਆਫ ਦ ਵਰਕਸ਼ਾਪ ਐਂਡ look for not a very healthy or outcome of those good things over to you sir thank you so much sir it was great hearing from you our next dignitary is dr rajendra p joshi the deputy director general tb from the central tv division who has joined us virtually over to you sir uh, thank you madam good morning all namaste uh, i respected
Thank you so much, sir. With the key messages from the dignitaries, we now move forward for felicitating few of the corporate partners, acknowledging their efforts and contribution in TB care. For the recently launched campaign, Yes, We Can End TB, 75 corporates at 75 cities in the state of Gujarat, lot of corporates have come forward with active participation, and we take this opportunity to acknowledge the efforts of three of them. May I request the Lions Club Gujarat to kindly come forward and receive their acknowledgement from Dr. Jay Pawar, please. Representative from Nerolek Kansai Bharuj to kindly come, come forward and I request Mr. Mohammad Shadab kindly felicitate the <laughs> so you along with sir can felicitate sir Tiwari sir please. Please. Representative from JK Lakshmi Seaman Surat to kindly come forward. I request Sri Deepak Mehta sir to kindly felicitate the corporate. <laughs> Representative from Wellspan Gujarat. Do we have from Wellspan? Yeah, please ma'am. May I request Dr. Amar Shah, kindly felicitate the corporate, please. <laughs> May I request Representative from Rajshri Polifil Bharuj. Yeah. I kindly request Mr. Tiwari, please. Sir, please kindly felicitate. No, Thank you. I request Ms. Minu to kindly take felicitation for the corporates. They are on their way and yet to, uh, yet to come. Ms. Minu, please. I request Dr. Upendra kindly felicitate for our representatives from Kiran Hospital, Jubilant Bhartiya Foundation. Thank you so much, sir.
May I kindly request everyone to come forward for the group photo. Okay, we will take the group photo in a while. May I request Deepak Mehta, sir, to kindly come forward for the van launch. I request kindly, sir, to share a few words about the van. Yeah. Maybe I'll speak everything. Yes. Dr. Upendra Gandhi ji, Dr. Amar Shah, Shadab ji, Tiwari ji, Jai, Ms. Anand, Archana and friends. So my, my grandfather died of TB and that was when my father was 10 years old. Perhaps that was the only time that when we grew up, we heard about something called TB, that it could take lives of people. And then there were times when if suppose somebody was suspected of TB, he would go to a hill station and stay there for three months, four months. Aapne je kahiye, sukhi hawa ma reva javanu. Over the years, as TB uh, did, sometimes we did feel that it is coming in control and sometimes you suddenly found that TB was uh, again spreading. I, uh, during these times, I entered the world of uh, business and uh, Deepak Nitrite, a uh, chemical company that uh, makes uh, various chemical products was what uh, I started looking after. Somewhere along in my career, the other time that I came close to something to do with TB was when we were talking about pharma products and products like ethambutol, uh, which was being used for TB. And uh, the future, even ethambutol was now getting to be less and less effect effective on TB. Of course, we had been always focused on how the growth of the products will be and therefore what will be the growth of our chemical products to these pharma companies. Over the years, Deepak uh, grew from uh, various chemical intermediates who started looking at uh, pharma intermediates and supplying them and grew in different parts of the country. During these times, we started looking at uh, uh, social work, Ex just like uh, Amarji, Dr. Amar Shah mentioned. A lot of Gujarati uh, uh, industrialists or even businessmen would love to also do something philanthropically. And uh, as Deepak also started a uh, venture in creating a small facility to treat a medical uh, as an OPD unit near our factory. It was supposed to be just a small chemical, a small medical uh, unit taking care of the patients from the villages. But this provided me an opportunity to start looking at even things like medical and social work in the same way as I would look at industry, as I would look at business. And from working on social projects with what we call as just the heart, the feeling, we started applying our mind. And one of the first things that we would do is like in industry, you want to develop a product, you want to first go ahead and do a market survey. 
and you start with that you start with what is the goal that you want to achieve and then you keep on analyzing how good you are against that goal you put in matrix to confirm that yes you are on the right track sometimes if you find that no the goal the purpose for which you put your you are putting efforts is not going to serve the goal you change the purpose that's what we do in industry and that's what we started doing in the foundation in the social work a small reason i might say uh, was an issue of working with the government and the government had a program called a 20 point program when the one of the f- needs of the hour was how do i reduce or uh, uh, reduce population and so we we used to have january february march three months of the year the doctors would come from the government hospital we would uh, give our hospital to them and then there would be operations for uh, ensuring that um, uh, the operations would be taken care would be there and we would wonder that uh, why is it that we have more children we are not asking these question is it just because uh, we that is the only means of pleasure and we actually constituted a team to do research to go through village to village to ask questions during these times in the villages of gujarat we found that when we asked these questions one of the answers was you know there is such a high level of infant mortality that we are never sure how many children will survive number 2 even if children survive there was a high amount of children who are getting to be handicapped by polio and that way as we saw that out of every 5 or 6 children only one or two children were strong enough and therefore there was this urge to see that okay how can i have more children so that i have at least a few good children who will take care of my family my future and so deepak actually worked in a different direction we started saying what can we do to actually reduce infant mortality when we started this program by taking the dyes or the midwives to train them how to do hygienic uh, uh, birth of a child we worked to change the habits of people where they used to feel that child birth should be only in the cow sheds because it's not supposed to be a uh, good to telling them no it has to be in the most aseptic areas and in fact two years later the sensor said that while the doctors were here doing operations to reduce uh, number of children born suddenly there was a r- increase in the number of children and that was more because lesser children were dying from then on the concept of what industry what we do in industry we started practicing in the uh, social work we got this dye lady to say that okay as and when she gets to have uh, take care of the mother and bring the mother to the hospital and there is a safe delivery we will give her a sari the next time if she is able to convince the young parents to keep space between two children is the second child born we would give her another sari when the child that was born the first time and he wins in a healthy bomb baby competition we would give the same dye a third sari that yes you are continuing to take care and so the whole concept of what we were doing in industry that how do we consistently be together with the family to ensure the health is uh, getting there is what we started uh, is the thing that we started in the foundation and since then uh, of course uh, a lot of work had to be done uh, at the foundation for a large number of people to improve the quality of life 
constantly the thought process has been that improvement of life has to be a holistic experience it cannot be that you just choose one particular area and everything will be all right so on one side when we looked at uh, issues like uh, uh, safe motherhood we were also then integrating it with anganwadis where the child as it grows <coughs> its development is improved significantly its mental development is improved significantly to the time when the child uh, and on the other hand we started feeling that if the parents the mothers are well to do or at least better off and a bit higher over the poverty line they will take care of children's health better so the third wing of deepak foundation started looking at what can we do to have self help groups work with mothers and it is therefore it is not only the desire to do social work but it is also the desire to see how we can replicate best practices that we do in industry to do the same over here in social work and today i do find that the government is also doing similar years ago the, there used to be government programs uh, announced and year after year after year the world would be the same but in this last 5 years we are finding an excellent uh, approach by the government maybe they have been guided also by some of the uh, best advisors but any and every program they have been taking it is detailed out to the mag to the maximum potential inform uh, data they have been also seeing that whenever they are working with uh, um, ngos or uh, institutes such as deepak that it is not doling out funds or support but it is really putting in some sort of a targets some sort of a uh, performance based uh, contribution and so it is keeping each of the partners constantly involved in demonstrating performance be it the hospitals that we are now working at jharkhand with the state government there where it was not that the government said you please come and run the hospital and this is the money we will give every month hey, to take care of the doctors and other fees but they have been saying okay based on how many patients you are covering we are going to be giving giving you the money based on how many patients you have treated based on how many patients have become well and in the same way today the way the tv program is being uh, practiced uh, uh, by the government is a phenomenal lesson in management right from the center to the state to the region at any and every stage data is being collected data is being reviewed per partners are getting to be paid based on performance of each of the data constant review is being taking place by the government authorities with the partners and constantly the focus is there to see where we are in terms of the goal in the last 5 7 years in particular i would share that there have been a number of schemes that the government has come up with where their execution capability have been par excellent be it the jandan yojana we might say these are all political things but frankly the way they have been executed and they have started touching each and every person in the uh, country is when you look at it from outside the country you would feel certainly feel that it is a phenomenal work that has been done and today uh, in these last two three programs whether it was the covid challenge that we had and now whether it is a tv challenge the phenomenal way in which the government is partnering with private sector with social uh, ngos to execute projects to implement and to ensure that performance is achieved certainly goes a long way not only for the benefit of the country but i'm sure the world is looking at us to see how can they do these things the simple thing like the qr code that we see today nowhere else in the world can such a way of bringing back banking 
to the lowest of the players in the society can be achieved. So in this, today uh, I am really happy that the government uh, has been very, very proactively working and very uh, working in a very organized manner. I am really happy with uh, uh, the, the partners today who are really guiding us to really see how we move forward and uh, are working really well in an integrated manner to work to eradicate TB. I'm also very happy today that all the segments of players, be it the government, be it the uh, groups that are helping, be it the people who, the corporates which are contributing, or be it the corporates which are also working on innovative solutions that could really help to improve upon this uh, identification and solution for TB. Uh, they are all here together and I am sure it is going to be an effort of all of us together that will ensure that we are able to eradicate TB sooner than later. We all are here for doing uh, good to the society but I think being together we are going to be working for the greatest good for the humanity. So we are really very happy that all of us are together under one uh, on one platform to discuss the various ways and also find out how we can integrate and network. In our small uh, humble way, uh, Deepak uh, uh, has been working uh, also on several other initiatives like a number of mobile vans across the country to see how uh, we can contribute towards improving health of people. And one concept that we thought was that why not while we have mobile vans where the doctors have been going to places why not keep one van which has all the instruments and we are able to then have these camps so that people may not be able to reach hospitals for all their tests etc but for some of the diagnostic needs like x-rays etc can we really have a mobile van which can go to these places and check out uh, yeah, in terms of uh, giving diagnostic services. TB being one of the prime areas where Deepak has been working, we therefore have been, uh, have planned that this, uh, today we will be also uh, inaugurating the Nidan van, which will uh, be uh, having all the diagnostic uh, kits inside, including the X-ray machines, and which will as the other mobile vans keep on looking at different places then ensure that uh, once in a fortnight we are able to collect all those people who may have to be checked for TB. This Nidan van will be going there getting the uh, people tested also for things like TB and some of the other areas so that we, can, we don't have to have the patients come to the hospitals we have the hospital really go to the patients. Besides the uh, TB, uh, we also plan to see that uh, another major challenge that uh, people face, which is anemia, whatever ways the Nidanven can help to really uh, give support to diagnosing, analyzing and supporting. These are the initiatives that we will be continuing to take. So, uh, I would like if uh, Tiwari ji can uh, help uh, uh, get the Nidan when started along with Dr. Trivedi. Is there a way in which we can... Sir, we will have to... Uh, so, we have to... Or do we want to do it later then? During lunch time or something, okay. right? And that's also, so, we can right? do it. So we are doing it digitally right now and maybe during lunch time Tiwariji we can uh, yesterday I was told that Mansukh Bhai was uh, doing a similar job with uh, Apollo tires who were uh, wanting to put uh, 
uh, trucks with uh, the banners of TB and they brought in some 25 or 55 trucks. So Mansukh Bhai wanted all the trucks physically to be there. Finally they could get only three trucks in. Five trucks in. So. Shall we? Do we have to do anything or it will happen? Okay. TB Harega Desh Jitega. Thank you. Jahan Nahi Hai Swat Sevaon Ka Koi Namo Nishan Vaha Pohunche Ghi Aapke TB Ki Sabhi Jaachon Ki Sumilaya Nikar Hamari Diagnostic Vain Nidhan Ji Haan Deepak Foundation TB Ko Bharat Abhiyan Ke Liye Satat Priyas Rat Hai Aur Isi Sankhla Mein Gaon Gaon Tak TB Ki Jaach Ki Sumilaya Pohunchani Ke Liye Hum La Rahe Hai एक सर्व सुविधा युक्त मोबाइल डायग्नोस्टिक वैन जिसका नाम है निदान इस वैन में संभावित तीन मरीजों के ट्रू नेट व एक्सरे की जांच सुविधाएं उपलब्ध है साथ ही हम टीवी मरीजों की आंखों की जांच भी करेंगे वो भी एकदम निशुल्क धन्यवाद So we have the van flag of ceremony also in person that will be taken care of in during the lunch time. Thank you all the dignitaries for joining us for the inaugural session. Thank you all. You may kindly join us. Thank you everyone.
the situation. Many thanks to our dignitaries to do the honor and with this we come to concluding the inaugural session and moving towards the session one for having the panel discussion on challenges in the program and support required. The session will be moderated by Dr. Amar Shah, USAID India. I request Dr. Mukesh Giri to kindly welcome the eminent speakers and the moderator for the session, please. Kindly welcome Dr. Amar Shah. We have Dr. Sanjay Kumar Mattu, Additional DDG Central TV Division, NTEP from the Government of India. He is one of the eminent panelists of the session and he has joined us virtually. May I kindly request Mr. Aditya Diwari to kindly join us on the dais. He is a state PPM coordinator in NTEP Madhya Pradesh. Kindly request Mr. Mukesh to welcome Mr. Aditya. Another panelist is Dr. Hardik Nakshiwala, WHO consultant from Gujarat. Dr. Mukesh, kindly welcome Dr. Hardik, please. And our next panelist is Mr. Mohammed Shadab, senior manager, IDV TB project from the union. Mr. Mukesh, kindly welcome Mr. Shadab, please. Now I kindly request Mr. Amar Shah to take forward the panel discussion, please. Over to you, Mr. Dr. Shah. Thank you. Uh, so uh, before starting the kind of, no, this panel particularly, I also thought uh, just give you one uh, comment and like appreciation, I think Deepak Foundation to like, this is really great initiative of you no know, uh, having this van uh, because the program has moved on now initially as we all know that like we were doing the passive case finding but now this is a time where we actually can go into the community and find more cases and eliminate uh, so i think we have a strong partnership with the state government and rdd sir is also here so I think one request would be that you no, know, uh, because we have a latest technology available within the van, we have a true NART and what also X-ray, which has a fantastic uh, sensitivity. So request is that like let's utilize this opportunity where we document the effort both the ways. One is wherever we actually let's say I also see few of the people from the uh, GIDC and those industrial area. We also have some identified pockets by the state and the district itself. So whenever we actually go into the field, let's calculate document data and the so that no the vulnerability uh, can be mapped among the population. We can also have uh, some longitudinal data what and how it is impacting, what are the socio-economic or determinants of the TB, how uh, in the region it is help helping. So in long way, no, this can actually help because I see that uh, the mobile diagnostic van and everything, the availability in the future will be even more. So actually the learning still will be helpful that like how in last 20 years it has, the population data has evolved and we can kind of, but yeah, fantastic and kudos to the you know, thought process. That and I see already that some of the initiative of, you no. Know, uh, TB free zones and everything. So in that, this Mogwal diagnostic one can be also very helpful. So yeah, so with that comment, maybe I'll start and... Uh, 
Okay, sure, sure. So I, I, I I'm told Dr. Uh, Sanjay Mattu sir is joining a little bit late, so maybe uh, we will keep uh, a national perspective little later. Uh, so I think the uh, one of the uh, thing that how we can create uh, solve some of the issues is first we need to identify the problems, and also as I can kind of uh, admit uh, that the perspective or the understanding of some of the disease like TB uh, can be very limited if you just look at that particular uh, uh, problem or the disease in a just one facet. And that is why I think we, today panel is about where we have a combination of two representatives from the state where we will uh, hear their perspective of the journey, what they have created so far and uh, what challenges they are facing in the TB control. And we have the uh, August participation here from the all sector industry, the uh, overall intellect. So what we hope that like first we some discuss about the current issues in the TB elimination and take those clues how collectively then we can address. And then the second part we will actually more discuss on the what are the uh, ways where partnership can be forced to reduce those issues. So maybe uh, uh, we have a, uh, a participation from state of Madhya Pradesh and so maybe we'll start with that and uh, Aditya Tiwari, uh, uh, like oh, very well, well, welcome. I think uh, uh, both Madhya Pradesh and Gujarat has been kind of you know, doing some fundamental game-changing TB work. Uh, however, what we want to kind of hear from you that in the TB control program uh, from the state Madhya Pradesh, what you see are the current challenges which you say that traditionally if we are still continuing with the same approach, uh, we may not kind of you know, reach to the goal. So what are the state specific challenges you see in the TB elimination in the Madhya Pradesh? Uh, so that is my first question and I think follow on question is also where you see some of the potential partnership coming forward where we can collectively work. So two fold question first maybe you can just also uh, uh, highlight some of the current potential challenge what you see and second is fostering. Thank you so much sir. Challenges we have. Uh Almost 19 districts, uh, those are tribal districts, and illiteracy is a main problem. Citizens are not aware of the seriousness of the disease, so they avoid going to the hospitals and all. So, we uh, to tackle this uh, problem, we have uh, some NGOs, those are working with uh, tribal communities, and uh, they are taking uh, them to hospitals and uh, get them treated. Then uh, we have a community awareness uh, thing uh, we need to tackle with. So we do community meetings uh, for that. And the uh, main challenge was uh, to get the private patients notified. So private notification was uh, very poor and uh, we are happy that Deepak Foundation is working with us. So. In order to tackle this uh, situation, the Puck Foundation has uh, done work. I'll also uh, request uh, that uh, ethical practices by the private medical practitioners uh, are to be implemented and it is uh, necessar necessarily or need to be implemented because uh, in some districts in MP, I have seen that many pediatricians have uh, notified uh, children with TB only the basis of CBC and DSR. So uh, this is also a challenge. We are ending TB, but it is not about uh, the fake notifying patients and all. I will urge uh, that uh, these doctors should be oriented about the how the actual TB case is and uh, how they should be notified. So ethical practices is a, is a, a challenge. So I'll urge uh, people 
who are supporting as PPSA, they must do that. So uh, this can also be a challenge. So private notification, because in a mediocre kind of town, people go to the private practitioners. In only villages, uh, people do visit uh, government centers. So the private notification is a major challenge, and uh, and we are trying our best uh, to tackle that. And uh, in community engagement, uh, we have achieved achieved very good thing. We are uh, first among the uh, larger states uh, in India. So we have uh, we have convergence with uh, major stakeholders like uh, National Coals Limited. We they have given us five CR and they have uh, enrolled as uh, Niksha Mitra and uh, uh, we are among the top of the top of the country that uh, we are doing good in P PMTV MBA and sure we'll will be number one very soon in uh, in, adi in adding uh, these small states also so these were the challenges uh, what was the second question so I think you partly answered that already, but yeah, uh, I think uh, considering your overall challenges, let's say 19 uh, tribal districts, awareness is an issue, even the private sector overall participation where you see still a scope of improvement, uh, where the clinical practice can also be more sensitized. Uh, and uh, of course, you are leading front on the community engagement. So how do you see that this can further work? and? let's say the technical agencies like union are actually helping on those front and uh, uh, where you, what are the avenues where you see further this kind of partnership can grow uh, yeah, which I, uh, I work uh, very closely to uh, union actually Tabish uh, Khan uh, is working uh, in MP and uh, I go to uh, many corporate houses with him and um, I would like to share uh, an incident uh, when we uh, we went to Canara Bank, and uh, we are sitting with the top management, and uh, they were saying that Niksha Mitra 600 rupees and 600 rupees per into six months. What will be the cost? I said that uh, we are rich people. What we need is to engage community. If community engage nahi hogi, to उसको पता कैसे चलेगा कि टीबी सीरियस डिसीज है कि नहीं। We have hospitals, we have infrastructure, we have advanced machines, we have everything. But the thing which was lacking is community. जब आप लोग जैसे banks, corporate houses and uh, these are going to join hands together and come all uh, areas of community, all uh, we can say branches of community should match to achieve a single goal that is to NTB, then only we will be able to NTB by 2025. So the community engagement is the best part and I love that uh, very much because uh, it, it is the only thing which can NTB very soon. If we are adding corporate houses, media partners, just now uh, we had a media interaction session with the help of union and MP. So, the right message, uh, right message should be communicated to the citizens, to the readers, and to the people that uh, how the disease is and what is the prevalence is, and uh, how it can be controlled. What are the medicines, and to ensure the uh, testing thing, we have uh, uh, we have uh, disseminated the testing thing till the up to CSC level. We have molecular testing at CSC level. In MP, so the community participation is the thing which can NTB, and that is to be uh, that needs to be concerned uh, on the matter. मतलब matter पे concentrate करना कि भी community को engage करना ही हमारा सबसे बड़ा goal अभी होना चाहिए. Because uh, as more we involve the community, then only will be achieve that goal very soon. So I think thank you, Aditya, and, and I think uh, the message overall also is that uh, when because uh, partnership can really work where no people uh, from that within the vicinity of that community belongs to that community actually absorb that message and then this kind of take on. So 
most of the i think the overall as you mentioned uh, that we have uh, the corporates the tb mitras where actually they can if they correctly identify on what what are the issues and the ground level and then they communicate to the community about the tb messaging then effectively is more and so this will be a great help uh, to the health system where they can now come up with the uh, partnership and yeah, i think if yeah. we are alone uh, if we are going to alone working on tb only doctors are involved then uh, the rest of the community will not know the how the disease is right. and what needs to be done so when community gets engaged uh, it becomes uh, their moral duty uh, to get the people uh, help it's uh, their duty also if you are in a community to serve the community every business has uh, that goal too first is to earn profit then uh, second is to one society uh, uh, so uh, second is to uh, serve the society yeah so the serve society should be taken at the priority and if they are not serving to the society then it's not complete i think so the most of the niksha mitras and all and community partners should be engaged and that will really help uh, which i think thank you thank you thank you aditya and just to add to per what he said and perspective about uh, as per the latest data, what we know now that uh, the what we in scientifically term say that population attribution risk factor for TB. So, 34% of the TB cases in India are only due to undernutrition. And that gets aggravated in a case scenario of the tribal districts. So, I think whenever we are thinking of, and I think this is also part of the Pradhan Mantri TB Mukt Bharat Yojana where Dr. Rajendra Prasad Joshi in his talk also said about this. Uh, so, the Nikshay Mitra can actually think on all this. And again, only the nutrition support is not sufficient because then like you have to add the family support of this, again the mental health counselling and something as a holistic approach to the cause. And uh, preventive the t TB is also something the nutrition can support can. So, so I think uh, I saw some of the initiative uh, by done and uh, again, uh, thank you for your comments. So, maybe I will uh, move to Hardik now, uh, who is the WHO consultant uh, in state of Gujarat. Uh, Hardik, similar question uh, and just to get the no, overall perspective, uh, what are the, let's say he mentioned about some of the challenges, but from your perspective in for the state of Gujarat, what is important now? What is, because time is something which is precious now and everyone wants to solve this complex challenge. And just to get your WHO perspective that what do you foresee, what should we be doing? And maybe taking example of state of Gujarat, what you see in Gujarat, what we'll be doing in next two years. So uh, talking about Gujarat, uh, we are catering seven crore of population. We have uh, 2,500 of uh, public health facility and 15,000 of private health facilities. We have uh, around 2,000 DMCs and there are 300 blocks and 50% of the blocks have been saturated with NAT technology. And 50% will be coming in the next PIP, it will be already approved. So, uh, mainly the our state is, has been the pioneer in the partnership also. So Gujarat has done many partnerships for PPSA, for LPA, for diagnostic modalities. Different states have done different partnerships, around 100 partnerships already is going on uh, in Gujarat. And another 100 are already have been proposed in Gujarat. But as program becoming more and more granular and NTP is becoming more and more dynamic, so there is a need of partnership and there is a need of multi-sectoral engagement also. So NTP working in a, uh, uh, this specific silo is not a need nowadays. They have to cooperate with other partners and multi-sectoral organizations and the nutritional support is the example. So, Pradhan Mantri TB Mukt Bharat Abhyan, from that we can avail nutritional support and uh, this engage many uh, private providers and corporate sectors, but the challenges are now different. So, as I have said, the program is becoming more and more granular. So, 
the TB preventive treatment, then Nikshe Poshan Yodna is now a challenge because of the we are not providing DBT to patients timely because of some uh, uh, problem issues in PFMS, DBT, uh, Nikshe Poshan Yodna, DBT, and single nodal account. Then detecting patients at their home. So, providing a medical uh, van or providing handheld x-ray and then reporting those patients after getting x-ray done. That is the other area. Then uh, sputum collection and my, uh, transportation because it is a grey area. Mainly public sector sputum collection and uh, transportation is possible. But what about private sector? So, mapping of those cases and mapping of those facilities in the uh, private sector are somewhat, uh, some, some are the areas then doing ACSM as per demography. So you cannot do ACSM by providing leaflet in uh, urban, uh, slum, uh, slum area. You have to do miking in the slum area. So these are the, uh, some partnerships option which are available, there are issues. The issues mainly, uh, I would say, First of all, the boon, that is the partnership guidance document available in 2019. As per this guidance document, you can do partnership as per the service-based approach and as per the performance provided by the agency. Now you can have market observed rates also and you can approve those rates, but problem is in administration. So when you, partnership is uh, available in state mainly and more players are available at state level but not for district and block levels. So when you come to district or block level it becomes an unmet need. They either don't willing to identify those gaps or either don't fill, they don't want to fill those gaps. So when you get, uh, get to them and when you explain them these are the, their gaps then the approval from the administration will be the main hurdle for the public sector because most of the time there is a cost limit or purchasing limit is there in the hierarchy of the public sector. So approving those things, taking NOC, sometimes the service becomes proprietary item when there is only single agencies there in the district or TU. So taking NOC from the Udyog Commissioner or taking approval from a DDO collector level or secretary, Secretariat Purchasing Committee are becoming issues. And the biggest issue currently district or state is facing that they do not have any procurement officer. So all this procurement has been happening from JEM. But these accountants are not fit or having aptitude of take, uh, this getting this procurement done from jam or from uh, or they have don't uh, they don't have knowledge of the general financial rules so we have already done many partnerships but these all things are becoming lengthy and taking time so at state level as well as at district level partnership options in the government system are taking time so if corporate sector comes and do give services or do these procurement things mainly, then it will be helpful for the state. So thank you. Thank you, Hardik. I think you uh, highlighted two important points. One is where uh, traditionally the state of Gujarat has been working and the expansion of the services and, and that is tremendable. However, now going to the granularity and actually reaching to last mile, we have to have partnership uh, decentralized at the district and block level. And where I see uh, uh, overall, no, the because of the structural uh, uh, public health system, you see, uh, so to speak, a lag or delay uh, because of the inherent uh, system. And and uh, your suggestion on no innovative way of forging those partnership can be helpful and I think taking just clue both from the state of Madhya Pradesh and state of Gujarat I think something if and maybe this is also for our food for thought where because there is an enthusiasm from the corporates the industry people to uh, know support now it is I think a joint responsibility of the state and district level authority where number one maybe we highlight the potential areas where technical areas where we think that 
those partnership could help and i think both of you highlighted few of the stuff so number one whether we can come up with some kind of a uh, so to speak no uh, uh, because it's it's more evident district specific we can identify few of the issues and secondly is the, you know, uh, uh, sensitizing and maybe utilizing such forum where uh, it because you know the partnership and everything can work only once we have a trust and getting that trust is so important to get that trust we also need to see you know the the actual no uh, so to speak awareness about the activity which the organization has been doing so i think we need to have this kind of platforms where people actually know each other once they know each other then they interact when they actually go and see on the field what the capabilities of the institutions and organizations are and then force those partnerships so i think but yeah uh, taking that forward we will require some kind of a collective effort where from i think uh, who can very well do that at state level and the district level to come up with this and so i think the request would be that uh, because you were talking about and i think just have a and and i also belong to this geography so gujarat is come somewhat more industrialized state and because of the industrialization we also see the issues of migration so uh, overall uh, what you feel you know what are the challenges because of the migratory issues and how the you know the partnerships with this kind of uh, industries gidcs can help to tackle that issues related to tb services in migration so uh, uh, coming to the question so migration is the issue because we have pockets uh, in corporation area and it, there are many industrial areas so uh, we don't have any project or program regarding migration right so most of the time patients coming from different district or state and they used to diagnose but they usually lost or they are becoming initial defaulter or after starting treatment they used to migrate to other state or district and programmatically we have been uh, this uh, this having this difficulty for not accepting those patients or those patients are not going to the public sector so public sector we have a good chain they can accept those patients they can go for home visit but not in private sector so if the patient coming to private sector or patient uh, consulting a public sector then going to private sector of different district or state there will be a problem of lo losing those patient from the care cascade so that is the main problem that should be a mechanism for addressing those issues there should be a mechanism for having a card or identifying those migrants uh, moving between uh, different states and districts so kerala has a this system under nhm they are registering those patients uh, who are migrated from distant different dif district or states and this card is valid for one year so they can trace those patient based on the their uh, on that card right but currently we don't have these uh, uh, this facility for tracing those patients so gidc or industrial organization can help us to enroll those patient either uh, our in nikshay portal or their software so and another thing is workplace based policy so if you have a workplace based policy then you can implement those workplace based policy we can invite your safety officer in our district tb forum meeting or state tb forum meeting we you should as a industry you should implement your fitness testing in your fitness testing tb testing is mandatory right and all the data of migrant patients can be readily available to public sector of that uh, district or state that will help to uh, do, uh, address those issue of migration and selling tb care to uh, migrant patients so i think it's a excellent point what uh, no you have mentioned and i also feel that healthy workforce is something which is critical for india's prosperity and uh, i think by uh, laws and also credential goes to the in our all uh, association present here where they actually do the not only the initial screening but then there is a regular 
uh, regular health checkup. So, of course, I f see that some of the basic investigations which are also indicative of TB screening, uh, those data capture can be actually shared whenever required and actually the collaboration with the TB control program, we can identify those uh, potential uh, TB presumptive cases early and treat them early. So, I think that is a really good point and uh, this is one of the grey area where uh, uh, we can kind of know uh, and I now see that more and more the industry have a sophistication in their overall HR management which we can leverage for you no, know, which I was talking about some of the vulnerability mapping and the family support. But yeah, really great point. So, thank you. Uh, uh, I think now I'll uh, move to Shadab. Uh, I think uh, Shadab, uh, maybe uh, what I would like to hear is from the union uh, this partnerships of what is we have been working since long and actually, in fact, no, union is one organization who case actually came up with the model. And now uh, it is well, well recognized as corporate TB pledge. Uh, so maybe just for the uh, our awareness, let's say, do you want to kind of just, just what are the initial successes what you have observed in this journey? Because this is something a territory. I am like say from the medical background, that public health. Uh, in in medical education, you just. Uh, understand about the diagnosis and treating, right? And then, like, you really are, do not have any uh, understanding of the how bigger kind of you no know, schema of can work. And this is something which I also thought union has came up with this model and made made us understand that this 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 can also be the thing. So, would you like to highlight some of the initial successes which you have kind of been sure. able to Thanks. achieve? So, first of all, I think uh, congratulations to Deepak Foundation. Uh, when you talk about success, so this is success, sure. right? They are not into medical equipments. They are not, uh, they are a different group, right? Uh, their other client could be like, okay, they might be using chemicals, but that's not the prime. They are doing this conference on tuberculosis. The hall here is... Uh, I think largely uh, majority is non-medicals. It's a national conference. So for us, this is a success. <coughs> Non-medicalization of TB is what we have been advocating for. Because it's just not a like health problem, it's a social issue. The delayed diagnosis because of lack of access, because of lack of awareness, uh, then discontinuation of treatment, again because of engagement of employer, workplace policies, favorable processes in place, right, conducive environment, uh, job security, all those things. So first, this is success in terms of bringing other part, the other sectors, the other experts, newer perspective to the table is a success. And that's what, because it's a public health issue and it has to be dealt with with kind of different expertise people coming together. <coughs> Other part, thanks again to USAID also to accepting and kind of supporting the idea. We can learn a lot from corporate world as a public health program. Whatever diagnostics, the newer diagnostics are coming, it is not that we are manufacturing. They are manufacturing. They do that research, they invest, they come up with better solutions, right? So, whether it is our direct bank transfer, so the entire software is designed by corporate, right? They, they do it for us. So, they are the brain, they can, they bring the speed, they bring the, they can do things at large scale in a short time. These are the things Th with this kind of background that, okay, 80% of TB, and I, I really want your attention on this piece. 80% of TB cases are coming from an age group of 15 to 60 years. When we talk about 15 to 60 years, it is largely productive age group. Majority of them are workers. They are working somewhere. And we as a program cannot reach them. Because 9 to 5, they are at the workplaces. 
and we only work 9 to 5 as a program. So, we can't reach them until unless there is active participation of the employers, of the business association, of a small workplaces, bigger workplaces, we can't reach majority. And if we can't reach majority, obviously we can't achieve success. So with this background, we learned from corporate world and designed corporate TB pledge. I'll be sharing in detail in the later section on this what corporate TB pledge is. Many of them as a corporate are members, they are doing great work under the pledge and we have a secretariat which support all the companies and uh, Deepak Foundation is also our platinum member, platinum member of corporate TB pledge and we are very, very proud of them, the work they are doing, extremely good work. There have been change, change in the sense from a purely medical perspective, patient and doctor program. Now the program has wider kind of reach and the reach has been possible only through partnerships. There are NGOs who are partnering, there are corporates who are partnering, there are Rotary Clubs, the Lawrence Club, other organization. <coughs> we face challenges also in terms of partnership. Challenges are also like two types. One is if you want to partner with corporate for a TB free workplace intervention, HR can take a decision and it's easy, it's not cost. We give free of cost diagnosis, we give free treatment, we give training, we give IEC, so not a problem. It is for you, for your employees, for the welfare, for healthy workforce, low absenteeism, low medical cost, better image. Anybody will buy it and they buy it and we do it. But then there is other thing which is CSR. So now in CSR last year uh, as per one of the reports around 25,000 crore rupees were available because last year the economy did much better and there were a lot of revenues and out of revenue we have CSR so kareeb 25,000 crore ke kareeb CSR mein tha. Ab se 5 saal pehle TB mein CSR ka koi paisa nahi aata tha. Agar kahi aata hoga tha negligible tha kisi ko nahi pata hota tha. There were no models also. At least now we have some participation. Government has recognized this part. So, CSR mein engagement badha hai. Challenge kya hai? CSR mein specifically likha hona chahiye. Compliance aapka pura hona chahiye. Aajkal audit compliance bohat rigid hai. Woh saare process complete hone chahiye. Financial year aapka maash se hai. To usse pehle proposal jana chahiye. Board mein approve hona chahiye. All those things. But now fortunately, with Pardhan Manti TB Mukh Bharat Abhiyan, companies have taken up a lot of TB patients and they have adopted TB patients. So that's a success story there. Today we have 300 corporates who are working with us. It's not a small. The corporate TB pledge is the largest corporate engagement program in TB in India and one of the largest globally. So that's another. I was talking to sir that sir Gujarat is an industrial state. We talk about Gujarat model in Delhi. Can there be a Gujarat model of success in TB for the country and then that can also be replicated across the globe. So migration is one problem here because you provide employment, people from various parts, particularly north, would be coming here. Earlier in HIV sector, we used to have east-west corridor kind of intervention. So I'll also again request Deepak Foundation to look for this opportunity. Can you give us a model of working with migrant population, even if it's at a small scale? The intervention we design and pilot it and probably then scale it. So uh, just coming back to your question, TB elimination certainly is more realistic now. And this is happening because we see the change in the approach of the program, the government, the partners, and the diversity which is coming into it, the players which are taking part, the innovations which are happening, and the pace which is happening. Today, more than 10 of our corporate partners are working on ground. Yesterday, we had flag offs. Day before, we had trucks flagged off. Today, we have van flagged off. 
So it's just one partner agency doing so much of work. 75 cities, 75 corporates are doing campaign. So a lot of things are happening and we are very, very happy of supporting this partnership mechanism and we look forward to continuously uh, make it bigger. So I think really excellent uh, Shraddhab and uh, uh, I was actually was also you know, going through that entire journey and, and that has been the commendable because ideating the concept and then executing is something which are very very critical in difference also where the uh, blood and sweat has gone into the entire kind of making it. Uh, one, and I think because it will be good to know where we see it is going, let's say, and, and we would like to see your vision on that because you have been into this area. So let's say we are actually at this juncture, as you said, uh, India has 100 uh, projects through 300 corporates, and which is fundamental. But with the 1.4 billion population, we still want to more. So something what you have vision and which we can strive to kind of collectively achieve that. So I think again, it, it should not remain, the vision is that it should not remain the project right. where some agency just go out and do advocacy with corporate or the state that okay, do it. It has to be owned by the companies that okay, they are my people, 50% of them are carrying bacteria. If immunity is compromised, any one of us can have TB and TB is because it's transmissible. So if my employees, my workers have, I can get it, <coughs> right? So ultimately we have to chain, we have to break this uh, transmission and the chain of the transmission. You do a lot of fitness, you do a lot of activities to ensure that, okay, employees and workers are fit so that they do better, your productivity is bet better, medical cost is less, the absenteeism is less. Again, another success, Government of India in 2018, for the first time, released workplace policy framework on TB. For the first time, we never had a policy framework on TB by government. This is for the first time now we have a document. There are six things which companies have to do in terms of making their t workplace TB free. Like we have smoking free, smoking free zones, smoking free workplace. So we are also coming up with an idea of making TB free workplace. TB free workplace mean, does, doesn't mean that there will be no TB patient. But there will be no TB patient without treatment. The person will be on treatment. And for the information, the person once diagnosed, put on right treatment, after a month or so become non-infectious. So it is in favor of everybody that the person is, general, is diagnosed early, put on treatment, so the transmission doesn't take place within the workplaces. So our vision is that if, and again I'm repeating, the journey of TB free India will not be completed if it is not owned and championed by corporate world. So all companies take care of their employees, workers, and their families. If that happens, then your entire thing is taken care of. And I'm again repeating for the audience, there is no cost involved in it. The diagnosis is free. The treatment is free. 500 rupees per month to the patient is free. Additional nutrition kits are being provided to those who need it. So if you invest little bit of your time, little bit of your intent, the outcome are multiplied, right? You have so much thing, free technical support, free IEC, free diagnostic, free treatment, 500 to patient, nutrition support for family. What else do you need? And then there is compliance by the government. If the person is diagnosed early, it's safety for you because it will not be transmitting to others. So our vision is that it will be again, like we manage polio, everybody took charge, they played their role, right? This country only, huge population, diversity, challenges, but we did it. COVID we managed. Similarly, this is the time where history is being made. Be part of this history, give us the model, ensure that your workplaces are TB free. And our vision is that it will be led by partnerships,
corporate will play the leading role and in next two, three years, we will not need a technical agency, we will not need program to go back to these people. They know how to do it. They are the best brains, they have intensity. It's just initial advocacy and hiccups which we just need to like fine tune. And if there are TB free workplaces, India will be TB free. So thanks, thanks Sadaf. And I think I was about to draw a parallel with polio and something as a common citizen, everyone should be in that sense take a charge and we should be ashamed that like still we the TB kind of a disease is hampering our growth and and if we have all imbibed that that as a citizen of India TB is just not acceptable then I think if one of us all of us can do something about it collectively we can kind of do it so I think that's a great point and that's also a great segue where if uh, Dr. Mattu sir has joined then maybe Oh, he is not able to join. But I think, I think, yeah. So mainly, what I intended to discuss with him was about uh, some of the national perspective. Let's say this collective ha kind of movement is happening, and what's the national perspective they have? Because uh, they are handling a much larger uh, geography and the case scenario. But yeah. So maybe what we can do is uh, uh, we can open up the session for the audience to either no any comments or questions they have for us or, or any participant that will be excellent uh, please feel free to ask uh, provide your suggestion uh, which you feel that like uh, for you want to contribute in some way but these are the bottlenecks which uh, you can bring to this forum and we are really uh, keen to listen those and collectively resolve those so yes ma'am Oh, thank you for the excellent uh, panel discussion. My question is to Tiwari ji. Uh, you talked about uh, community processes and engagement, very, very important. So uh, how many village health and sanitation committees in the villages in MP are referring and identifying cases and uh, ensuring treatment compliance? And if uh, you permit, I have one more question. Huh? Uh, this is for Dr. Hardik and um, uh, you know, uh, do you have any system of periodic audit of TrueNet uh, available in the government facility, whether they are functional, not functional? So is there any mechanism of having this kind of periodic audit in the government facility where TrueNet, because this is the main screening tool. Huh? So that is one question. And uh, the la one question to Mr. Uh, Shadab, uh, that was any effort made to, uh, you know, make mandatory the TB screening in under pre and post employment checkup of industrial workers? Actually, we have renamed VHSC as VHSNC. Now it's a nutrition committee also. And the nutrition is the main part of uh, TB treatment. So, uh, yes, of course, VHSC is working towards uh, TB, TB elimination. How? Is, uh, we have community health officers posted in sub every sub-health centers. And uh, community health officer is a member of a village health and sanitation committee, along with the other panchayat members and all. And we have TB as a main key responsibility area in the TOR of uh, community health officer. And uh, a community health officer is supposed to update uh, data on Nikshaya portal. First, uh, he or she need to generate a presumptive ID for any TB, uh, any uh, patient who is uh, giving their sample for uh, testing. So it starts right from the testing and up to the treatment. We have ensured the availability of drugs up to the sub-health center level with CHO. So we have a very much participation of village health and sanitation and nutrition committee uh, in TV treatment. Uh, so this, uh, these are the facts. 
So coming to the question about true knot auditing, periodic auditing. So currently state has 82 true knot machines and uh, more 150 true knot machines are uh, being proposed and uh, are going to come. So all these true knot machines are coming with their three years uh, CMC services and state has this audit mechanism also because IRL is monitoring all these NAT uh, facilities. So uh, this functionality of true NAT and uh, this availability of its uh, uh, consumables uh, are being supervised by IRL microbiologist and it is being reviewed regularly. So thanks. Maybe before Shadab can respond, I'll also add two comments here. Uh, one is about this uh, audit, ma'am, and I think something which I have recently uh, experienced and truly was amazed. I think we have our partner. Uh, organization who is truly fantastic. The Piramal Swastya uh, people are here and so I went to Muzaffarpur in Bihar which is kind of a place where overall health system was traditionally weak. Uh, what I got to amaze was two things and, and this is fantastic which can actually as Shadab tell the people from outside of the health. I met the engineer is Gujarati which I met him there and he developed that called uh, IoT device. So this is Internet of Things device is attached with all instruments in the entire all district and sub district health facility. So the X-ray machines are attached with this IoT device. The machines, uh, the cell counters, the U U U USG, everything is attached. And there is a command and control center in Patna which is again monitored by a uniquely uh, uh, placed, uh, we call uh, Karuna Fellows. Basically, these are the disadvantaged women, either separated or widow, uh, talented but not getting a good job. So this fellowship is provided by this Piramal Swastya. They are uh, right sitting next to the principal secretary health there. Uh, they are operating. They also have a CCC cameras and they can see at 9.30 whether the doctor has come. If doctor has not come at 10, the alarm level goes up. If there is a corridor where someone has illegally parked vehicle, then it will also be raised. And you can see the transformation. The IoT device provides a real-time information that by today, 2 p.m., how many x-rays were been taken. Then the audit of the, even the consultation, that let's say today 500 OPD was done. Of that, why only 200 patients were investigated? why only 100 patients given any form of treatment and that tremendously changed the OPD kind of scenario where uh, it was a running around a 2000 2, per month and now they have a OPD of a 24,000 and it's really monitoring well. So I think uh, it is all about intent and the scope but I think yeah something of course the TV program 82 machine is really easy to get monitored but I think if we have to collectively see that entire functionary, it's not about TV services in silo because our job is not done that we just say, yeah, to me TV nahi hai, and we are over. Our job is patient is having any symptom, we have to treat them. And so some kind of a model and exchange has to happen. Uh, on this front also, something which we have and the state of Madhya Pradesh only brought this uh, importance of this platform because of the underdiagnosed pediatric TB patient, where we could actually parallel draw where if uh, just from those malnourished children, whether we can link and support and diagnose. And somewhere uh, still we are not able to decentralize TB diagnosis for the pediatric patient and something which we can actually help to get through, let's say, some innovative practices offered by uh, Deepak Foundation or some kind of innovative van or x-ray screening because for pediatric patient, x-ray is something which is very, very useful screening tool. So if not about fever, it's just a failure to thrive with pediatric uh, population, if they are not gaining weight, you just screen them with some right tool and you can actually find. So yeah, thank you for excellent question and maybe I'll offer my to Sharda for So yeah, thanks. Uh, basically, the question of whether we have TB uh, screening or testing as a pre-employment mandatory process. 
So I'll refer to ILO code of practice for HIV. We don't do it kind of uh, mandatory in that one. The, the policy framework designed by uh, Labor uh, Ministry of Labor, Government of India, is based on ILO code of practice, which is again voluntary and not mandatory. Now, but I want to little flip it. Flip in the sense that companies do X-ray for fitness. That's part of your medical checkup. And I keep asking my colleagues because I work very closely with all the companies for workplace intervention. And never ever generally there is a finding. I don't know why that is the case. We don't find, okay, we did a routine checkup and this was a part of our medical checkup and we have found this kind of suspicion and we are connecting to government services. That is where somewhere I don't know why that happens. It may be that, okay, I refuse you to give employment because there is a patch on your x-ray, go back, get treated, come back, or something else. But processes are there. You are doing x-rays in your annual checkups, in other things. But these are these just for the requirement of certain guidelines and the laws. And ultimately, what we have seen, in many cases, the mandatory things don't really help to a greater extent. It has to be very, very kind of conducive, evolving, involving, and voluntary process where it should be, companies should realize that, okay, diagnosing TB early is something of benefit to companies because you identify person early, you prevent the transmission, and the government will take care of their further diagnosis and treatment and you may continue the person in employment and the trained person, trained resource help you to achieve your vision. So this is, I think, broadly, I don't know if I answered your question. It's a little tricky area, but we don't have mandatory process. Thanks, thanks, Ajahn. And maybe I'll also add, because I can't resist myself on those commenting additional, which I see uh, where you can really help. Uh, in a recent study, what we could found was that, as he pointed out, chest x-ray is such a common thing in our life, where not for just TB screening we do go forward. For any pre-operative procedure, chest x-ray is something happening. Some, as he is saying, pre-employment and also for us, let's say my employer, my employer, like I also get some routine chest x-ray done for myself also. So now there are AI technologies available where and in it is AI uh, in healthcare, chest x-ray is foremost or at the very, very fast pace. So 18 conditions we can actually rule out through AI only. So just imagine a scenario and this study was done in uh, Maharashtra, Mumbai, where they could found 11% additional yield of TB. They, what they did was that for any matter, the hospital is doing the chest x-ray. The, then the algorithm was that those ex chest x-ray, whether they came for TB screening or not, they were subjected for AI. If AI is saying that this could be a possibility, this AI is a, again a funny tool, but it gives in probability that this might be 80% chance that it can be a TB. If then they set up the cutoff and those who are probability having a TB, they were subjected for the sputum examinate test through let's say sophistication of uh, true not. So uh, of that 11%, so fundamentally these cases did not came for TB's diagnosis. We could find that population to be TB. And I think uh, you can sir also think of, because you have fantastic van, both the X-ray and the true is available. Uh, I think government of India or the state are looking for those innovative solutions. See, for their procurement system, it's impossible to have a AI tool bought by government services. This is not going to happen in that easily because they are having lots of things uh, the data confidentiality, the ethics, the even whether the AI tool is valid or not. But as a private sector, you can do it. There is no kind of no hurdle to you. So maybe a model which is kind of win-win for situation. And once we see a merit that whether no pre-screening tool like X-ray is helping to rule out something, people will actually, otherwise no, it becomes a more of a tick mark 
that for all our employee we do something and uh, AI also will help you to have a major role in document means I always always go for data but it is larger repository which we need to create uh, once a de solution developed in India I can just say let's say I, because I'm big fan for digital health digital solution whatever the solution digitally we make in India it should be valid for world because for our size and scale which Dr. Sadeh also mentioned so I just a food for thought but thanks for this question and answer any other question because yeah I'm already overrun but oh I see a great lot uh, I rec five minutes okay just five minutes okay uh, good afternoon dignitaries this is Dr. Pallavi I work in STSU MP uh, so my first question, I mean, I have two small questions. Uh, dur uh, during our needs assessment, we have seen that uh, case detection rates emerged as a major challenge in tribal districts. And there is poor participation or absence notification from private case providers. We have almost 18 high priority districts in MP where we face this challenge. And our P PPS agency is trying hard their butt off to work for private notifications. So uh, can you recommend me uh, some innovative solution what we do regularly to work on this? The other is uh, uh, the district which sees a huge influx of migrants and face a major challenge in case detection and tracking the treatment outcomes of the patients. So if we uh, see the private sector uh, I mean, the private sector part from these notifications forms almost more than 60%. So how do we manage these migrant populations and the absence of private providers in tribal districts? Thank you. No, excellent question. And I think uh, maybe I'll uh, put some perspective when we talk about, let's say, tribal population. We actually in India say Adivasis or in international term they are called indigenous people. I think what and maybe I'll start and request the others to actually add on. Fundamental things how we we need to work on how we are working with them as a community. Uh, in my limited experience in last three years uh, what I have found that the Adivasi community or the tribal population the health seeking behavior is largely dependent on one factor which is trust for them the traditional approach where no we just create the infrastructure and we see that like they come and take avail services not going to happen that easily there is a fundamental change uh, to, since 2005 i think we have a tribal action plan but still majority of the things we could not in last 10 years, I think, sir, also mentioned, government of India has, or the state government initiative, the infrastructure has improved a lot. Still, the participation is poor. So, my thought and I think proposal is for getting that actual participation for the tribal community, it has to be a one mantra, which has worked, and my colleagues here from Piramal Swastika can vouch for it, anything to do with the tribal it is always for them with them through them so making some no centralized approaches and we deliver it is not going to happen they don't foresee our benefits of services through that lens and so my uh, i think only such su submission here would be you involve the community leaders there there are faith based leader there there are tribal health leader which are not traditionally panchayat leader we have to distinguish between Ra gram sabha and gram panchayat they don't have a hierarchy of gram panchayat and them thing so we need to work with this and third part is we need to leverage resources from ministry of tribal affairs we don't have to restrict ourselves with the ministry of health only so i think these are my points but i think uh, these two gentlemen actually work day and night on migration issues and everything. Maybe I request if they want to add something on it. So I want to add two uh, points mainly. So uh, first point is uh, the AI solutions. Sir has mentioned X-ray based uh, AI detection tool and another tool which uh, 
uh, I, uh, I know that is curve based AI tool that is as per the curve sound they can uh, make probability of having a person having chase, uh, chase symptomatic that is a pathology or not and after do uh, after getting the probability then you can offer many these uh, diagnostic tools and the second one is in tribal area there is a provision of informant incentive so earlier it was notification incentive but you can very well uh, include informant incentive and include faith based healers and the tribal area uh, these leaders uh, all those in the informant incentive to increase your case detection so maybe in the interest of time it will be a last question um, yes sir yeah good afternoon sector public sector we can't buy the authorities are not there but one suggestion which is for you you can take it with the union government which you can take it with the union government uh, my experience of uh, when i was working in ipcl so to give the hello okay i can speak okay so my suggestion is, and which is my experience also, uh, the state government asked me to give some instrumentation donation. I says, uh, I told them donation I will not provide. I can give you the equipment. Then the minister called me. Why you don't want to give? So I told him, okay, the, I have gone to the government hospital. After one year or two years, those diagnostic or the instruments do not work. So unless the corporate, he says, how do you do it in a different? I says, I don't go into the L1 procedure, which is there. Second is, I go into the reliability. Third is, in anything which I buy, I must have a five-year operation and maintenance contract. Once you put that, you will get the right reliable uh, equipment, which will be a boon to the society. So that is a because it's a national conference Ji. where you can give a suggestion to the government, it is up to them to. No, absolutely. Uh, and I think you are just there. We, these are real challenges and these are real solutions which you are offering. Yeah. Yeah, good afternoon. Yeah. I'm Sanjay Agarwal from Aditya Bhada Group Company. Actually, initially, uh, we have sponsored one taluka of the Baru district for uh, distributing the nutrition kits and later on we were sponsored two and now we are going to sponsor three uh, talukas of the district. Now next uh, request from uh, Binu Sharma is to provide us a two knot machine. So my question is actually we have provided one x-ray machine to our CSC but uh, the machines is kept idle due to lack of the technicians. So what assurance uh, uh, would this panel will give us in case we provide two knot machine for this cause that will not remain idle for the lack of the uh, technicians? Yeah, no, I think uh, one is, sir, uh, we truly appreciate your partnership and support to what you have kind of score and so generously supporting the pro program and second also highlighting the overall limitations of and I think we can collectively solve this issue it's it's something which you have raised and maybe I'll, I'll request ag again whenever I think these are critical discussions before we actually start some of the initiative let's say the x-rays one is and x-ray functionality we actually did a one webinar very recent past and this is a very, very unique situation. Even I would say, sir, capacity building, the, the training on the radiography, it's something which is as a course, which many of the states are struggling. Uh, the AMC part also is something where the traditionally the government has been kind of no ups and down. Uh, so number one, and I think you have every uh, right uh, to ask these critical questions 
before no signing those contracts or the mous with those parties and absolutely they are some something as a collective responsibility every thing everyone needs to take responsibility i would just uh, add into uh, my again component where here is also something we want to kind of enhance traditional way of x rays putting into a large infrastructure putting running into chc is something of past now what we now see is a something is a revolutionary methods and tools has come what we now know is of the handheld x rays this are truly evolutionary because they don't require a traditional infrastructure a uh, uh, second it does not also limit the exposure uh, to the overall either the who is actually doing the radiography or to the surrounding so it actually can go into the remotest place and third is its backpack it just size of the backpack it comes it also is connected with the uh, ai or other tools so something what i would suggest is uh, traditionally some of the procurement should still should be with the government because they are accountable but some of the newer stuff where they are still not able to figure it out whether this is working whether this is not working those <coughs> catalytic support i think you should be striving for because uh, government will be really hesitant to procure something which is not in their current system so far and maybe you can also push the boundary to have the common vision along with them that this csc business is something which if your machine is there still utilization is something which is not there and for your this thing that no iot which i talked about muzaffarpur which is uh, made by a very uh, in house capacity of the some one engineer in the one organization which are very very uh, hardly 500 700 rupees a cost and something which can have us so the real time availability of the utilization pattern something so i think this is a something it's not a one bullet fits and it we will have panacea of solution but yeah these are the and maybe what we can also do and i will request shabab we can have a common repository of this initiatives where people can learn from which is best practice from other state in this regard so that no we can we are not repeating the past mistakes again in future sure so just last quick point because we have to close i see tripti really getting restless uh, and she is right because we are i think 20 uh, minutes late uh but on this piece of your true net and also the lack of utilization of previous uh, equipment i think i'll request my colleague minu she will discuss it with you and i'll also be part of this discussion with you thank you one last question so maybe uh, so one last question please in the interest of time can we have a discussion in the lunch time please okay i'm really i really apologize to the participants but in the paucity of time we actually need to move on she forward. has a flight in the evening otherwise we <laughs> will be without mc in the evening <laughs> i'm really sorry yeah so, so thank you so much for you no know, enthusiastic participation and i hope we did the justice to the session and really look forward to your inputs critical inputs critical comments and we can actually certainly discuss those things in lunch as well but yeah before that uh, yeah thanks eminent panelists for this uh, great discussion and the active participation by the all the audience now i kindly request dr jay pawar to kindly felicitate the panelists for the session and kindly felicitate uh, dr shah please dr amar shah yeah I would request you to felicitate Mr. Aditya Tiwari. To Dr. Hardik Nakshiwala. And to Mr. Muhammad Shadam. Thank you all the panelists for the session
Now moving on to the session two, I kindly request you to join us with the participants. We have heard about the challenges, the program requirements. However, there are a lot many challenges that the program face like outreach, delayed diagnosis, mobilization, treatment adherence, access to services, stigma, but partnerships make it possible to overcome those. Program has also introduced a lot of mechanisms in terms of technical support, new services and partnerships. Parallel to this, to complement the government efforts, Corporates and other institutions need to actively participate in making India TB free. For this, they need technical support. Hence, the program has introduced technical support through various partners and systems such as Corporate TB Pet Secretariat, Secretariat for Technical Support Units, the STSUs at the States, and the other systems. In this session, we will have insights about the corporate engagement models and specifically about the workplace interventions as workers and communities around the factories represent significant proportion of the population having high incidence of TB. Since this conference resolves around the building and sending partnerships, thus the role of STSUs is also critical. As all of us are working for the TB patients, and hence we would like to hear the testimony from the TB champion to understand the struggle and fight back from the disease and a key message for everyone. With this, I would like to request Dr. Jay Pavan. TB is a sangramak rog hai, jo humare desh ke hi nahi, balke sare vishwo ke saamne. I would like to request Dr. Jay Pavan for welcoming the speakers of the session with a green welcome. Ma'am, please. Our TB champion, Mr. Fahad Arafat, he is a national hockey player for the India team. Mr. Mohammad Shadab from the union. Huh. So, okay. <laughs> Dr. Raja Baudi Yale, the team lead from STSU Maharashtra. And Dr. Pallavi Soni from STSU Madhya Pradesh. Thank you so much, ma'am. I kindly request all the speakers to kindly. Okay. So I also request Dr. Akash, the m &E expert from the STSU Madhya Pradesh, to kindly join us for the session also. Dr. Akash. So first having the perspective from the TB champion, may we have the video please? बहुत पुराना है। भारत में टीवी का सबसे प्राचीन संदर्भ इंडस वैली सभ्यता में एक हड्डी से जुड़ा है, जो करीब 4000 वर्ष पुरानी थी। 19वीं सदी में टीवी भारत में मृत्यु के सबसे आम कारणों में से एक थी। 1940 के दशक तक भारत में चौथी मृत्यु के कारण टीवी था। 1950 के दशक में भारत सरकार ने टीवी नियंत्रण कार्यक्रम की शुरुआत की। 20 और खराब जीवन शैली के कारण तेजी से फैलता गया 
अब टीवी को एक महत्वपूर्ण जन स्वास्थ्य समस्या के रूप में देखा जाने लगा था वार्षिक टीवी रिपोर्ट 2022 के अनुसार भारत में दुनिया के सबसे ज्यादा टीबी के केस पाए गए जो कि पूरे विश्व में पाए गए टीबी केसों का एक चौथाई है रिपोर्ट के अनुसार मध्य प्रदेश में सबसे अधिक प्रति एक लाख की जनसंख्या पर संतानवे टीबी के केस पाए गए तथा टीबी से होने वाली मृत्यु दर तेरह दशमलव एक प्रतिशत रही मध्य प्रदेश सरकार द्वारा टीबी की रोकथाम के लिए कई कदम उठाए गए हैं इसमें राष्ट्रीय टीबी उन्मूलन कार्यक्रम बहुत महत्वपूर्ण है राज्य में टीबी की रोकथाम गुणवत्तापूर्ण जाँच व इलाज के लिए स्वास्थ्य प्रणाली को मजबूत किया गया मेरा नाम फादर आफाद है मैं हॉकी का प्लेयर हूँ जैसे कि हम सबको विदित है 2025 तक टीवी का हमारे देश से समूह नाश करने का निश्चय हमारे माननीय प्रधानमंत्री जी ने किया है इसी के तहत हम दमोह जिले में हम लोग टीवी प्रोग्राम में काफी कोशिश कर रहे हैं कि हमारा एक भी पेशेंट छूटे ना और जो आइडेंटिफाइड है उनका ट्रीटमेंट पूरा कम्प्लीट हो और हमारे इस मुहिम में दीपक फाउंडेशन के द्वारा बहुत ज़्यादा हेल्प की जा रही है हमारे जिसमें कि वो ये इंश्योर करते हैं कि हमारे जितने टी वी पेशेंट्स हैं वो पूरे छः महीने अपना ट्रीटमेंट ले और बीच में ही वो डिफॉल्टर ना बने हम लोग 22 जिलों में सितंबर 2020 से लगभग ढाई वर्षों से काम कर रहे हैं और इन ढाई वर्षों में हमने करीब करीब एक लाख टी पेशेंट को जो है लाभ पहुँचाया है देखिए टी पेशेंट की जब मैं बात करता हूँ तो उसकी अगर हम जीवन के बारे में बात करते एक पेशेंट जब टीबी का मरीज बनता है तो उसे कई सारी तकलीफों का सामना उठाना पड़ता है दीपक फाउंडेशन का प्रयास यही रहा है कि उन्हें सरकारी सेवाओं से जोड़कर एक ब्रिज का काम करके उनकी सारी मुश्किलों को दूर करें हमने कई हजारों पेशेंटों के चेहरों पर मुस्कुराहट लाई है भारत में प्रत्येक वर्ष करीब दस लाख टीबी के मरीज पंजीकृत होने से छूट जाते हैं ये मरीज या तो छुपे हुए होते हैं या निजी चिकित्सकों के पास इलाज ले रहे होते हैं इन मरीजों को राष्ट्रीय छह उन्मूलन कार्यक्रम से जोड़ने के लिए एनजीओ की भूमिका बहुत ही महत्वपूर्ण है मध्य प्रदेश में दीपक फाउंडेशन सहित कई एनजीओ सामूहिक रूप से टीवी उन्मूलन का कार्य कर रहे हैं तथा सतत रूप से प्रयास कर रहे हैं Foundation has been contributing towards the Honorable Prime Minister's vision of eliminating tuberculosis by the year 2025 uh, by screening, diagnosis, and treatment of tuberculosis patients in Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh, Jharkhand, and Maharashtra. Especially in the state of Madhya Pradesh, we are working as a PPSA National TB Elimination Program since 2020. Uh, we look forward to. partnerships with uh, many corporates and other partners as well uh, for achieving our goal of tuberculosis elimination uh, through lot of meaningful collaboration achieving the ambitious target of eliminating tuberculosis by the end of the year 2025 would require joint and collaborative efforts uh, multi sectoral engagement forms a very important strategy towards achieving it Engagement of civil society organizations and corporates uh, would significantly contribute towards the creating awareness. It would also help in doing active case finding, uh, TB diagnostics, community participation. Uh, it would also go a long way in filling the gap in the program implementation and partnership with the NT. We go home and we do a public survey. We do a survey with TB cases. Survey. उसको लक्षण पाया जाता है उसको दीपक फाउंडेशन के तहत उसका उपचार भी कराते हैं
मेरा काम सैंपल कलेक्शन करना और जिला छह केंद्र में सैंपल जमा करना है इसके साथ साथ मेरे द्वारा टीवी मरीजों को सरकारी दवा का वितरण किया जाता है घर घर जाकर मेरा काम टीवी पेशेंट मरीज को परामर्श देना है जैसे कि नियमित रूप से पेशेंट को दवाई खाना है और उच्च संतुलित पोषण आहार लेना है साथ साथ मैं टी पेशेंट को निश्चय पोषण योजना के बारे में ही बताता हूँ जिसके तहत सरकार के द्वारा उनको पाँच सौ रुपये पर माह दिए जाते हैं पोषण के लिए और साथ साथ मेरा काम कॉन्टेक्टेशन करना होता है जिसमें उसके परिवार में अगर कोई सिम्टोमेटिक मरीज मिलता है तो उसकी जाँच कराना होता है राष्ट्रीय छह उन्मूलन कार्यक्रम के अंतर्गत मध्य प्रदेश एक नए आयाम स्थापित कर रहा है हम मध्य प्रदेश में न सिर्फ पब्लिक सेक्टर बल्कि प्राइवेट सेक्टर में भी आउटसोर्स एजेंसी के माध्यम से लोगों को चिन्हित कर रहे हैं पब्लिक सेक्टर में हम पेडेटिक टीवी पे ज्यादा मध्य प्रदेश में फोकस किया जा रहा है इसके तहत हमने न सिर्फ अपनी एनआरसी आंगनबाड़ी बल्कि मेडिकल कॉलेज को भी इन्वॉल्व किया है और नए नवाचार मध्य प्रदेश में किए जा रहे हैं Great video. May I invite Mr. Fahad to share his journey with the participants, please? Good evening, everyone. My name is Fahad Rafat. I am from Damu, and I am national level hockey player. आज से कुछ टाइम पहले मैं दो साल पहले मुझे हॉकी खेलते टाइम हल्की सी खांसी आई और चेस्ट में पेन होने लगा तो जिसको मैंने ज़्यादा मैंने जिस ज़्यादा फोकस नहीं किया नॉर्मल खांसी समझ के इग्नोर कर दिया लेकिन जब वो खांसी धीरे धीरे बढ़ने लगी और मेरा वेट लॉस भी होने लगा और जब ही दो के टाइम कोरोना काल था शुरू हुआ था तो मेरी फैमिली में भी थोड़ी टेंशन हो गई मुझे भी डर लगने लगा कि मुझे भी ना कुछ हो जाए तो मेरे माने फैमिली वालों ने जब मुझे समझाया तो मैंने जब गवर्नमेंट हॉस्पिटल जाकर अपनी एस बी नाट और सी वी नाट का ट्रीट चेकअप करवाया तो उसमें मैं टीवी पॉजिटिव पाया गया तो मुझे बहुत डर लगा बहुत घबराहट हुई कि मुझे कोरोना कोरोना चल रहा है कि क्वारंटाइन ना कर दें मेरे मोहल्ले को सील ना कर दें ऐसा वैसा तो बहुत नर्वसनेस फील हुआ फिर और मेरा एम डी आर था तो डॉक्टर ने बताया था कि तुम्हारा ट्रीटमेंट नौ मंथ चलेगा दवाई वगैरह तो उस दरमियान मुझे बहुत नर्वस हुआ तो मैं माने शुरू के चार पांच महीने तो हमने घर में रही घर में ही रहे अंदर बाहर ही नहीं निकली पाँच महीने तक ये को कुछ पकड़ के ना ले जाए क्वारंटाइन ना कर दे हमारे लिए है ना और जब उस, उस टाइम बहुत माने टेंशन होता था होता था दवाइयाँ माने घर से निकलने भी नहीं मिलता था दवाई अस्पताल दवाई लेने जाना तो बहुत मुश्किल था पुलिस वाले बाहर रहते थे हैं तो डीपक फाउंडेशन की मदद से हमें उस समस्या का सलूशन हुआ माने दवाई आ जाती थी घर पर जो वो फिर जांच हुई थी ट्रीटमेंट ट्री, हुआ था वो ही माने लास्ट चेकअप एक दो हुए थे वो हमारे हमारे घर पर हो गए थे बैठे बैठे कुछ भी प्रॉब्लम्स नहीं हुई हमारे लिए और मैं आपको बताया कि मैं हॉकी प्लेयर था अभी भी हूँ तो मैंने हमारे जन को कोच को जब हमारी टीम को पता चला तो मुझे लग, मुझे डर लगा कि वो मेरे साथ गलत व्यवहार ना करें ऐसा वैसा लेकिन कुछ नहीं मेरे कोच भी मेरे घर आए मेरी टीम के कैप्टन साहब वो भी मेरे घर आए और हमारे कोच ने उस उस टाइम पे एक स्पोर्ट्स स्पोर्ट्स डाइट होती है उसके जरिए मुझे नौ के नौ मंथ फ्रूट्स दिए और मैंने बहुत हर बहुत सपोर्ट मिला डीपक फाउंडेशन की तरफ से भी फैमिली का भी सपोर्ट मिला फैमिली ने भी ये नहीं किया कि तुम दूर रहो ऐसा वैसा या मेरे दोस्तों ने भी बहुत मन ऐसा रहा कि अच्छा सबके सपोर्ट से सबके सहयोग से मैं आज पूर्णतः रूप से स्वस्थ हूँ और दोबारा से अपना हॉकी के मैदान पर अपना प्रदर्शन कर रहा हूँ उससे ही बेटर थैंक यू हाँ बहुत अच्छा लगा जानकर कि अब आप बिल्कुल स्वस्थ हैं और वापस हॉकी खेल रहे हैं 
um moving on next we are having mr mohammad shadab the senior manager from the idptb project from the union he will be sharing about the corporate engagement models and the different areas of work that the corporates have done to in the tb space over to you shadab so Can we I will start from, yeah. yeah so we will start with the uh, with the video yeah with only 2.4% of total land area and 16.7% of world population. India accounts for 26% of global TB cases. 1,200 people die every day due to TB. Tuberculosis is an infective disease which is eminently curable. Apart from suffering, it also has huge social and financial implications. To aid the national TB elimination efforts, Government of India and USAID came together to launch the Corporate TB Pledge. The Corporate TB Pledge is a platform to recognize corporate contribution in India's fight against TB. Corporates can play a very important role in this aspect by making available the free drugs and diagnostics in the public health system accessible to its beneficiaries. More than 200 corporates from various sectors and business associations have joined hands to end TB from both the workplace and community settings. We are going to work tirelessly with the government to actually achieve the goal of end of TB in India by 2025. I appreciate the efforts being taken across corporate leaders to truly advance this important goal. And I'd encourage you to recommend that your peers join the Corporate TB Pledge as well. TB needs urgent action from the whole nation. Bharat bhi 2025 tak TB mukt hone ke apne sankalp ko pura karega. Aisa mera drat viswaat hai. कोई भी बीमारी को खत्म करने के लिए मल्टी सेक्टरल इंटरवेंशन की आवश्यकता होती है। With renewed commitment and collaborative action, let's embark on the journey towards TB Mukt Bharat. All right. Uh, <coughs> thank you, Tripti. Uh, thank you, Fahad, for setting the context. I'm better. I'm better. Uh, Fahad ka sunke, mene kal in ka jab in se interaction kiya tha, to bhot achha laga tha. To humne kaha tha khali video ni. Fahad se baat karenge aur sab ko sunne ka mauka milna chahiye ke ek is prime age mein TB hona. Ye aasan nahi jab aur insaan career ke liye struggle kar raha ho. एक एक चीज़ के लिए फिटनेस के लिए अपने सिलेक्शन के लिए उसमें फिर टीबी भी एम डी आर मल्टी ड्रग रजिस्टेंट टी होना कोविड के टाइम पे होना डर बना रहना पाँच महीने घर में बंद रहना लेकिन घर का सपोर्ट कैप्टन का सपोर्ट कोच का सपोर्ट और दवाई कंप्लीट करी नौ महीने की उसमें सपोर्ट बहुत ज़रूरी होता है और उसको कम्प्लीट करके नाउ ही इज़ बैक He is back. He is playing, right? So got another chance. He is here. So I will request you to please thank him again. Thank you. 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 और आकर के हमारे साथ शेयर करना ये चैम्पियन है ट्रू चैम्पियनशिप कि अपने एक्सपीरियंस से हमें सेंसिटाइज करना और अब ये काम कर रहे हैं हमारे साथ जुड़े हैं दीपक फाउंडेशन के साथ जुड़े हैं जगह जगह जा कर के लोगों को इसके बारे में जागरूक कर रहे हैं सो ही इज़ अ ट्रू चैम्पियन एंड आर सेल यू टू फॉर फॉर दिस सो आई नाउ क्विकली टॉक अबाउट कॉरपोरेट टी वी प्लेज बेसिकली दिस इज़ वॉट Dr. Amar Shah wanted me to talk about what is Corporate TB Pledge. I am happy that this is second event we are doing uh, in Vadodara. We had another event, I think, just two, three months back. Uh, that was we directly organized with the district here. 
and thank you we uh, the dto who is very committed dto here very very powerful person committed for partnership and thank you sir for your time again so what is corporate and why corporate so i was saying this is my passion and i want your attention for this slide tb largely is about interaction mobility migration overcrowding sitting together in ac breathing same air right so this is what tb is about that is why tb free workplaces are so important we did not have any idea about it earlier tb ka workplace ka jo rishta hai wo pehle hum nahi jante the ab hum jante hain ab hum iske upar baat karte hain कॉरपोरेट के बिना टीबी फ्री इंडिया पॉसिबल नहीं है क्योंकि टीबी फ्री वर्क प्लेस जब तक नहीं होगा 80 परसेंट केस जो है वो 15 से 60 के एज ग्रुप में है जो कि वर्कर्स हैं रिसोर्सेज सी एस आर रिसोर्सेज अदर रिसोर्सेज आपकी एक्सपर्टीज चाहे सप्लाई चेन हो चाहे आईटी हो चाहे इनोवेशन हो वो आपके पास है वो प्रोग्राम के पास नहीं है वो डॉक्टर्स के पास नहीं है क्लिनिशियंस के पास नहीं है उसके लिए आपका बहुत बड़ा रोल है और हमें वो रिसोर्सिस इनोवेशन के लिए चाहिए होते हैं तो आप उसमें वहाँ पर लाते हैं डोमेन एक्सपर्टीज जो मैं कह रहा हूँ कि आई टी बेस्ड सोल्यूशंस हैं आप सप्लाई चेन में आप बेस्ट हैं आप कम्युनिकेशन में डिज़ाइनिंग में ब्रांडिंग में सब चीज़ों में आप बेस्ट हैं उसमें आपकी ज़रूरत है और तीसरा है कि आपके अपने हेल्थ इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर भी है चाहे आपका एक सिंपल मेडिकल डॉक्टर विजिट पर आता हो चाहे आपकी डिस्पेंसरी हो चाहे आपकी मोबाइल वैन हो आपके हेल्थ इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर हैं ये सारी चीज़ों की प्रोग्राम में बहुत ज़रूरत है और उसके लिए आपके साथ मिलकर के प्रोग्राम वांट्स टू अचीव दिस सक्सेस ऑफ हैविंग टीबी फ्री वडोदरा टीबी फ्री गुजरात एंड टीबी फ्री इंडिया ग्लोबली व्हेन देर इज़ एन इंटरनेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस द कंसेंस इज अनटिल लेस इंडिया बिकम्स टी फ्री वर्ल्ड कैन नॉट बी टी फ्री एवरीवेयर यू गो यू सी इंडियंस 25% फाइव परसेंट ऑफ टी बी इज़ इन इंडिया राइट वी ट्रैवल सो मच पीपल ट्रैवल सो मच हियर सो इट कैन नॉट हैपन एंटिल लेस वी बिकम टी बी फ्री द वर्ल्ड कैन नॉट बी टी बी फ्री जी ट्वेंटी यहाँ पर हो रहा है वाराणसी में हमारा इवेंट होना है इसी पर सारा डिस्कशन है हाउ डू वी मेक इंडिया टी बी फ्री एंड आई वॉज मैंशनिंग इट अर्लियर ऑल्सो गुजरात मॉडल ऑफ प्रोग्रेस ऑफ सक्सेस change central government right so can a, there be a gujarat model of success and progress in tb for government of india so let's start there a model led by gujarat where partnerships the corporates the program come together do innovation at a small scale and then we scale from central government and from the union side i think i am very hopeful we can take up any innovation you demonstrate we can scale that please take up innovation next slide please <coughs> ye journey jo ki hame lagta tha ki ye aise nahi ho sakta isolation mein nahi ho sakta isme bhagedari zaruri hai corporate ki hissedari zaruri hai aur isme visibility zaruri hai uske liye corporate ko thoda sa ek modeling thoda sa ek face thoda sa ek branding chahiye attraction ke liye to humne amitabh bachchan sahab ko request kiya 2015 mein I was fortunate to be part of that meeting. Us time ke US ke ambassador to India, he agreed to facilitate meeting, and then we also mobilized not only Amitabh Bachchan, Mr. Ratan Tata, and he came on board. He supported us. He said, "I'll give my time and my voice to the cause." And at the same time, we partnered with international labor organization to formulate a policy framework. and they worked with government of india ministry of labor and this is how this journey started 2015 17 19 20 and now 22 where we are sitting today we have policy framework we have amitabh bachchan as ambassador we have mr ratan tata setting up uh, tata trust who is doing great work on tb and then we have policies we have program we have partnerships next slide please <coughs> and then as i was i was saying that we wanted to do some packaging some kind of modeling of the program so that it gives some attraction some kind of feel to the corporates to associate with this so we learned from you aap log jaise credit card banate hain aap jaise membership banate hain 
हमने सोचा हम क्या कर सकते हैं तो कंपनीज ओनली हेल्प अस टू डिज़ाइन दिस कि आप इसको एक टीयर बेस प्रोग्राम बनाइए आप इसमें कैटेगरीज करिए और लोगों को ऑफर करिए कि आप क्या देंगे तो हमने इसको बनाया और इसके तीन ऑब्जेक्टिव थे वही जो कि अवेयरनेस कैसे करेंगे आपके थ्रू आपके वर्क प्लेसेज में कैसे पहुंचेंगे आपके रिसोर्सेज को कैसे यूटिलाइज करेंगे और आपको टेक्निकल सपोर्ट कैसे देंगे इसको ध्यान में रखते हुए कॉरपोरेट टीवी प्लेज डिज़ाइन किया गया हाई लेवल पे डिज़ाइन किया गया हाई लेवल पे लॉन्च किया यू एस में गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया ने लॉन्च किया और इसमें कुछ लोगों ने वहाँ से शुरुआत करी नेक्स्ट स्लाइड प्लीज़ so this is what we designed we designed a pledge which has different categories tiers silver gold platinum and diamond diamond is our highest category so if you just want to do something which is non financial you become silver member if you do awareness other activities gold if you invest resources whatever amount for your own work we don't take money right you do it anywhere with any program you give it to government you implement yourself you adopt tb patient any amount any investment you become platinum and if you also mobilize other corporates to work with the program with the government on tb you become champion and that is what our diamond category is so generally companies graduate from silver to gold gold to platinum and platinum to and we have more than 300 corporates as on date with us working across the country next slide so in csr because you are there many of you may be new many of you would have seen these slides what you can do you can support a brand ambassador at a state level at district level who will talk about tb like he is talking about tb so there may be some sports person some media person you want to engage and do that bit people want to associate listen to you can help you can help in doing some high visibility events wall painting radio uh, fm radio media coverage on tv you can support mass media social media other areas and then you can do support in terms of infrastructure which is diagnostic support patient support you can adopt tb patient various models and we from the union when you join the pledge we help you designing entire thing free of cost we dedicate official with you who will work with closely with you we do need assessment of your area linkage with the district design your program train your people train your implementing ngo do quality output of your program you we showcase value of your intervention document it and disseminate it next slide please in terms of projects we have around 150 project as on date which are running on ground by corporate support across country you see now even that top level is covered we have now one uh, hospital ujala sickness they are starting jammu and kashmir so uh, we are now more or less covered entire country where the corporates are supporting some of our companies are reflected here not all i am happy to see deepak foundation also in that group uh, so lot of companies are there who are doing ground work and supporting and these are all pilot project small project bigger project but innovative and many of these innovation are being done taken at a scale by government of india by state governments next slide please so this is about again uh, Nik uh, nikshay mitra which is uh, patient adopting tb patients by individual by corporates uh for their nutrition for their well being counseling and interaction and also ensuring that community engagement is there the stigma is reduced 50000 tb patients have been adopted by our corporate partners so this is just a small project and i'm talking about 50000 tb patient being supported by corporate tb pledge members so ag again lot of activities the the mobile vans the infrastructure a and the ai solutions everything whatever you need in terms of what is the new idea is there a project which is happening we want to learn from it is there anything you want to do with tribals with young population with older population the jail the hospitals everything we have an innovative project on ground running you can learn replicate it next slide please so this is again uh, i want to utilize this opportunity to talk about what is tb free workplace because this is not cost this is something again for 
the benefit of workers, employees and their families and the executives and the management and the employer, right? And the owner, right? So what is TB free workplace? Next slide. Why this is important? We spend our important time at workplaces. So they are captive audience, we can educate them. Like we educated them on COVID, we can educate them on TB. Difficult for the program to reach to the workers because they are at workplaces. And then workplaces have double role. If you don't address it, there's a, there are certain workplaces which may be vulnerable and may increase the risk of transmission. At the same time, if we do proactive approach, we can address TB at workplaces and they can create larger impact even in their families and communities. And crux of the story is, if you want to create TB free workplaces, address stigma. I should tell my colleague as simple as like, I have a pain, I have a pain, if I have a pain, I don't have to tell you about it. When it happens, then our problem will solve. For that, it is very important that top management sends a raise, बहुत चीज को इंडोर्स करें और उसके ऊपर बात करें। नेक्स्ट स्लाइड प्लीज। दिस आर सेवेन थिंग्स। इफ यू डू योर वर्कप्लेस बिकम टीवी फ्री। व्हाट आर दिस सेवेन थिंग्स सिंपल? इफ यू आर ए स्मॉल वर्कप्लेस अबाउट हंड्रेड पीपल यू कैन हैव वन फोकल पॉइंट हु विल प्लान टीवी अवेयरनेस स्क्रीनिंग गेट अप्रूवल � if you are a bigger workforce, larger workplace, then form a committee which can have HR, which can have uh, your medical officer, which can have your safety officer, which can have other people. If you have a labor union, the labor union, you can have a TV champion, you can have somebody from the technical agency like the union. They will kind of plan your workplace intervention. So a TV free workplace committee should be there. We can give you how it works, the terms of reference. You can make this committee part of your any existing committee. You have many committees, safety committee, health committee, other committees. Just add couple of points in the existing committee if you don't want to have another committee. That's also fine. Then do awareness at workplaces. Awareness is a starting point. People should know benefits of early diagnosis, treatment adherence, and what are their rights and responsibilities as work workers and employees. Then periodic awareness के साथ में periodic screening. Screening का यहाँ मतलब है पांच लक्षण हैं क्या? पांच लक्षण क्या हैं? खांसी हो रही है दो हफ्ते से, बुखार आ रहा है लगातार, वजन घट रहा है, भूख नहीं लग रही है, रात में पसीने आ रहे हैं। ये हम खाली पूछते हैं। अगर ऐसा हो रहा है तो उनका फिर हम आगे की जांच करते हैं। इतना सा क इससे हमें क्या होगा अर्ली डायग्नोस करने में मदद मिलेगी जैसे ही सिम्टम आए वैसे ही डायग्नोस किया वैसे ही ट्रीट किया आगे फैलने से रोक दिया और लास्ट में फिर हमारा है कि जांच करने के बाद में लोगों को हम उनके ट्रीटमेंट कंप्लीट करने में मदद करें क्योंकि लंबा ट्रीटमेंट है साइड इफेक्ट्स हो सकते हैं जॉब का रिस्क रहता है कुछ और खर्चे हो सकते हैं प्लीज हेल्प दोज और हम यहाँ पर बहुत ज़्यादा बात नहीं कर रहे आपके हजारों में एक कोई दो वर्कर होंगे एक हजार में एक दो वर्कर को अगर टीबी निकल जाती तो उनको हम हेल्प कर सकते हैं नहीं करेंगे तो ज़्यादा को फैल सकती है एंड लास्टली इस कि आपके पास एयरबोर्न इन्फेक्शन कंट्रोल मैकेनिज्म जो कोविड में हम करते थे मास लगाना बेसिक चीज़ें वेंटिलेशन वो सब चीज़ें हमने इंश्योर की हुई हैं इफ वी हैव इम्प्लीमेंटेड दिस चेक लिस्ट देन आर वर्क प्लेस इज टी फ्री एंड दिस हैज़ टू बी एन ऑन गोइंग प्रोसेस दिस कैन नॉट बी के एक बार अवेयरनेस कर दिया इट डजेंट वर्क दैट वे Next slide, please. <clears throat> so these are again policies are there, companies have adopted their policies, their statement of commitment. We can give you sample, you can modify it, you can display it, share it, and become part of a responsive business, responsive organization, a responsible organization. Next slide, please. <clears throat> the work which is happening on ground by various companies, we have tea sector, we have cement, we have mining, we have gas, we have uh, other sectors, we have mobile population, turkers, uh, every sector, you name it, and we have a program, and it is being implemented by companies in their own workplaces. 
Next slide. This is again something which is happening on ground uh, in a tea company. They have their own medical officers doing the checkup of the families of the employees. Next slide. So uh, what is the support which you get if you want to do TB free workplace intervention in your companies? We give you a specifically designed IEC material for you. Even in Gujarati you will get it. We will design your program. We will do training of your all partners, HR managers, medical officers, if you have NGO partner, we will train them. We will introduce indicators. We will do documentation support to you. We will link you with the local health facility from where you can utilize all the diagnostics and treatment support. We will document your work, disseminate it, and you get <coughs> online support also of technical whatever you need. There is an online platform also. When you become member, you are registered there. You get all the virtual support as well. Next slide, please. <coughs> Again, some of our members, uh, all of are not there because 300, but some of our members from all sectors, 15 business associations, the corporate hospitals. This year, we are targeting 50 corporate hospitals who will be working with us. And Whosoever, if you want that in your district, in your area, there is a corporate hospital, you want to partner with them, please let us know. We will facilitate that partnership with you. Next slide, please. So, World TB Day, 24 March, every year is happening. This year will be this year a different way. This year is not a major event in Delhi, it is a major event in the Prime Minister is coming, all the people of G20 are going there. Stop TB partnership ki meeting wahan par ho rhi hai. To is bar total global attention for TB and World TB Day is on Varanasi and India. And for that, because every company, every individual want to do something on World TB Day, Government of India and Union designed a campaign for this, which is largely focusing on awareness generation, screening and support and engaging mass and masses. Next slide, please. <coughs> Do we have something on? No. Okay. So we have launched our TB campaign on World TB Day, 75 corporates, 75 cities. And let's see what the video has for us. Bharat bhi 2025 tak TB mukt hone ke अपने संकल्प को पूरा करेगा ऐसा मेरा दृढ़ विश्वास है साथियों आप सभी हेल्थ सेक्टर के एक्सपर्ट्स हैं यहाँ ये भी भली भांति समझते हैं कि कोई भी बीमारी को खत्म करने के लिए मल्टी सेक्टरल इंटरवेंशन की आवश्यकता होती है
tirelessly with the government to actually achieve the goal of end of TB in India by 2025. And to ensure that we contribute to the elimination of TB by 2025, we plan to have micro centers linked at all of our healthcare centers by the same period. I wish this campaign all the very best. So this campaign was launched, I think, uh, just two weeks back. And already we have huge participations because we realized actually we did not anticipate so much of interest. Every company wants to do something. They were thinking what should we do. So this is now broadly how we launched it on 2nd March. And do we have some update on this? Yeah. So these are activities which are happening under the campaign. We have inauguration of one DMC in one of the tea gardens in Assam. We have a lot of activities from the slogan writing to painting competition to quiz competition, the community based screening. A lot of intensive efforts are happening under the campaign as we hear day by day. We have Narrow Legs doing sensitization program among the school kids, again from this state only. We have JK Lakshmi, again community based workplace intervention. So, another success story which is happening. Jubilant Bharatiya. Just I think yesterday uh, they launched these vans which are going community to community, village to villages and they have youth engagement program where the volunteers, they have mobilized 1000 young volunteers from universities and schools and they are going house to house identifying symptomatics and supporting their diagnosis. So it's again a large project only yesterday it was launched. Uh, we have Best Mumbai who has worked on an innovative project on TB and uh, diabetes and reversal program. We have Lawrence Club also committing for uh, diagnostic facilities, doing awareness. We have Ranjan Gao Industries Association in Pune. The Panchayat, TB free Panchayat program in Kutch. Again, a lot of success stories emerging from uh, Gujarat. Uh, we have also a global conclave which, is, uh, which has been organized in Jaipur by Association of Healthcare Providers. We have large engagement of corporate hospital. Esther Lab has started a pharmacy orientation program. They have a lot of pharmacists and every pharmacist has been trained and now they are launching this. Artemis Hospital has adopted a slum area in, in Gurgaon. They are working there. Apollo has, uh, is starting uh, community-based screening and uh, diagnosis program. We have uh, various corporates coming up. Then Apollo Tires, as I uh, shared earlier, only uh, yesterday we had this program uh, where minister, union health minister uh, launched these trucks, 75 trucks with messages and then uh, they also adopted 75 TB patients for nutrition support. So nutrition support was also given. So a lot of again intensified sector based focused large scale activities are happening from a small to big from uh, state to corporate, like various sectors, everyone is coming together and doing their bit. Uh, Medanta has also started a project uh, on ground. One is with volunteers and they are also doing screening in jail in Yamnagar district. Next slide, please. Again, workplace intervention. So, Kiran Hospital has started workplace intervention and they are also in discussion for starting a DRTB center uh, in Surat. Next slide. Again, a lot of activities, photos, and we can't really project everyone. Uh, so there are examples of school engagement. The cities, more than 7, 45 cities have already been covered. We still have around like 12 days remaining, two weeks in the campaign. Uh, many corporates have joined. A lot of patients are being adopted. Uh, we are getting financial investment also under the campaign. The infrastructure is being supported, the schools, community, everything is happening. My request to you, please, what TB Day 24 is approaching, please plan whatever little you want to do. At least do some awareness at your workplace. Invite a TB champion like him to talk about TB on your workplace, right? That is simple. No expenses, not very time consuming. We can share with you video, please run those videos, 
wherever possible. Email we can design, send email to your WhatsApp messages we can do. So please think about ways, various ways you want to do and we will document your work. We will make part of the compendium which is going to become a camp compendium of this campaign. So broadly this is it from our side. Thank you. Tripti, sorry if I took a little longer. Thank you so much, Shadab. So, yeah, we are running a bit late, but uh, I would request uh, our next speakers to kindly adhere to their timings. Um, next, we have uh, Dr. Raja Bhav Yole, the team lead from STSU Maharashtra. Over to you, Dr. Yole, for your presentation, please. You can speak from there if you, if you are comfortable with the screen. Uh, at the outset, uh, let me thank uh, organizers, uh, especially Deepak Foundation and Union for giving me this uh, opportunity to talk about the, what STSU is providing support to the state and in terms of uh, corporates and all and what is the PPSA. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so uh, all of us know that uh, India is planning for ending TB by 2025 as per our national strategic plan. And uh, in this strategic plan, there were two very important thrust areas. One was uh, engaging private sector because almost more than 50% TB patients in our country are being managed in private sector. And second is uh, multi-sectoral engagement because uh, TB is not the disease uh, for diagnosis and treatment. Uh, we need to have uh, all the sectors involved into that and then only we can achieve this. So considering this fact, uh, Government of India have planned to have a state technical support unit in, uh, especially in uh, major nine World Bank uh, supported uh, states like uh, UP, Maharashtra and other major states. And uh, one of the reasons for selecting these states was almost 60 to 70 percent of uh, private TB case notification is coming from these states. So it's very, very important. And again, a um, major role for STSU is to uh, support states in terms of private sector engagement, multi-sectoral coordination, uh, contract management, and direct benefit transfers. So recently, uh, five new states are also got uh, TSU with uh, less number of uh, staff. Next, please. So basically, uh, what what is uh, STSU and uh, what uh, staff we have in our state technical support unit. We have a different uh, domain experts uh, who can talk with the private sector, multi-sectoral uh, engagement, like we have a intersectoral collaboration expert, procurement specialist, DBT expert, PPP experts, so that we can uh, link all these uh, partners and uh, we can achieve uh, success. Next, please. So these are the major responsibilities of uh, STSU in what way we can provide support to the different organizations like uh, uh, engaging different service providers, uh, maybe it is private sector, corporate or any other sectors. We are giving a uh, hardcore technical support to the states for uh, contract management because many times uh, many procurement processes get delayed so additional support to the state for doing contract management. Again, uh, multi-sectoral engagement, interaction with different corporates uh, and different ministries also. It's not only corporate, like different ministries, labor ministry, panchayat raj ministry uh, and uh, other ministries. Uh, and other supports like uh, DBT management program have a different uh, direct benefit, uh, benefit transfer schemes like next year portion of SNAPs, uh, incentives to private sector. So those uh, supports we are providing and other technical supports related to all the activities we are providing. Next. So what we are doing uh, briefly in Maharashtra, what uh, as a STSU, what we are providing support, like uh, one of the important role is to uh, engage patient provider support agencies who can support the private en sector engagement and their notification. So already we have supported uh, state uh, for all these activities. Again, uh, engaging different partners, which are uh, different uh, partnership options are available under the program. So we are linking different partners and uh, providing support to monitor their payments and their performance and all those activities. So, and again, uh, like uh, doing data analysis, visiting the districts uh, for improving their private sector performance and uh, 
we uh, with support from union uh, we organized uh, with support of union and uh, state tb officer and district tb officers for the workshop uh, for dto city one ppm coordinators to understand the uh, what is multi sectoral engagement and corporate sector engagements again we supported to organize the workshops for corporate sectors uh, with the union and that was a great support from my union uh, to state of maharashtra next please so again uh, like uh, we did a comprehensive mapping of uh, corporates and industries available in maharashtra then uh, we did uh, meetings with different stakeholders like uh, directorate of industry safety and health who is supporting us to coordinate with different uh, industries then uh, midcs uh, different industries and their uh, business associations again we had uh, meetings and workshops for indian occupational health who are the technical partners in the industries again uh, we linked rotaries and lions clubs again we are regularly in touch with uh, indian medical association and we are also focusing ayush doctors also because that is the first point of uh, care for many tb patients so we are linking them also uh, many uh, psus like uh, masgaon dog jnpt ongc western coal field bharat petroleum they are also partners and uh, they are supporting in a big way uh, to the state uh, government already uh, we have uh, onboarded central railway their hospitals are now actively engaged in the program then uh, directorate of ayush like the way we have uh, uh, allopathy medical colleges involved in the program so similar way we are involving all the ayush medical colleges on the program and uh, subsequently uh, the ayush providers also in the field next please so these are some of the important outcome of our activities like uh, masgaon dog which is one of the psu they have adopted nandurbar districts uh, for tb elimination and they have already donated 1.2 crore rupees and they are going to provide uh, district collector is going to procure a digital x ray van uh, with uh, true net machines and they are also supporting uh, that 400 tb patients uh, for nutrition so in that this uh, entire journey stsu union we are jointly working and uh, providing all support required for the corporates and uh, district also so all these technical supports are required and that is uh, stsu in all districts all states they are providing wherever they are available so these are the major partners uh, corporate sectors and psus already on boarded like uh, western coal field already they are supporting with their uh, health facilities and they are acting as a working as a nikshamitra jnpt is also on board bpcl uh, again uh, one of uh, the districts in maharashtra gadchiroli which is aspirational and tribal district so they are going to support that district uh, with diagnostic supports and even mahanagar gas uh, limited in mumbai they have started uh, supporting mumbai next so again pradhan mantri tb mukt bharat uh, yojana so many corporates are coming forward and uh, they are becoming nikshay mitras like in uh, maharashtra almost 37 corporates are working as a nikshay mitra and they have adopted uh, more than 1000 patients maybe this number have uh, increased like uh, rotary and lions so so basically what i am showing is like uh, stucu is providing all the support for uh, districts and corporates we are Uh, coordinating all these activities and uh, these different corporate and they are uh, getting engaged with the program like uh, we are also working with big basket grahak pet and uh, even uh, iskon temple is recently ready to sub provide uh, and distribute these uh, dry ration packets to uh, different districts also next so regarding ppsa all of us know that uh, this is a patient provider support agency and it's an interface agency between government and uh, private hospitals specially providing all end to end services which are available under the program to the private sector patients so they are facilitating uh, tb notification from the private no uh, doctors then again whatever the diagnostic facilities in terms of nad dst which are available in the program these facilities are being provided free of charge to the private sector patients other public health action like facilitating hiv and diabetes testings even like in maharashtra almost uh, 50% of private sector patients are getting uh, free anti tb drugs from public sector so that work is also being uh, managed by uh, this ppsa and treatment adherence support so in country like almost uh, 188 districts are having uh, patient provider support agencies in place and 
they are going to be increased. Maharashtra currently we have 35 districts with PPSA and uh, maybe by next month we are going to have a PPSA in all districts of uh, Maharashtra, 80 districts. Next please. So what PPC is doing? Does it making any impact? So if you see that uh, Mumbai, they have started uh, domestic PPSA from 2019. And if you see the progress in TB notification, almost uh, there is a double uh, increase in TB notification uh, in this district with support from PPSA. Uh, next slides. Even uh, recently, uh, we hired a PPS in 11 uh, districts of rest of Maharashtra and uh, that was started in first quarter 21. So it is also showing almost a double increase of uh, uh, notification. And it's not only notification, all other public health actions are also being facilitated through this PPSA and there is an improvement in quality also. Next. So these are some of the indicators where uh, STSU is working like uh, engaging a uh, PPSA uh, different PPM schemes, then improving TB notification, treatment success rate, then providing uh, uh, DBT benefits to patients and providers, and uh, almost all indicators we are uh, improving or doing uh, better. Next. Uh, so in Maharashtra, almost you can see that there are different 15 PPM schemes, and uh, almost uh, every scheme, so we have a uh, different providers, either it is hospital or NGO, or individual clinics which are onboarded, like uh, they are providing, a, we have done uh, X-ray outsourcing, extra pulmonary TB diagnosis outsourcing. We are buying services from uh, almost seven culture DST lab, big culture DST lab like Metropolis, Hinduja, or SRL. Uh, we have uh, linkages with the private hospitals where we have established statistic DRTB DR -TB centers also. And uh, in whole journey, STSU is supporting technical support and uh, coordinating with all these agencies uh, to improve the performance, making newer agreements, uh, ensuring that their payments are happening on timely. And uh, because it's a word of uh, the conference theme is also fostering partnerships and because without partnerships, it will be really difficult to move ahead. Next, please. So these are some of the glimpses, like uh, we did uh, orientation for DTO, CTO, then we had a corporate workshop uh, for all the corporates in Maharashtra, almost uh, more than 100 uh, corporates were there uh, in this meeting. Next, please. Uh, we had uh, different meetings with like uh, RBI officials, then uh, ESIS, uh, then we had a meeting with Na Maharashtra, Mahanagar Natural Gas Limited, then JNPT. And uh, regularly we are providing support to the different corporates for doing sensitizations of their like, doctors or like in uh, like workers over there. And whatever technical supports are required for corporates or any multi-sector agency, uh, that support is being provided from the STSU. So learnings and uh, recommendations, I will say that uh, definitely this technical support network is supporting uh, for engaging private sector and multi-sector engagement and that is uh, helping for uh, a TV program. PPSA mechanism is required and uh, some states it is in a different uh, format, uh, but that is really working and uh, improving the TB notification, which are the missing TB cases that we are able to identify. And uh, remaining point, I will not go into detail, I already have discussed it, but uh, whatever support is required for corporate sector that uh, state technical support units in these states are providing. and uh, if TSU, even WHO consultants are also there, so they are also part of uh, this support. So whatever support is required, program is there. So we need to join hand and work together so that we can achieve the TB elimination from our country. Thank you. Thanks so much, Dr. Yale, for uh, adhering the timings. Now I request Dr. Pallavi Soni and Dr. Akash from the STSU Madhya Pradesh for their presentation, yeah. They are putting it up. So I know that uh, the time is running for lunch and everybody would be looking forward to it. So I'll just take, we'll just take 10 minutes of you to just elaborate the role of STSU uh, established by HLF PPT at Madhya Pradesh. So I'm Dr. Pallavi Suni, working as public health expert, and I have my colleague, Dr. Akash, working as monitoring and evaluation expert at STSUMP, based at NHM Bhopal. So uh, Dr. Yavle had uh, already initiated uh, the discussion that uh, what roles the STSU plays in national tuberculosis elimination program. 
MP being the one of the highlighted most states among the nine states taken by World Bank for the TB elimination goal uh, in line with SDG goal for TB elimination by 2025. Our Chief Minister has uh, reduced the deadline for the same by one year and it is 2024 and Governor is actively, I mean, participating in same. So I'll just, uh, uh, you can just, uh, next slide please. So uh, the state technical support goal is in line with the organizational goal that is to improve the coverage and quality of tuberculosis interventions in both the public and private sector in the state. In line with the goals of Central TB Division, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare and Government of India. So the three main focuses of uh, uh, STSU is private sector strengthening, partnership management and supportive supervision and monitoring. Next slide. So in line with the structure placed at Maharashtra, same goes with MP that we have our team leader, a deputy team leader, and as the umbrella of tuberculosis uh, has various, so many components. So for each component, we have nine uh, domain experts uh, looking into public health, public private partnership, monitoring evaluation, capacity building, DBT, and uh, ICT, intersectoral engagement, and contract management. So the briefly, what team has achieved, uh, the team has been implemented in June 21. Until date, I will just shortly tell the intervention activities we have undertaken. So uh, we have been actively supporting the state, uh, state TB cell in uh, this developing and preparing the contracts, the tenders, facilitating and activating, catalyzing the process. Uh, onboarding the various PPSA agencies for the state. So currently talking about, we have 29 districts, we have PPSA in 29 districts. Uh, Deepak Foundation has been working in uh, 23 districts since uh, from 2020. And we have another PPSA agency, Div Jyoti, that is working in one division in seven districts. Uh, the other 29 districts, 23 districts are empty and uh, I mean, uh, the some agencies have been discontinued so by next month again they will be on board so if we talk of our private notifications uh, the performance uh, in 2022 has gone a bit down but as compared to 21 that was 62 percent and 59 percent in 22 so if we talk of public health actions, so we have been working in collaboration with various departments to streamline the TB activities in the main frame because we have been always uh, listening about maternal and child health in the mainstream routine immunization. But TB being the most infectious disease and the most biggest global burden the world is facing, we have never seen it. So we have been coordinating with maternal health to focus on ANC with HIV TV to have the first hand population screening and to focus on the comorbidities because when once an individual is com immunocompromised, we know that TB is the disease which will attack first. So we have been coordinating with Ayush uh, department for private notifications from Ayush practitioners. Like we talked about tribal districts, focusing on faith-based healers, how to connect them with the mainstream doctors, mainstream private providers through informant incentives, motivations, so that they may notify and help us in identify of early diagnosis of patients. Then we have been, uh, uh, we do collaborations with medical colleges to mainstream them in uh, helping our process. Then uh, P we are involved, uh, our capacity building uh, stream is involved in training of all the PPSA agencies, all our partners and in co close collaboration for technical support from WHO and union also. A uh, lot of intersectoral and uh, uh, industries we have collaborated with, like uh, Northern Coal Fields Limited in our uh, districts, like Singroli, CD, Reliance Industries, Urban Development Department, Railway Department. We have trained the medical officers of railway clinics, the military hospital clinics, the uh, women and child development, the Bhopal Utsav Mela, and other corp co big corporate group hospitals like uh, Apollo Sage, Medanta, and Indore for their various ACSM and IEC activities. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, also, we have been, uh, we have proposed some uh, information technology AI-based tools 
to our, in our new RFPs floated for uh, PPSA agencies because sputum collection and transportation is the heart of tuberculosis elimination. So collecting it on a uh, manual documentation was really not able to help us. So in real time, we want to track when the sample is collected, the quality of sample is maintained, sputum sample, and then it is sent to the designated laboratory in the real time that is kept of 24 to 48 hours. So we have proposed to our PPSA agencies to work out a tool and they are working on it. And our ICT expert helps them with that, sitting on the state. Uh, monitoring and evaluation is the most integral part and we have such a dynamic software, a dynamic dashboard that is Nikshe, which tracks all the activities of NTP program real time. So each and every component is, is extensively data analyzed by our monitoring and evaluation expert and all the data inferences are weekly, on a daily, on a weekly, on a fortnightly and on a quarterly basis shared with the PPSA agencies. So I, uh, also uh, documentation is a major part and DBT. So uh, MP st uh, stands in top five of the states in India in DBT and around in 2022 we have achieved 86% of first payments in DBT in MP. Uh, I would, I mean, uh, a lot of support from my state TB officer in facilitating all these and her esteemed guidance is always there in all these expertise what, what STSU is bringing to the table. Then uh, we have been documenting success stories, good practices, replicating like we have seen the documentary of the Mo. In the same way, there are many success stories during our sub-national certifications, during our joint monitoring visits. We have been documenting and replicating it, sharing it with Center for India DB Report, and at the same time, we have been sharing across on various platforms like ECHO and all for knowledge sharing. Next slide. So these are a few key strategies uh, which STSU brings for private sector engagement, like line listing of private practitioners district-wise. So based on the case load given by the, by the private practitioners, high, medium, and low priority, we just um, we make a line list. And uh, through intensive field visits and monitoring systems and follow-ups rigorous from PPS agencies and under supervision of STSU, we are uh, engaging the private sector. Uh, the status of this private sector en engagement has been shared through a health facility tracker weekly with the private sector agency. And uh, all the backlog entries and data entries are being taken on time uh, so that they reflect on the next year. Next slide. So now uh, this was from my side. Dr. Akash will be just taking the achievements in a single slide. Hello. These are the achievements and the outputs from the STOC, the private sector engagement extensively uh, across the Madhya Pradesh. Generally, we are providing the uh, panel, panel analysis for the last four years, from 2019 to 2022. Then we found that the most of the facilities sub, uh, are not taking the participate in the private notifications. Only the 800 or 788 private facilities that are the common facilities between the four, last four years. If we talk about uh, individually, then in 2019, there are the uh, greater, uh, more than the 4,000 facilities that are involving in the private notification. After that, there is a 3,800 participation of uh, facilities, private facilities in the notifications. And after that, there's a decline in the trend. But if we go for that, the common, how many facilities are common that are providing the parallel private notifications in uh, with the same facilities, that then, then it will be the only the 800 facilities. <coughs> Out 100, 800 facilities, we found that the 38 percent of facilities that are uh, trend become the means increasing trends. Means suppose they are providing the in, in an inclined way of the private notifications, and the 60 percent of the facilities that are providing in the declined notifications, and only the 6 percent of the facilities that are providing the same notification in the last 2021 and as well as in the 2022. Hmm? 
the successful SNC certification of 11 districts in 2022 and 30 districts in 2023. And after that, the activation of ART centers in the ID passwords, referral, something, and the HIV testings, and the, facility, and the health facility trackers. Health facility trackers also develop the type of dashboards in which you can say the in one time how many facilities are taking the part in 2022 and as well in the 2023. Next, please. Hmm. This is the only the some indicators that is the for the MP. Suppose this is a notification. This is the 59 percent of the private notifications and the HIV status, and this is the diabetic and clinically and microbiologically and the UDST. And the success rate, uh, that is 84% uh, of the, in the private notifications. Next. Uh, this is the same uh, graph that I have been, the uh, Maharashtra have been also showing, that in the introduce of the PPSA in 2020, then we can see there is a, also the impact of PPSA to, during the notifications. In the, as well as if we see the year-wise data, then the same scenario have been showing if we taking as the, uh, uh, in the 2022 in the month-wise data. Next, please. Yeah, this is the scenario, scenario of the uh, last year data because in the, some of the districts that have been uh, running up to the July, but after July there are some uh, PPSA agency that have been <coughs> not working. So that's the effect here in the uh, August, September, and October, November, because that impact is really uh, showing in the last year data. Next, please. Yeah, this is the aspiration analysis of private notifications in the year. The last, uh, if we see the, in the lower words, the districts that have been from the other agencies, and the, the upper part, that's under all districts, have been covered by the Deepak Foundations then it, it has been shown to be in the, in the dark, or you can say are then in the increased way of the private notifications. So I will just conclude that uh, Deepak Foundation is a gold standard for uh, Madhya Pradesh. Their work is commendable. We talk about many fostering partnerships and everything. But if we really want to eliminate TB, given the goal of SDGs, I know that ground level work is something which is required in states like MP. And the Epoch Foundation is really working their butt off in all the districts, 25 districts, 23 districts where they are placed to make the ends meet, the end to end management of tuberculosis from community mobilization to giving the outcome to the patient. So I would like to congratulate whole team of Deepak Foundation for working their butt off at Madhya Pradesh. And the work is really commendable. And it has and it should be recognized. And uh, look forward for the same partnership in the coming years. Then the, it will not be a distant dream to say, TB Harega Desh Jeetega. Jai Great presentation, Dr. Pallavi and Dr. Akash. Um, I know we are running a bit late, but if there are any quick questions, one or two quick questions from the participants. Yes, ma'am. Can we have the mic, mic please? Uh, this is question rela related to DBT. So uh, we are running a program, Deepak Foundation, across eight locations, uh, which is called Sangat, in which we ensure that the benefits through the government scheme are received to the patient or uh, eligible beneficiaries. And uh, we facilitate documentation, we uh, facilitate online application and things like that. So in that, we observed recently that the DBT transfer for TB patient is not happening. So as your experience, why is, what are the challenges in this transfers? Because we observed that in widow pension <laughs> and even in Sukanya Samrudhi schemes, in all that, it is very regularized. But in this case, uh, there is some hitch and we would like to know the challenges because at the ground level, people are asking because we are having benefits received for other schemes but when we are focusing on elimination, 
uh, by 2025 and we are not focusing on this, then we will have to address that also. Okay. So, uh, definitely sometimes there are challenges like in Maharashtra currently we are facing uh, issue with the PFMS. Hmm? Like uh, benefits are pushed from Nikshay but uh, there are some issues with the PFMS. So, most of those issues are resolved in other states uh, because we are doing IT, we are expecting something should happen fast but sometimes it gets stuck. Hmm? But uh, I can say that once uh, patients bank details are there, definitely they will get the whatever uh, benefits they are expected to get but sometimes it gets delays so we are monitoring our turnaround time when the benefit was generated and when patient got uh, incentives so in that line uh, state and districts are doing those reviews but sometimes these uh, technology uh, glitches uh, do come and that's why it gets delayed hmm? thank you the thank you. last question, question please oh, okay. i'll just answer it yeah. briefly so what we are focusing at Madhya Pradesh, I'll just like to tell you. The first is uh, the bank details validation is the first step in DBT. So there is a rule that within seven days of a positive notification of a patient, the bank details have to be collected. Now we have our PPS agency in place in all the districts. So it is their indicator, I mean invoice claimed indicator, disbursement linked indicator, whereas wherein they have to collect the bank details. How you will verify? In the tribal population, in the rural population, the verification again c becomes a hassle. So there is a M Aadhaar application wherein you can verify whether the which number, I mean we can tell the beneficiary this number of yours is linked to that particular account. The third is we can always share the duplication list while fortnightly let's say you can plan it to share to be shared fortnightly in every 15 days the stsu mp shares the duplicate patient list so that that account uh, details existing two to three times and then the um, in pfms the verification happening that because the account details cannot be verified in the name of kishori lal 10 accounts are existing and again it will be barred by the system so all these uh, things we have to, i mean uh, these things we are uh, keeping in place to be done the other is uh, since the march financial is year is closing the stso mp had planned ago, uh, along with this health and wellness campaign which is happening in all the major uh, states of india we have planned this dpd campaign of 15 days so in a mission mode we have to complete the payments at least the two, 2022 pending uh, payments and the 2023 first quarter, we have given the deadlines to all the districts. We have sensitized all the teams of PPSAs. We have conducted in intensive monitoring visits to clarify their doubts. And fourth is, we have uh, sensitized the district TB officers to give their full supports in disbursing the payments timely. So these are four, I mean, action points how we have strategized DBT at MP. Thank you. So, Namaskar Sabhi Ko, I DTO Morena MP Se Bol Lau. Sabse Pehle Toh Deepak Foundation Ka Bhoot Bhoot Dhanyabad Karta Hoon Ke Morena Me Bhoot Bhetrin Tariqe Se Kaam Kar Raha Hai Deepak Foundation. SNC Me Jab SNC Hamara Chal Laha Tha Us Samay Strike Ho Gai Thi Sabhi Karmachariyo Ki. स्ट्राइक फेज में भी हमारे साथ बिल्कुल जैसे एज ए सरकारी कर्मचारी की तरह दीपक फाउंडेशन ने मेरा मेरे साथ पूरा काम किया था अब बस नेक्स्ट ये है कि बाकी सादाब जी हैं तो इनकी लीडर से मैं पैसे की कोई कमी नहीं होगी टीवी के लिए कोई दिक्कत नहीं है जो मुझे लग रहा है यहाँ पे कि पैसे आएंगे काफ़ी बस बेसिक मुझे एज ए डी जो मुझे चैलेंज लग रहा है मैं वो आप लोगों के लिए शेयर करना चाह रहा हूँ कि एक तो अभी ड्रग नहीं है मतलब टाइमली रेगुलर ड्रग नहीं मिल पा रही एमडीआर पेशेंट को और अपन बहुत आगे सब सोच रहे हैं बस एक तो दवा मिल जाए एमडीआर पेशेंट को देख के मुझे लग रहा है कि जब वो मुझसे कहते हैं दवा नियर एक्सपायरी दवा या दवा है ही नहीं साइक्लोसिरिन नहीं है मतलब जो बेसिक जो चाहिए पेशेंट को अभी मैडम ने बोला कि पाँच नहीं मिल पा रहे पाँच के लिए तो वो ज़्यादा अवेयर बहुत हैं 
दवा नहीं मिले पाँच सौ रुपये जरूर मिलेंगे ये शायद ये टी वी चैम्पियन भी मेरी बात से एग्री करेंगे जब दवा लेते हैं पहले ही पता चल जाता है उन्हें कि पाँच सौ रुपये तो मिलना ही है तो उसके लिए अवेयर ज़्यादा है बाकी जो निश्चय मित्र योजना है साधव जी की शायद अगर इस पर ध्यान जाएगा तो ये बेहतरीन ये योजना बहुत अच्छा है जिसमें टी मरीज के लिए एक न्यूट्रिशन सपोर्ट तो है ही लेकिन उससे ज़्यादा उनकी द्वारा से फिर रिव्यू होने लगे टीबी पेशेंट नहीं अभी तक टीबी पेशेंट केवल एसटीएस या डीटीओ या उसमें ही बस वो बंद थे फैमिलियर नहीं थे समाज के लिए बिल्कुल बीच में कि टीबी पेशेंट कहाँ हैं निश्चय मित्र की वजह से टीबी पेशेंट एक हाईलाइट हो रहे हैं फैमिलियर हो रहे हैं थोड़ा उन्हें कुछ लग रहा है कि हम भी कुछ हैं तो इसमें निश्चय मित्र के लिए ज़्यादा ध्यान दें साधव जी से मैं आग्रह करूँगा कि एम के लिए मुरैना के लिए भी टीबी मित्र के लिए कुछ पेशेंट तीन हज़ार लगभग पेशेंट हमारे यहाँ जो ऑन ट्रीटमेंट चलते हैं अभी और छः हज़ार पेशेंट हैं टोटल जो पिछली साल नोटिफाई हुए थे अभी आ, वहाँ पे वैसे काफ़ी इस और काम चल रहा है तो सीएसआर जो मैंने देखा तो वहाँ रेड क्रॉस में देने के लिए कोई कंपनी तैयार कर रहे हैं वहाँ के जो हमारे लीडरशिप हैं और जो स्वसाता समूह है हर गांव में जो स्वसाता समूह होते हैं उनको निश्चय मित्र करके उनके थ्रू टीवी मित्रों को बना के और पेशेंट को देने का तैयारी चल रही है तो उसमें कुछ थैंक यू थैंक यू फॉर ऑल योर नाइस वर्ड्स पैसे तो उतने नहीं हैं जितने आप सोच रहे हैं बट <laughs> इतना ज़रूर है कि ठीक है हम आपसे बात करेंगे और वहाँ पर जो भी पॉसिबिलिटी होगी पार्टनरशिप की विल वर्कआउट दवाई का काम सरकार का ही तो वो आप अपने ही पास रखेंगे वो आपको देनी है बट इट्स अ सीरियस इशू आई थिंक आई होप स्टेट विल रिजॉल्व इट पार्टनरशिप निश्चय मित्रा उसमें जो सपोर्ट चाहिए दैट वी विल वर्क विद यू ठीक है सो थैंक यू एवरी वन थैंक्स ऑल द स्पीकर्स फॉर द ग्रेट सेशन आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट मिस स्मिता मनी आर टू काइंडली फेलिसिटेट द स्पीकर्स प्लीज So I kindly request you to present the memento to Mr. Fahad Arafat, our national hockey player. I would also request you to share this with uh, Dr. Raja Baudia Yole from the STSU Maharashtra. I request Dr. Upender. Thank you, ma'am. It's a. Sir, se karenge. Thank you so much, ma'am. So, sir, sir, Dr. Upender. So, don't no, also, no, Dr. Upender. You have to felicitate. <laughs> Dr. Upender, uh, kindly felicitate Dr. Pallavi for the session. and i kindly request to do it for dr akash as well i may also like to request dr uh, padmesh upadhyay district tb officer uh, sir kindly request uh, dr upender i kindly request you to felicitate dr upadhyay also uh, since he is here so we would like to have this opportunity to felicitate dr upadhyay for the great work done on field thank you so much everyone i know you all are eagerly waiting for the lunch it's lunch time so we'll be proceeding for the lunch uh, so i request all the participants to pl pl please proceed for the lunch but we will gather back maximum by 2:15 we have to start in time and i request the dignitaries that the uh, job in hand was left undone in the morning for the launch of the our mobile van i request the dignitaries to kindly proceed towards the hotel entrance and we will do the flag off of the van so i request dr jay pawar dr amar shah mr mohammad shadab uh, mr deepak mehta am tiwari sir dr upendra and the other officials to kindly proceed for the flag off of the van
Dr. Rupali, kindly allow us five more minutes and we will start the session. Thank you so much.
very good afternoon everyone thank you for joining us back after the lunch and i apologize our virtual participants our speakers to keep you waiting we are going to start with our session 3 i request mr mohammad shadab the moderator to kindly join us on the dais We have Mr. Anurag Rai Zada, Senior Manager CSR from Nayara Energy, amongst us. Uh, Mr. Anurag, request you to kindly join us on dais for the session. Along with him, we have Dr. Dhiren Pithadiya from the District TB Cell, Jamnagar. Request you, sir, to kindly join us. The other speakers for the session are Mr. Pali Agarwal, Senior Manager CSR from Paramount Products. Dr. Bonali Datta, Associate Director at Respiratory and Sleep Medicine, Medanta the Medicity Hospital, Gurgaon. Ms. Pooja Prasad, Deputy Manager, CSR from Central Coalfields Limited, Jharkhand, and Mr. Atul Wahi, the Associate Director, Fokia. Now I would request Mr. Muhammad Shadab to set the context of the session and take forward. Thank you. speakers from Niara Energy which is obviously from Gujarat and they will share their work uh, about their work uh, in uh, nutrition support in Gujarat. Uh, we also have DTO uh, from there who started this partnership uh, in Devbhumi Dwarka now in Jamnagar. What they are doing, how they are doing, we have Dr. Bornali Datta. She will be talking about what Mission TB Free Haryana is and what, what a
uh, virtually with us in this. And are we ready with the presentation? All right. So uh, without further delay, uh, I'm really, really happy to invite uh, Ms. Uh, Rupali Agarwal, uh, Senior Manager CSR Paramount Products, based out of uh, <coughs> uh, NCR region, Noida. They are also corporate TB pledge member, doing wonderful work uh, in their factory uh, with textile workers for TB screening awareness and patient support. Uh, Rupali, if you can hear us, it's absolute pleasure uh, for us to have you in this panel. And with these words, I invite you to really talk about your work you are doing there. Over to you, Rupali. It's a great honor and privilege to be a part of this national conference today. And I thank uh, the Foundation and the Union for giving me this opportunity to present my uh, corporate initiative which we are taking at our business to make our workplace TV free. So can I have my presentation, please? So the title is so apt, Fostering Partnership. I think this is a huge mission to eradicate tuberculosis by 2025, and which is not possible without the support of all the stakeholders. We can't expect government alone to achieve this huge target. So government, along with the voluntary organization and the corporate, we all have to come forward. So, but uh, when I say corporate partnership is crucial, not just in terms of reaching out to their external stakeholders, but I feel that reaching out to their internal stakeholders, their workforce, that is also important. But uh, the act, the company's act has certain limitations. So because of which the 2% of profit can't be spent on internal stakeholders. They ha that has to be on this external stakeholder, external community only. But the corporate has another great opportunity, especially those companies who have labor intensive sectors. So like us, so our kind of organizations have great opportunity to work, to make our workforce aware about tuberculosis and to make our workplace tuberculosis free. And we have understood this great opportunity and we partnered with the union and this whole mission. So we are working in last one year, we have taken a lot of majors. So in my presentation, I'll uh, share it with all of you. So our intent is to make our workplace TV free. And it requires a lot of initiatives. So to, uh, to start with, let me just give you a brief introduction about my organization. As Shadabji mentioned that uh, I come from a government export company. It's a private company, five decades old, and based out of uh, Delhi NCR region. So head office is in uh, Delhi, and but our manufacturing units are in Noida. So we have seven factories, and the total workforce with us is around 7,000. And um, so we manufacture garments around 1.5 million on monthly basis. Yeah, next slide, please. So this is the glimpse of our factories. Move to the next slide. So here I will just want to talk about the workforce, specifically in garment sector. So garment contributes around 15% of the country's export earning. So we are a huge contributor in overall GDP of the nation. And we are labor intensive sector. And women dominate the workforce. We have huge female workforce with us. And most of the workforce are the migrant workers who come from the nearby states or districts. And we have, what we have found that most of them are from the uh, lower economic segment who are having long working hours, low wages, and poor access to health resources. So this is the basic characteristics of our workforce. So coming to our CSR framework, as I mentioned that uh, as per the Companies Act, uh, companies can work with external stakeholder, uh, stakeholder only. But at Paramount, we are taking care of the internal stakeholder as well. So we are catering to both the uh, stakeholders. And for, that, for them, we have designed three different projects. So for internal clients, we have Project Sehat and Project Mukta. And for external, we have Project Taruna. So today I'll be focusing more on Project Sehat, which is towards ensuring health and well-being of all the workforce, irrespective of gender. However, Project Mukta is specifically for female workers, 
wherein we works for their uh, uh, reproductive and sexual health and their empowerment. Yeah. So project Sehat, as I said, it's towards ensuring health and well-being. And here we are, uh, our approach is to take care of the entire spectrum of health. So it involves curative services, preventive and promotive. So this initiative we have taken before uh, having partnership on eradicating TB with the, the union and this project. Mm -hmm. So under this project, we are taking care of the physical health as well as mental health. So we were taking a lot of initiatives like awareness generation sessions, screening and all. So TB was not as specific as now it is uh, in our organization. Previously, it was not there at all. Yeah. So after this partnership, we are working towards making our workplace TB free. And this project initiated with the consultation meeting, which we had with the union, then we involved all senior management of the company. We had a virtual meeting with them. So it was like the government is involved, technical agency, the union is there and the corporate is there. So it was a kind of a commitment coming from all the stakeholders. And we together conceptualized this whole initiative, considering our own opportunities and challenges. So after the consultation meeting, we jointly came up with the framework, so which is uh, based on six important pillars. First was policy integration, because if you want to make our workplace TV free, then definitely has it has to be integrated with the policy. Training and capacity building, awareness generation, screening, support during treatment and post treatment support. So these are the all important verticals on which our entire in initiative to make our workplace TV free is depending on. So as I mentioned, policy integration was one thing. Then we identified our workforce whom we can train as master trainers and peer educators. So these are the two important cadres we created in-house and who are taking this initiative forward. And after that, we are conducting awareness sessions intensively in our factories and we are conducting screening and uh, the cases who are being identified we are providing them support and uh, also post treatment support is getting provided from the company side so these are few glimpses of uh, master trainers training so the union conducted these trainings in a very very professional manner and understanding the, the learning level of the participants so it was a very effective training so all our welfare officers and nurses who are there in each factory, they got trained as a master trainers and they also received their certificates. And it was a huge motivation for them. And now they are the big workforce, big uh, support system behind this whole, whole initiative. So training of peer educators. So peer educator is another important cadre, as I mentioned. So they are the workers. We identified few workers and provided them intensive training as per their level. So the idea was because they are regularly in touch with their peers. So if we provide training to them, then they will help us to identify the suspects and in doing the treatment follow-up because it, it requires a long treatment duration of six months. And in this six months, there need to be a support system. So these peer educators have been trained to take that role and also to break the stigma around TB. So we have provided training to around 76 workers. So along with the TB, we are providing awareness on diabetes, anemia, and substance abuse as well. Because these are the areas who, who make the person susceptible to catch TB infection. So it's equally important to work on those areas as well. So we have done the diabetes screening in our factories. 100% workforce got screened on diabetes. We are taking regular sessions on anemia prevention and also in, on substance abuse. So here I would like to mention that we have also initiated health assessment system in our factories. So the, the, the first day when the worker get enrolled in the factory, get hired, on the very same day we do their health assessment. So which include their BMI data, and we also try to understand their TB symptoms. So on the very first day, we know the basic health parameters of the person so that we can 
decide, we can plan the intervention going forward. And if we found any kind of symptoms related to TB, then we can provide them screening and further support. So recently we have conducted a screening uh, camp and this was the symptomatic uh, symptom based screening which we did through google forms so our uh, master trainers led this whole process and we screened uh, 273 uh, females in one unit and 232 in another unit so initially we have uh, piloted this in two two units and out of them we found that 110 women are such who are presumptive cases who could be presumptive cases and we are taking them for secondary screening so we are taking help of the government system they are maybe in next week they will be providing us support to conduct the secondary screening uh, and sputum collection process so in this way we will be able to cover the entire workforce for screening and these kind of signages we have placed everywhere so we are committed towards the fight against tb we want to fight against neglect, against ignorance, and against stigma associated with the tuberculosis. And uh, this kind of signages we have placed, I see material we have placed in our factory, which is in Hindi, which workers can easily understand. And along with that, we are also using our public announcement system, because in factories, we have public announcement system in all the floors. So we are using that system to spread awareness messages, very crisp messages, three, four liners, which get repeated on daily basis. So that everyone should be informed about the TV and they should be able to understand the symptoms. The whole intent is to identify the symptoms in very early stage, because that is very, very crucial. We understand that as early as we will be able to identify the, the patient, we will be able to provide support. So this is all about our initiative, so which we are taking at Paramount to ensure our workplace TV free. So thank you all. If you have any question, I'm open to address. Thank you, Rupali, for the wonderful presentation. Uh, <clears throat> not very old intervention in terms of when you started it, but we can already see that you have done 360 degree. You have adopted a policy you have done some innovation also google based screening so they just did it uh, like a form which is sent to all employees and then they submit whether they have symptoms or not and accordingly then they arrange a testing facility so that's another this is how corporate actually brings diversity and ideas i mean we have been doing house to house manual active case finding labor intensive uh, when people may not be there right now they have come with a solution okay our workers are there just introduce this form and they fill up and the confidentiality can also be ensured if they approach for testing the management support otherwise they know where to go for testing so a uh, wonderful uh, initiative all at the same time i also want to add here during covid time we realize how important it is to have in-house capacity of trained volunteers trained doctors so that when the government services are overstretched, we can at least have our own mechanism. Now they have they have a force of master trainers, the peer educators who are trained and who can intervene at any time in terms of support, awareness and screening. So wonderful intervention and thank you for sharing this. And we really, really look forward to get more uh, of your uh, outcomes of this initiative in terms of because you are doing holistic approach, you are doing a screening as well as anemia, substance abuse, diabetes, and integrated health approach. So thank you for sharing this. We will have question answer towards the end of the, uh, uh, the, the panel, but I have a long panel uh, and I'll request uh, the next speaker uh, <coughs> to talk about um, the great work from where we now have like uh, Pradhan Mantri TB Mukt Bharat Abhiyan, the nutrition support, adopting TB patient, this idea, how did it start? Who did it start, at what level, and how, and where they are right now? Uh, so uh, I'll request uh, <coughs> Anurag, uh, Senior Manager CSR, uh, from Nyara Energy, again uh, the model from Gujarat, on nutrition support, and then we will also hear uh, from Dr. Dhiran, who was the DTO when this partnership 
started how this shaped up and what are their learnings and findings over to you uh, thank you sadab ji am i audible yes so very good, uh, good afternoon to all of you i think mung dal ka halwa is uh, much heavier than my good afternoon <laughs> so uh, <coughs> My name is Anurag Rajada and uh, along with me uh, Dr. Diren Pithadiya is there. He is a medical officer in uh, District Review Officer ja Office Jamnagar. Uh, we have been working together since 2017 and uh, though he is in government and uh, we are uh, corporate, uh, we are working uh, together like a, a business partner. So that's why we are always there uh, in a such a kind of event. So I will not Jada uh, bore uh, karenge. To the हाँ क्योंकि हाँ सुबह से सब लोग बोल ही जा रहे हैं तो ज़्यादा हमारे लिए बचा भी नहीं है बोलने के लिए कि अभी तो बहुत सारा चीज़ हमारा उसमें कवर हो चुका है सो जो कवर नहीं हुआ है दैट विल विल फोकस राइट सो दैट यू विल आल्सो एन्जॉय अ लिटल बिट अदरवाइज टी बी टी भी ज़्यादा हो जाएगा ठीक है सो दिस इज़ आवर ले आउट ऑफ द प्रेजेंटेशन वी हैव कैन वी हैव द नेक्स्ट स्लाइड प्लीज Uh, this is about our company Nayara Energy, earlier known as SR Oil Limited. You might have heard of the name. So Nayara uh, take over, took over the SR Oil and uh, newly formed the company name Nayara Energy. Uh, next, please. Uh, uh, this is a scope and overview how it was started in 2017. May I request uh, uh, Dr. Diren to briefly explain the process. I am uh, uh, as a in charge district officer uh, 2017 to 2021 then I am come at Jamnagar as a medical officer district officer. Our journey was start in 2017 when there is a meeting uh, was held uh, in presence of uh, Sadab sir and uh, CSR group and our TB program uh, coordinator. Uh, we will uh, uh, think that many challenges are there in TB program and out of these challenges uh, nutrition support uh, by, by accepted by uh, Nayar Energy and uh, that time 2018 the program is launched and after that uh, every TB patient of Devumi Dwarka was adopted by Nayar Energy for the nutrition support program from 2018 to two, uh, up to this 2023 and in between there is a 2021 when I am come to Jamnagar they also adopt the 300 patient every month of Jamnagar TB, uh, Jamnagar TB patient also. Uh, we make a partnership for the nutrition support program and we are uh, monitoring this patient. Next please. Next please. Uh, previously there is Nayara is giving Previously, Nayara uh, uh, was giving uh, money and we are procured the uh, nutrition, sub nutrition materials and we are providing these nutrition materials at the taluka level to every TB patients. Nowadays, uh, we are uh, thinking about the e rupees. That is a model. You all know that there is a, an NPY. Next I post on your nice continue. Uh, out of this, uh, we will thinking that uh, if you give a money, it is not uh, every patient will purchase the food or raw material. So we we'll decide to give a directly raw material to TB patients. This is the model for that. हमको सबको पता है कि अगर आप TB Google में सर्च करेंगे तो क्या what are the causes for the TB tuberculosis तो क्या result आया है किसी ने सर्च किया है क्या पहला आएगा poverty ठीक है तो more than sixty percent जो इसका target population है वो poverty में है तो उनको अगर हम पैसा देंगे direct तो क्या होगा वो nutrition वाला चीज लेंगे नहीं ठीक है और आप आ, उनका कोई और भी आ, बहुत सारा रिक्वायरमेंट होता है उसमें से कोई और में चला जाएगा तो हमने पहले वो वाला सोचा था देन वी कंक्लूजन केम टू कंक्लूजन दैट न्यूट्रिशन सपोर्ट शुड बी गिवन टू देम डायरेक्टली देन वो सारा इशू खा गवर्नमेंट का पैसा भी था आज की डेट में कंडीशन ये ऐसा भी है कि पेशेंट को मिलने जाते हैं पेशेंट का दवाई कंटिन्यू रहता है इन लोगों का जॉब काफ़ी डिफिकल्ट रहता है फिर ऑल ऑफ सडन वो अपनी मदर के यहाँ जाती है और बोला मैं दवाई खाना भूल गई क्यों क्योंकि अगर वो टीबी ज़्यादा टाइम चलेगा तो पाँच सौ रुपये ज़्यादा मिलेगा ना एक्स्ट्रा गवर्नमेंट का स्कीम ऐसा है कि जब तक आपका टीबी का दवाई चालू है पाँच सौ रुपये मिलता रहेगा तो मीन्स हम उनको टारगेट कर रहे हैं कि जिनको पाँच सौ रुपये जिनकी वैल्यू अभी कुछ है नहीं पर मंथ बट वो भी उनके लिए मायने करता है दिस वाई दे आर रेडी टू टेक दैट रिस्क और वो अवॉइड कर देते हैं दवाई को जिससे टी और आगे चले जिससे उनको पाँच और भी बढ़ता मिलता रहे 
तो इट इज अवेलेबल नॉट अवेलेबल इट्स अ डिफरेंट थिंग बट ये सिचुएशन है ये टारगेट ग्रुप के साथ काम करना है ठीक है सो दैट्स वाई वी कैम विद द न्यूट्रिशन सपोर्ट कि हम उनको रेडी करके ही देंगे क्योंकि मनी मैटर्स अ लॉट अगर आप जाएंगे टी का सिचुएशन क्या है हम आपको ये ए रूम में इतना समझाए उससे ऐसा बेटर है कि दोज वो आर फ्रॉम कॉरपोरेट आप एक बार अपने डी से कॉन्टेक्ट करके एक बार मिलिए टी पेशेंट्स को तो आई आपको समझ में आएगा कि ये लोग ये इतना एम्फोसाइज कर रहे हैं गवर्नमेंट क्यों कर रही है ये समझ में आएगा कि क्यों जरूरी है तो दस वाई के वी वी आर ऑल्सो प्रोमोटिंग ऑर्गेनिक फार्मिंग फॉर दोज ये उनके लिए है कि जो टीबी में आ गए हैं या आने वाले हैं उनके लिए तो कुछ ना कुछ गवर्नमेंट कर रही है बट हम उनके लिए कर रहे हैं न्यूट्रिशन वैल्यू जो अंडरस्टैंडिंग है वो आजकल के बच्चों में इवन मदर वगैरह में नहीं है स्कूल वगैरह में जाएंगे तो वो खाने में वो भी प्लास्टिक का पैकेट दिया जाता है आप यू ऑल नो आप जो भी काम कर रहे हैं कॉरपोरेट्स वगैरह में तो आप सर्वे कीजिएगा आजकल नाश्ते में वही दिया जा रहा है तो उससे तो कौन सा न्यूट्रिशन मिलेगा राइट उससे तो प्लास्टिक मिल रहा है पेट वगैरह में तो तो उसकी वजह से भी समाव आवर चिल्ड्रन एंड आवर न्यू जनरेशन इज नॉट कैपेबल इनफ टू सर्वाइव इन सच काइंड ऑफ वायरस एंड बैक्टीरिया तो उनके लिए हमने किचन गार्डन ऑर्गेनिक फार्मिंग वगैरह प्रमोट किया हुआ है हमारे 200 जितने फार्मर्स रेडी हो गए हैं जो ऑर्गेनिक फार्मिंग कर रहे हैं और अपने जो भी विलेजेस वगैरह हैं वहाँ पे उनका सेल ऑफ वगैरह चालू रहा जाए नेक्स्ट जी सर आई मेंशन दैट वेरी प्रीवियसली देर इज ए फंड इज कमिंग टू अवर रोगी कल्याण समिति वी प्रोक्यूर द फॉर द रॉ मटीरियल वे परचेज द रॉ मटीरियल एंड डिस्ट्रीब्यूट एट द टी लेवल नेक्स्ट प्लीज आ, ये वाला सी, सारा सिस्टम है वो गवर्नमेंट कर रही है बैक प्लीज हाँ ये सारा प्रोसेस है वो गवर्नमेंट अभी कर रही है तो ये काफ़ी एक्टिव प्रोसेस है जेम के पोर्टल के थ्रू करना होता है फिर उसका किट बन के नहीं आता है हमें बनाना पड़ता है फिर जाके डिलीवर करना होता है तो ये सारा प्रोसेस है वो लेंदी है बट दो दिस पी, पीपल आर डूइंग इट वेरी नाइसली एंड इसका हमको आउटकम अच्छा मिला है टेक्निकल पार्ट विल एक्सप्लेन टू नाउ द ई रो ई विल बी लॉन्च इन ए न्यू ईयर ऑल्सो सो ये सारा चीज़ें आसान हो जाएगा तो दो जो वन टू ये इस पर जुड़ना चाहते हैं उनके लिए काफ़ी आसान रहेगा जो हम इतना वो डिफिकल्टी सिचुएशन से पसार हुए हैं उतना आपको आप लोगों के लिए अभी रहने वाला नहीं है सम की फीचर्स एंड फाइनेंशियल ओवर यू दिस आर वेरी सिंपल वन यू कैन understand it by your, your own no need to explain one one thing is there uh, the nutrition raw material we are giving it is uh, not a, uh, mainly we are giving some something it is decided uh, by uh, ggh medical college dietitian psm department superintendent and me we sit together and decide uh, which m uh, which material is has to gi- uh, miss much is given and how much it is not cover only cover the patient it is also cover the family member next या दिस इज द किट दैट वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट सो ये इसमें कैलरी कंटेंट दिया हुआ है और कितना दे रहे हैं वो दिया हुआ है एक बार एंटर सो अगर एडल्ट है तो उनको जो राइट हैंड साइड दिख रहा है उतना दिया जाएगा टोटल 17 के है अभी गवर्नमेंट का भी किट चल रहा है रिसेंटली तो इसमें क्या होता है कि अगर ये उन लोगों को देना है कि जिनमें टी का दिक्कत है ठीक है तो वो किट से ऐसा तो पॉसिबल नहीं है कि एक इनके लिए अलग से खाना बनाया और इनके लिए जो दूसरे फैमिली मेंबर्स हैं उनके लिए अलग से बनाया वो पॉसिबल होने वाला नहीं है ठीक है जो घर में एक बार रसोई बनना डिफिकल्ट वाला है वहाँ दो बार तो बन नहीं पाएगा तो हमने क्या सोचा है कि सारा पूरा फैमिली मेंबर खा सके वो टेक दूसरा कि एक एक मेम्बर को है तो दूसरे का चांस है होने का ठीक है तो उनका भी इम्यूनिटी भी आज नहीं तो कल बढ़ाना ही पड़ेगा राइट तो हमने वो वाला भी टेक किया हुआ है तो टोटल जो है वो सत्रह के का कीट आता है और हम एक साथ दो दे देते हैं पेशेंट को जिससे कि जब तक उसका दवाई चले तब तक हो जाए और उसके बाद हमने डिसाइड किया है कि अभी ऑनवर्ड्स रिकवर होने के बाद भी हम देंगे एटलीस्ट वन और टू मंथ्स सो दैट रिलेप्स का इश्यू ना आ जाए वही वापस पेशेंट बन के वापस आ जाए ठीक है वो वाला चीज़ ना ऑलरेडी नया लोग इतना आ रहा है तो है उसको क्यों वापस को करना है इट्स अ बिट टेक्निकल पार्ट पिठड़िया साहब विल टेक केयर ऑफ इट फर्स्ट ऑल्ड ऑफ द टू थाउजेंड एटी देवभूमि द्वारका टी बी पेशन न्यूट्रिशन किट स्टार्टेड देन इट इज केल अप टू जामनगर जैसा आई एम सेंग इट्स सेवस दैट वी आर मॉनिटरिंग द वेट बाय गूगल स्प्रेडशीट तो वी सी दैट इन देवभूमि द्वारका एंड जामनगर दिर इज हाउ मच पेशेंट आर इंक्रीजिंग वेट हाउ मच एविंग ए नो इंक्रीज हाउ मच एविंग ए डिक्रीज और डाइड नेक्स्ट प्लीज नेक्स्ट प्लीज प्रीवियस 
in below there is a uh, figure is there in jamnagar 333 patient are completed 83 person are increasing weight as in devumi dwarka 229 patient are completed treatment in in this there is 77 person is increasing you see that uh, in devumi dwarka in 2022 it is uh, awarded as a bronze medal uh, i am working as a district division devumi dwarka in from 2014 i see that in devumi dwarka the health in health department less number of doctors less number of workers even if due to this nutrition program we will achieve and we will award as a bronze medal and now this 2020 years both district jamnagar and devumi dwarka as a nominated for silver medal thank you next please uh, aapne wo kahawat suna hoga kavi wala ki kavi ko pet mein dard hai wo dawai lene jata hai ठीक है और फिर दवाई डॉक्टर देता है पेट का देता है फिर कुछ और देता है बट हो नहीं रहा है फिर वो कंपाउंडर बोलता है कि पहले उसको खाना दो बाद में दवाई देना तो सेम हमारे साथ भी कुछ ऐसे ही जुगाड़ है कि दवाई तो सारा गवर्नमेंट दे रही है दुनिया भर का राइट वो एक्सरे मशीन भी है ये भी है सब है बट वो खाने वाला चीज़ है ना वो नहीं है और ख़ास करके जो मेल पेशेंट है और वेजिटेरियन है उनका कंडीशन देखेंगे एक तो घर उन पर चल रहा होता है और सोल ब्रेड विनर होता है ठीक है और वेजिटेरियन होता है तो प्रोटीन इंटेक वैसे ही कम है राइट तो उस सिचुएशन में अगर उनको टीबी हो जाता है चपेट में आ जाते हैं तो पूरा घर का सिचुएशन खराब हो जाता है बच्चे वगैरह पढ़ना वढ़ना ठीक हो जाता है वो करेंगे नहीं आ, वाइफ वगैरह वो, वो क्या किसी के यहाँ जाएंगी झाड़ू कटका करेगी और क्या करेगी उससे क्या आवक होगा तो मीन्स वो पूरा जो फैमिली है वो कंटिन्यूसली डाउन चला जाएगा और वो ब्रेड विनर है उनका भी कोई रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी क्योंकि ये दवाई खाएगा आउटपुट दिखेगा नहीं जो इन्होंने बताया है कि जो मेडिसिन का इतना टाइमली उनका रिकरेंस रहता है फॉलोअप रहता है बट आउटपुट इमिडिएटली नहीं दिखता है ठीक है पंद्रह चौदह पंद्रह महीने का दवाई होता है उसमें छः आठ महीने लगता है रिकवर होने के लिए तो ये सिचुएशन में लोग थक भी जाता है खा खा के और एक बार सोच भी देता है कि चलो एक बार चला जाए तो ये सिचुएशन में काम करना डिफिकल्ट है और ये न्यूट्रिशन किट वाला जो है प्रीवियस स्लाइड कीजिए एक बार जो इसमें डेथ रेशियो है इसमें नॉट सर्वाइव वन परसेंट है वो अर्लियर इट वाज एट परसेंट सिक्स टू सेवन परसेंट होता था जो हम रिड्यूस करके वन परसेंट लाए ये हमें मिला आउटकम ये जो किट जिसको दिया था उन पे रिसर्च किया उनके बाद एट दैट टाइम इन टू थाउजेंड ईयर देवभूमि द्वारका इज हाइस्ट इन सक्सेस रेट इट इज नाइन्टी एट इन एक्सपर डिस्ट्रिक्ट देवभूमि द्वारका इज हाइस्ट एंड नाइन्टी फर्स्ट रैंक एंड नाइन्टी इसमें ज्यादा तो कुछ है नहीं ऑलरेडी हम डिस्कस कर चुके हैं तो इसमें हमारे लिए कुछ बचा नहीं है इस कंडीशन व्हेन वी निकले पोर्टल फॉर लोन तो इंडिया का कंडीशन देख लीजिए एंड गुजरात भी देख लीजिए तो एट द टाइम भी हम पूरा कवर कर रहे थे फोटोग्राफ से हमारी किट है जिसमें हमारा एक इंटेंशन है कि जो क्वालिटी है वो मेंटेन करना था वो एक इशू था तो सरकार और हमारे एक मिलकर डिसीजन निकल गया कि किट जो है वो स्टैंडर्ड आइटम ली जाए जैसे आटा है मिट्टी के आटा तो आपसे बात ये होगा फिर चावल वगैरह है तो ये इंडिया गेट या जो भी मिल प्लांट का होगा वो स्टैंडर्ड दिया गया था तेल वो फोर्सिंग अपना सोयाबीन या जो भी है वो वाला है तो ये हमने स्टैंडर्ड पिक किया था जिसकी वजह से कोविड कॉम्प्रोमाइज ना हो दैट इज बहुत सारी चीज़ें भी मिल रही थी हम टेन टू ट्वेंटी परसेंट पेटेंट को हम हम इसे भी विजिट करते हैं उनका फीडबैक देने के लिए कि क्या है सिचुएशन उसको हम आगे वाली जो पॉलिसी है वो देख सकते हैं कुछ मीडिया कवरेज है डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन 
और फिर डिस्ट्रिक्ट ने कितना काम किया है कि उसको मेजर किया है कि इम्पैक्ट क्या हो रहा है उसको डॉक्यूमेंट किया है राइट right? और ये तब शुरू हुआ था जब हम इस कंपोनेंट के बारे में ज्यादा जानते नहीं थे सो अगेन पावर ऑफ अ कॉर्पोरेट इन टर्म्स ऑफ नॉट ओनली आइडिएटिंग इट फंडिंग इट इंप्लीमेंटिंग इट एंड मॉनिटरिंग इट सो दिस हैज बीन ग्रेट जर्नी इन टर्म्स ऑफ स्केल न्यूट्रिशन सपोर्ट का इन्होंने स्टैब्लिश किया कि किस तरीके से जरूरत है किस तरीके से फायदा होता है किस तरीके से इम्पैक्ट होता है और अभी जो आप बता रहे हैं कि आप ट्रीटमेंट कंप्लीट होने के बाद भी देंगे इस इस रिमार्केबल बिकॉज वी हैव नॉट सीन दिस इस रिमार्केबल एंड द वे यू हैव अंडरस्टूड इट के एक मरीज जो होता है वो कमाने वाला होता है ज्यादातर केसेस में उसकी बीमारी का मतलब है एडिशनल फाइनेंशियल एक्सपेंडिचर ऑन दी फैमिली बच्चों की एजुकेशन पे इम्पैक्ट ओवरऑल फैमिली पे इम्पैक्ट उस आइडिया को लेके आपने खाली मरीज को न्यूट्रिशन नहीं दिया पूरे परिवार के लिए न्यूट्रिशन दिया कि आपने जैसे बोला कि जिस घर में एक बार खाना नहीं बन रहा वो दो बार अलग अलग कैसे बनाएंगे सो दिस इज द पावर ऑफ द कॉरपोरेट एंड द फाइनेंशियल फ्रीडम विच यू हैव टू डिसाइड वॉट इज नीडिड एंड ट्विकिंग इट एज पर नीड सो थैंक यू फॉर अगेन योर वंडरफुल वर्क ग्रेट वर्क एंड हेल्पिंग द पीपल एंड सेविंग लाइफ ऑन ग्राउंड so uh we will move on with another presentation please keep sitting are you uncomfortable yeah <laughs> okay uh we have uh, now we talked about two corporates one is doing uh, workplace intervention uh, in textile industry we talked about nutrition support csr project by nayara energy and then the corporate hospital corporate hospital is an emerging component in tb elimination program in india कॉरपोरेट का बड़ा रोल है बट कॉरपोरेट हॉस्पिटल इन इट सेल्फ हैज एमर्ज एज वन सिग्निफिकेंट कॉम्पोनेंट बिकॉज लार्ज परसेंटेज ऑफ केयर हेल्थ केयर इज बींग एक्सेस इन प्राइवेट सेक्टर एंड दे आर द फर्स्ट कॉन्टैक्ट पॉइंट इन मोस्ट ऑफ द केसेज फॉर एनी काइंड ऑफ डिजीज प्राइमरी हेल्थ केयर इज बींग एक्सेस देर so their role is significant because they have infrastructure they have expertise they have outreach and they have csr resources and they are also some of the top leaders industry leaders in the country with this background i am extremely happy uh, to introduce you to dr bornali datta who is uh, associate director uh, at respiratory and uh, sleep medicine medanta the medicity gudgaon she has been a wonderful leader an inspiration for many of us in doing other part of work which is beyond her clinician work uh, in designing outreach mobilization of resources implementing innovative project on ground mobile x-ray and then also starting drtb center in public private partnership at medanta and many many more other things so dr bornali thank you and i believe you are joining us from uk is that correct what is the time it's 9:40 shadab okay so good morning and you is over to you yeah thanks thank you very much okay uh, thank you for the introduction shadab and it was very interesting to listen to the previous talks and you know how much um as you rightly said how much passion goes into running these programs and um, you know everybody is really on this trajectory for tb elimination and uh, let's hope we are able to make a big dent in it so role of corporate hospital and tb elimination we've been involved in this for the last 8 years next slide please so i'll i'll discuss the multiple uh, kind of avenues in which we have contributed uh, starting with mobile vans working uh, in the delhi homeless um, clusters adopting district active case finding drtb center and corporate consultation next slide so mobile vans next slide so this is a uh, the first mobile van that medanta started with and this was given to us by another corporate uh, uh, organization siemens and uh, it was fitted with a digital x-ray and then subsequently we had a molecular diagnostic the gene expert and the we worked with government this was a public private partnership so this is typically the way the van looked and we worked with the government of haryana different districts next slide please 
So this was launched in 2015, as you can see, our Honorable Chief Minister, Mr. Khattar, Dr. Naresh Trahan, the head of Medanta and Mr. Amitabh Bachchan. They launched the van and this is what the van had, a digital X-ray and a CBNAT machine. We worked with the different districts of Haryana, going from one PHC to the next PHC, uh, diagnosing cases which were not picked up by sputum. By then, we, all we had was simple sputum microscopy. So the ones who weren't positive, but we suspected TB, our van would be there to do the chest x-ray. And then it would be followed by a molecular diagnostic, which was started in 2018. So we worked over the last seven, eight years, apart from COVID, when 2020 and, a, and half of 2021, there was a setback. We worked to cover all, practically all the districts of Haryana. Next slide, please. So this is the kind of cues that would collect in certain uh, PHCs when the van would reach. Now, it was not a random landing up of the van. It was all timetabled. And the district TB officer would help create a timetable of PHCs. And the ASHA workers, we would give them pamphlets to distribute amongst the village uh, people to tell them that the van will be there on such and such day. If you have cough, fever, weight loss, the typical symptoms of tuberculosis or those who have not completed treatment from before, etc. They all were invited to come. X-rays were done for free and X-rays which were strongly suggestive. We collected the sputum samples as well and subjected them to a gene expert. So this was point of care diagnosis. So if you could establish the diagnosis on that day, then there's no patient, no loss of patient. So in these very rural areas, remote areas where distances are vast, you know, if the patient is not treated on that day, he may not come back. So, so, so point of care became a very important concept and we managed to implement it very well through the van. Next slide, please. So this shows the way we expanded through the state of Haryana, starting with a pilot in 2014, one district. Then we went on to, in 2016 after the launch to five and then 13, 16. And finally, all 22 districts of Haryana have been covered. And not once, it's like in a cyclical manner. We finish and then every six months we go back. So we have three vans. We had three vans at our disposal. Now, uh, very soon that will double to six. And then we'll have a you know greater reach um, across this place. So over the eight, seven years that we have worked, seven to eight years, 35,000 people have been screened by chest x-ray from 2016 to 2021. More than 5,000 patients have been diagnosed and started on treatment. Now, the treatment is, of course, provided by the district staff. We do the diagnosis, they get notified in NICSHA, and then uh, the treatment is looked after by the uh, district staff. So the uh, ASHA workers, the uh, senior treatment supervisor, the STLS lab technician. So these are the ground workers who are very key to the program. Who is there in the van, in the Medanta van? There is a radiographer for the chest X-ray. There is a data operator who not only uh, fills in the data you know, questionnaire with the patient, but also is trained to do the CBNAT, which is, um, you know, which, which works very well in the field. And so he does that. And then there is a driver and a general assistant. So it's a core team of four people. Next slide, please. So that is one of the models in, uh, you know, in the rural Haryana. The second very relevant work that we've done, and again, we hope to replicate in cities, uh, so the urban, the requirement for an urban population is different to what is required in rural. Rural is more access. So the van goes right, you know, at their doorstep as close as possible. So to the PHC or the subcenter. And then the patients are, uh, you know, invited to come and get their uh, evaluation done. Now, in the in the urban areas, the clusters are the concerns. These are hot spots for tuberculosis. Tuberculosis, much like COVID, it's airborne. So, koi bhi aadmi khasenge ya chikenge to jo aerosols produce hota hai to wo usse TB failta hai. And urban areas mein problem ye hota hai ki clusters, bahut bahut saare log ikatthe ek hi kamre mein, ek hi area mein rehte hai. So, it is a highly infectious uh, kind of uh, environment. So, if one individual has it, he will spread it to all the people living with him. So our approach in the Delhi homeless in Yamuna Pushta, you can see a very nice aerial view where the people are, uh, you know, the homeless people, there's some shelters there, some shelters there. So pe some people live in the shelters, some live outside. Now, there's another area in the lower diagram in Old Delhi, and there's a TB hospital there called Pili Koti. Again, these are uh, areas densely populated. 
And in this, what we did was our van went there and did mass screening. So no symptom screening. Like in the rural areas, we asked the patients, do you have cough, fever, weight loss, loss of appetite? Here, it's mass screening because they are vulnerable. They are what is called the key affected population. Many of them will be smoking. They will, uh, uh, there'll be alcohol consumption. There'll be drug abuse. So these are a population that are very vulnerable to many illnesses, TB being one of the key ones. So we did mass screening for them. And so we did in 2019, before COVID, when we did some 1500 x-rays, uh, and out of that 70 came positive with uh, sputum diagnostic, the molecular diagnostic. So it had a uh, high, you know, what we call a prevalence rate of 6,000 per 100,000. So that kind of prevalence is unheard of. And this is a hotspot. And these people are the labor force of the city. So they will spread all over the city doing different, different work and spreading the bacteria. Then in 2022, we again resumed it out of 800 screen, 30 came positive. And this is ongoing work that we intend to do in, um, you know, in, in Delhi and hopefully in urban Gurgaon and uh, other state cities like Lucknow, Patna, Ranchi, etc. Next, please. Next, please. Then the concept of adopter district. So this was done along with the union. We launched this in August last year. And the idea was, which many of you are already implementing, that essentially every district in India will have a corporate or a PSU, which is the key um, kind of you know, industry of that district. It'll give employment, it'll you know, do other activities, etc. So what we had um, organized this program for was for various corporates and PSUs in Haryana to come forward and to take charge, to say that, okay, this district, I will do what I can. Now, nobody expects, I mean, A to Z, TB care is A to Z. There are many aspects of it. And, but if someone can do one aspect, and, you know, then the government is already doing a lot and then uh, multiple corporates can plug those, uh, you know, gaps so that we can achieve our target of elimination. So an example, just because the last one was um, a nutrition based. So Hindustan Unilever who make Horlicks. So they have committed to giving, um, you know, uh, uh, dabbas of Horlicks to TB patients for nutrition support in Sonipat, which is where their factory is. So that is one example, but there are many, uh, you know, all the others I have written rights. Uh, who are who make railway uh, railway they're associated with railway and they're a big they have uh, big csr funds that support the government a lot uh, during covid they were in charge of the entire vaccination uh, storage and implementation for the state so they have huge capacity they have given us four vans and you know uh, one is already in use and three more are going to be rolled out soon IOCL uh, for the district of panipat krishna maruti already the van is in gurgaon escorts in faridabad Hero Motor Corps in um, Gurgaon and Mahindargarh, sorry, Rivadi and Mahindargarh, etc. So these are contributions from partners. This was uh, rights. Uh, can you go back, please? This was rights uh, had launched two, uh, you know, two of their vans. So this is one of the pictures of that where uh, the CM was there as well. Next slide. So the next slide shows. You know, the vans, this is an older picture. We do have, you know, six large vans now. And uh, there is, uh, can you go back? So you can see the names of all the partners that we have. And we started with just two partners, uh, Siemens and Oriental Bank of Commerce. We had two vans, then RJ Corp gave us a third van. And now we have all of these partners that have given us vans or equipment or, you know, or, or have committed to doing something nutrition-wise or uh, multiple these things. So within the uh, corporates also, there is, not just public private partnership but there is a scope for private private partnership so the 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 potential is unlimited really and i think we have to exploit it so that we can maximize all our inputs into this task of tb elimination next slide uh, the other very uh, good thing that Medanta did was a DRTV center. Now, as uh, uh, Mr. Shadab just mentioned, the corporate hospitals really are quite fortunate to have all diagnostics, you know, uh, cutting edge uh, diagnostic, therapeutics, everything. Now, in drug resistant TB, however, the latest medication was kept very strictly under government control. And the reason for this was very good that, you know, the minute the medicines are available everywhere, then they then there develops drug resistance. So these were precious medicines like bedaquilin, delaminate, pretominate. 
These are three that have developed in the last uh, some years, and we've had it available in India for maybe five, six years, but only under the remit of the government centers. Um, and we didn't have access to it. But we had many patients of drug resistant TB who would come to us and say, we want to continue our treatment in Medanta, although they knew that they were not getting the best treatment, which was still within the remit of the government services. So the starting of the DRTB center under the uh, ages of Central TB Division and the state and district TB uh, cell of Gurgaon, uh, where Medanta is based, we could start this and we worked with the government to procure medication to uh, supply our uh, patients who were following up with uh, DRTB and wanted to continue to uh, be seen in Medanta. Next slide. So this is the kind of, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the infographic to show that uh, Medanta DR TB Center. So we do the district TB center would provide us with medicines and we would see the patients, follow them up for adverse drug reaction, treatment follow up and, uh, you know, and continue the care essentially. So we have around 18 patients following up in this. There are some more that we have uh, diagnosed, but they have then been referred to their respective hometowns under the uh, government uh, system. Next slide, please. And this is just to show the documentation. This is given to us by the Gurgaon District TB cell, and we follow exactly that. So we align with the existing government documentation follow up, and the patient is given two weeks worth of medication, and every two weeks they have to be reviewed. And then, you know, the first uh, six months this is, of course, it's still an 18 month treatment, but it's all oral. So that is a huge improvement. It's a paradigm shift for TB treatment, drug resistant TB treatment, that the injections have been removed now and it is all oral treatment and much, much easier for the patient to tolerate and therefore complete the course. Next slide, please. So this is uh, Medanta has kind of become a hub for referrals from other private hospitals. But the plan is to try and establish these kind of centers in, you know, any big uh, corporate hospital can take this on. Next slide. Uh, finally, to show one of the projects that we are doing in Karnal is one of active case finding. So wherein we have appointed community health workers who go with the ASHA workers door to door to identify people with symptoms. And the van now is no longer in the PHC. It's now in the subcenter. Now, the subcenter drains a population of five to ten thousand. So it's a small population, two to three villages. In the PHC, we used to cater to 40,000. That's too big. So we've completely closed in on the population so that we can really have a very tight control. And access is no longer a problem because the subcenter is within one kilometer for most of the people in the two to three villages which are uh, surrounding the subcenter. Next slide, please. So this is the Karnal, and these are the blocks. So each block, we have gone to the subcenters in the block. Next, please. And again, a simple infographic to demonstrate. These are the community health worker, ASHA worker. They go door to door to the villages. Symptomatic, defaulter or old TB, and unscreened household contact of active cases. These are very important people because uh, you know they, they are often uh, kind of missed in the system because they may not have symptoms. But if they're exposed to an active case, they have to be evaluated. So they are all referred to the subcenter. In the subcenter, the van is parked. And when these patients come, then all the, all the information is noted in our questionnaire, and then they undergo a chest X-ray followed by a CBNAT. So this is just to show that a subcenter, Barsat, it has a population of 11,000 from three villages. And this was covered over a nine day, over nine days. And uh, we have up to 10 teams every day of the community health worker plus ASHA worker. And they cover 50, 30 to 50 households every day. So 500 households a day are covered. Each household will have an average of four family members. So this is how you kind of screen with active case finding, you screen the population entirely. So our target is that for Karnal, we want to eliminate TB by uh, you know, the designated goal. And I think with this kind of intense screening, we may well come close to achieving that. Next slide, please. So we compared with the last year when we when there was no active case finding and with this year with the active case finding and we found that we had trebled notification. The gray is the passive case finding, which continues in the PHC subcenter. The patients present, they are diagnosed, treatment is started. The blue box is what we have added with four months of active case, intense uh, active case finding. And you can see additional 151 notifications and we have trebled the notifications. So this is something we cannot ignore as a model. And we certainly are try going to try to implement it in other districts as well. Next slide, please. 
Finally, to wrap up, this was a corporate hospital engagement for TB elimination that we organized uh, along with the union, with a great deal of support from the union. And Dr. Naresh Trihan is there and Dr. Sanjay Mattu from the Central TB Division and Dr. Sajdeva, the uh, head of the union um, in uh, India and Southeast Asia. So the, the idea was that uh, corporates, I think the union have engaged hundreds of corporates now. You know, they have really spread out a web of uh, information and uh, uh, and engagement with corporates to make them understand, you know, how much they can contribute to this battle against tuberculosis. Corporate hospitals still remain in their zone of uh, essentially providing, I mean, they're all tertiary care centers and they provide high-end care to individual patients. They have not yet, uh, you know, forayed into public health, but they can, and they have a huge potential to do so. And the, the purpose of this engagement was to invite multiple corporate hospitals to see the, showcase the work that Medanta is doing, other hospitals like Yashoda Hospital, Apollo Hospital, etc. And that was all showcased in this, so that they can also, uh, you know, consider doing this, consider the options available to them, see what best, where best they can be, uh, they, they can take take on the task and, and do it. And this is something we have initiated with this dialogue and hopefully going forward with full support from the union, we will continue to engage many more hospitals to uh, do certain things. And I think what we have to remember is that the trajectory of, you know, of motivation for the elimination of case notification, everything is on a up, on a steep up. And we have to maintain that till it plateaus, because that's when we know that we have achieved it. And then after plateauing, the incidents will start coming down. And then all this work that everybody's putting in right now, the government, the union, the corporates, the community, the NGOs, that will come to fruition at that stage. Next slide, please. So uh, just to mention that we are also commencing Lucknow. We're going to launch it and start work in uh, because Medanta Lucknow is taking on the initiative. One of the vans has been sent there to start a similar urban model. And with that, I come to an end. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Bornali. Lot of passion, lot of hard work, and a long journey, which you have kind of uh, done. And we are happy that we have been part of this. Uh, we could uh, see, uh, I think I just want to uh, Re-emphasize few things. Uh, DTOs are also here in Vadodara. So, if there are hospitals, corporate hospitals, big size hospitals, hai. so now we really need to think about what is the role for corporate hospital beyond notification. And we have successful example here from active case finding, which is also not like case finding which we traditionally do, but really systematic which has given us yield. So that example is here. We have learning, which is basically X-ray, handheld X-ray. Now we can have along with that. That is possibility. DRTB services, uh, that is another possibility. And then one thing which I think I also want to flag because uh, Deepak Foundation officials are also here. Every state should have a corporate champion. A corporate champion who can do this kind of model which is basically we have in the form of medanta that one district one corporate is supporting in some ways or other whether it is nutrition support it is mobile diagnostic it is true nat cb nat something each corporate each district kind of model and then this partnership should be facilitated by somebody who can help in implementation and deepak foundation has expertise in implementing projects, in convening partnerships, and in working with government. So let's look at possibilities of how to utilize this intent which is available in the corporate sector when they want to put CSR resources, but TV is technical, not everybody can do it. We can utilize your field-based expertise. We bring our technical expertise. The program bring its own resources, and we collectively identify that how in Gujarat in some of the districts, we identify one leading corporate which can be supported in implementation by Deepak Foundation. So that's, uh, I think we have heard, uh, we have seen the passion, you see the passion, uh, how when you do it yourself as a corporate, the work, 
you plan it you implement it you see the success you see the uh, growing and you see the outcome and that is the passion which is reflected here in every speaker's presentation so thank you dr bornali for your presentation your time and motivating us to really do more do it systematically and continuously with uh, dedication now moving on uh, next speaker i have uh, on the panel is uh, about psu psu is the large segment uh, they are not only uh, labor intensive they employ a lot of people but they bring a lot of csr resources also public sector undertaking and we are happy again that uh, we could try our hands in mobilizing public sector undertakings psus uh, in partnerships for tb elimination program and today we have many many uh, public sector undertakings coming forward supporting uh, the program and for us to share the success story what the work they are doing we have central coal field limited from jharkhand we have miss pooja she is deputy manager uh, csr pooja happy to see you again and uh, we are looking forward to learn from your experience over to you thank you sir am i audible yes you are uh good afternoon everyone first of all i would like to thank the union and the foundation for making us part of this esteemed event and uh, to, i would not take much of your time and i'll uh, i'll start with my presentation i would like to share my screen i hope it's visible yes it's visible okay uh before starting with the presentation i would just like to introduce my organization um we are central coal piece limited uh, basically a subsidiary of coal india limited and the organization was established in 1975 as a category 1 mini ratna company uh though csr was it has become a mandatory function in recent phenomenon uh through the launch of the new companies act in 2014 but much before the launch of this new act ccl and cil have been into this community development through its community development policy and we were serving to the people who were residing within 8 km radius of our mines and uh, other locations within a command zone but after the introduction of uh, this act we have uh, spread it our uh, reach which is within 25 km radius of our command zones we are working in eight districts of jharkhand and all of these eight districts uh, are among the uh, aspirational districts which have been assigned by niti ayog uh, if you can see in the map uh, these are the eight districts which, where we are operating as of now and uh, out of these eight districts four of the districts are the aspirational districts which have been assigned to ccl by niti ayog first of all i would like to introduce pooja i think your network is weak if you wish you can switch off the video uh, probably that can help Pooja, we can't hear you. If you can hear us, your video is just stuck, and audio we can't have your audio now. so uh is there any update from pooja <coughs> okay. 
by the time we have pooja back with us is there any question with the panelist like uh, dr bornali datta and uh, the niara energy here anyone has i would like to utilize that uh, this time we have by the time pooja reconnects any question comment feedback yes <coughs> Uh, no, it's mainly a comment, and uh, just uh, wanted to reflect the you know the overall effort which has been kind of showcased by the Naira Energy there, and and the wonderfully the documentation, something which we should be doing it scientifically. And just want to add that you now the feed the family concept is really good because uh, we uh, uh, at ICMR they conducted a recent study trial in which they actually found out, and this is under the publication, but soon the statistics will be more out. Uh, because of this feed the family concept, not only the TB patients definitely get the excellent outcome, treatment outcome, but the patient's family, which is logically kind of are the more susceptible for TB and at higher risk for getting it. So we could al almost uh, reduce the incidence of TB among the family member up to tune of 64%. So I think this is really helping in uh, our overall uh, goal of you know, reducing the TB transmission. So something which I just thought uh, commendable job and uh, what I would suggest that like going forward, we also measure this cohort, whichever entire patient cohort, their family, what is the TB incidence rate among those family members as well. Thank you. No, that, that's really, really uh, important point. Uh, prevention is certainly important, particularly for family members who are being exposed continuously and they are from similar kind of uh, nutritional status and that is why I think we probably need take to, to take note of this and, and probably strengthen it further in uh, our program going forward. Right, uh, Pooja, uh, we can see you now. Uh, uh, Extremely sorry for the technical glitch at end. I'll again share the screen. One second. So what I was speaking about was uh, how we have supported through the uh, DOTS and the DMC centers at our hospitals. We have also supported uh, a research project wherein uh, uh, an additional study or research to evaluate the effect of nutrition along with medicine in recovery or survival of the patients was studied and the results were very fascinating. Uh, we did, we supported them through provision of flow cytometers to carry out the additional and advanced studies and this was conducted in the 28 blocks of uh, Jharkhand. Uh, the third is um, uh, supporting RK Mission TB Sanatorium through provision of diagnostic equipments and other items like X-ray detecting uh, X-ray machines, and uh, the results were uh, we were able to get uh, high quality reports or scans generated uh, through ad accurate detection of active TB cases, reduction in active TB cases, and increase in the number of cured cases. I'll deal with each one of them uh, individually. Uh, what prompted us was the prevalence and the deaths due to lack of awareness. Uh, uh, among the employees, the project, project affected persons of villagers residing within a command zone. So what we did, we consulted the district TB officers, our senior managers and the medical officers, they sat together and they developed a company level policy, a TB free policy, which had its guidelines from the um, TB, Pradhan Mantri TB Muk Bharat um, uh, mission of um, eliminating TB. So by 2025, so by the support of the TV cell, we conducted training of the designated TCL officers and uh, uh, provided diagnostic support. The objective was basically TB elimination and the desired outcomes were zero dropout rate, improved access, improved TB awareness and zero deaths due to an MDR TB cases. Next, uh, the need for uh, providing research uh, was uh, basically, we know that uh, one important aspect of uh, supporting TB patient is nutrition support. So, there is an institution called Yanupa Medical College situated in Mangalore, which in coordination with the state TB cell conducted a study 
and we supported that research through the provision of flow cytometers we funded for the purchase of those flow cytometers and we also extended our space available in our central hospital ranchi to act as the field laboratory for this uh, these researchers then very next thing is uh, supporting rk mission tb sanatorium uh, a rk mission as we all know is a, uh, is a agency under uh, which runs under the vision and mission guided by swami vivekanand and uh, the rk mission uh, tb sanatorium uh, rachi has a 200 bed tb treatment center since 1950s so uh, what we did we provided them with one number of 30 kilowatt x ray machine along with some accessories and 25 number of semi power beds uh, if the basic motive behind this was improved diagnosis of pulmonary tb and reduction in mdr tb cases and tb deaths and these are the achievements which we have achieved so far uh, with the designated five dots and five dmc centers at a ccl uh, hospitals and regional hospitals out of 88 detected cases since 2019 uh, we were able to cure 54 and the remaining 34 cases are still under treatment uh, there has been zero multi drug resistant tb cases since 2019 Aver average monthly case detection ranges from 0 to 2 cases and there have been zero drop out cases uh through the research initiative which we have supported which has costed for uh, the csr funding for the same was 53.70 lakh and the research has been completed and csr supported equipment has contributed effectively in arriving at uh, conclusive research by the research team and the same has been shared with the state tb cell and they had a formal uh, inaugural event wherein this this uh, initiative was um, appreciated by the state and the district officers who were present in the event uh, then through the um, um, equipments provided at rk mission the amount of the csr support was 10.14 lakhs and we were able to help them in effective diagnostic services and in patient facilities these are some of the photographs of the initiatives uh, if you can see these are the medical health camps which are being organized at our command areas where in villagers and project effective people they come um, um uh, the those uh, the sign the they are being delivered uh, the related pamphlets of related to tb are being distributed to them uh, tests are being taken and the uh, expected cases uh, like they when they show signs and symptoms then we assess them we have a designated dot center at a uh, regional hospital and uh, this is a true nat and a tb testing machine if you can see which is uh, available at a designated hospitals uh, for the research project the flow cytometers which was supporting the research that was installed at a very uh, our own uh, establishment at our own hospital and this is the photograph of the x ray machine and the beds at the ctv sanatorium arke mission moving onwards uh, there is an ongoing initiative on tb control and uh, elimination wherein we have registered as a nikshe mitra on nikshe portal for providing nutrition basket and support for mental well being for 1400 patients with tuberculosis in two different districts of jharkhand that is chatra and latehar basically we have adopted all the active tb patients of chatra and latehar districts with the mission to make these two districts uh, tb free and uh, what we are providing in these districts are the nutritional basket wherein all these ingredients are provided to these tb patients on monthly basis uh we have linked them for mental health screening and counseling with esteem organizations and we are monitoring the project process through a monitoring software platform the see uh, in all these cases the monitoring and evaluation plays a major role because uh, the uh, the uh, the services which we are providing to the society should go to the intended beneficiaries and as i saw in the presentation uh, being given by other speakers that until and unless you monitor your project then whether you are providing that uh, even if you are providing the amount for their benefit it is being used for the designated use or not uh, that uh, that requires a uh, in depth monitoring and analysis so for that purpose um for we have um, designed a software wherein whenever these uh, nutrition baskets are being given to the patients their pictures are being captured geo tagging is done signatures or thumb impression of these patients are being taken and a complete mis on a monthly basis whenever these baskets are being provided is prepared this project uh, is ongoing since january 2023 
what we are expecting is an improved nutritional content within them and a mental health status of the identified tb patients uh, enabling in fact acting as a catalyst for the successful treatment and um, uh, we are also trying to link them with to other services because basically these uh, patients the major problem with the suffer is one is stigma other is loss of income so what we are trying that we are trying to link them with the other services which are available for them within the within the villages within the districts within their blocks so this is also an aspect of the project which we have undertaken uh, this is the uh, registration certificate from uh, government of india uh, wherein we have successfully registered as a nikshya mitra under pradhan mantri tb mukt bharat abhiyan like i was saying uh, i would like to add a little bit of story behind this we at ccl we uh, csr uh, doing csr is of two types one is proactive one is reactive uh, we at ccl we believe in a proactive csr so when the pradhan mantri tb mukt bharat abhiyan was virtually launched by honorable president of india shrimati draupadi murmu the date was 9th of september 2022 it was launched virtually uh, ccl registered itself as a niksha mitra on 20th september 2022 before the um, abhiyan was formally launched in the state of jharkhand it was launched in on 23 september 2022 but we uh, before the launch of the event in jharkhand we were already registered as a niksha mitra which was a proactive uh, step which ccl had taken in this aspect and ccl is also a diamond member uh, as per the corporate tv pledge uh these are some of the photographs of the initiative which we have taken we uh, this is the um, uh, this is the portion rath wherein the uh, banners and the posters are installed so that uh, community awareness is generated these are the packets which we are being, which is being dis- uh, distributed and uh, our aim is to distribute uh, the um, nutrition basket to the door step of the intended beneficiaries so we have committed this project for a period of 6 uh, months wherein we are addressing to approximately 1400 patients uh, this is done in uh, association with our ngo partner which is child in need institute that is sini and we are also as i said we are also providing counseling services uh, to these patients for uh, uplif- uh, for their upliftment and for improving the mental well being uh, the uh, branding is an imp- important aspect of every uh, work which we do so uh, the brand, uh, we we try to uh, improve our um, uh, corporate image as well as we try to attain competitive advantage through this branding no, not only uh, for the corporate organization but also for the individuals who are seeing at the posters uh, it should be informative so every poster of us is in uh, is in the regional hindi language and uh, it is uh, every distribution camp which is undertaken which are Uh, these posters are installed at the locations with um, uh, signs and symptoms of tv tv awareness sensitization Pooja, then what are the contents of the basket puja you will have to fast track the, yeah, sure, the time keeper is looking at me sure 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 sir just about to finish uh this is the way forward which we have planned uh, since um, uh, any project uh, cannot be a short term project we have to look at the long term uh, aspect as well so we will try to extend this uh, support for uh, duration of 1.5 years with certain imp- uh, enhancements in the pro- uh, pro- project uh, we will be providing um, tb diagnostic van um, uh, and then there is a uh, uh, extension of the existing scheme with additional features like home based livelihood generation skill development initiatives awareness generation etc and uh, increase tb services in a, uh, already existing health facilities we are already conducting capacity building of all the medical officers on ntep tb guideline and cme recently we had a cme with the support of the union in the month of january 2023 for all our medical officers and we are planning for introducing a policy for tb free workplaces including our mines that's it uh, thank you so much for being a patient listener thank you so much uh, for the wonderful presentation excellent work i mean i my paper is full i can't really even uh, give you uh, the theme and kind of some kind of summary of the work which you are doing uh, the innovation i mean the size you talked about nutrition as prevention you talked about the innovation you are doing 
जियो ट्रैकिंग राइट द फोटोज देन यू आर इंट्रोड्यूसिंग इक्विपमेंट्स इन द फेसिलिटीज यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट टी बी फ्री वर्क प्लेस एंड इन न्यूट्रिशन वॉट मोर आई रियली लाइक इज अबाउट योर फोकस ऑन मेंटल वेल बींग द मेंटल हेल्थ ऑफ टी बी पेशेंट्स एंड दैट्स ऑल्सो यू आर डूइंग यू हैव ऑल्सो सपोर्टेड अ रिसर्च ऑन न्यूट्रिशनल इम्पैक्ट सो लॉड ऑफ वर्क थ्री सिक्सटी डिग्री एंड अगेन बिकॉज वी हैव पार्टिसिपेंट्स हियर फ्रॉम पब्लिक हेल्थ वी हैव कॉरपोरेट्स वी हैव सी एस आर वी हैव गवर्नमेंट अ पी एस यू हु इज बेसिकली इन टू माइनिंग एंड यू पूजा यू आर नॉट अ मेडिकल डॉक्टर राइट नो सो शी इज नॉट अ मेडिकल डॉक्टर द वे शी हैज प्रजेंटेड द इंटायर स्पेक्ट्रम ऑफ वलनरेबिलिटी द पॉसिबल एरियाज how she has identified everything meaningfully is not ad hoc she talked about reactive proactive so how they are really identifying areas designing program implementing it monitoring it are involved into the entire process they are looking at branding they are looking at image they are looking at a uh, uh, kind of uh, goodwill in the community and overall alignment with the program and the uh, and the national government and state government so thank you so much uh, for the thank excellent you. excellent work which uh, ccl is doing and we we are proud to be part of uh, your uh, your work and doing our bit from our side at the union and we hope some of your models can be replicated here in gujarat and in other states uh, thanks pooja uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen round of applause for uh, pooja thank you for joining us uh now uh, the last speaker but not least very important how these partnerships are built and how business associations play role whether it is uh, association of healthcare providers association of corporate hospitals or association of business uh, corporates or state level business association we have brigadier atul wahi uh, with us uh, he is associate director of uh, with uh, fokia uh, thank you sir for joining us uh, and uh, fokia has been at the forefront in terms of mobilizing companies and corporate response in tb elimination in kutch and i love to see this picture and for fortunately once in lifetime we could see finally run of kutch uh, last month uh, so over to you sir thank you so much Uh, at the outside, uh, the time is short. I would like to thank the union and uh, Deepak Foundation for uh, giving us this opportunity to uh, for this event. And uh, uh, what I can say is that it has been a great learning experience throughout the day. Different models, different approaches, innovative ideas, and uh, a lot of these will carry forward uh, in what we are doing. So I will uh, in uh, my presentation won't talk much about. what we are doing we'll talk about little bit what is happening right now but i will definitely talk about what uh, focus strategy is going to be uh, in the coming uh, the way forward because of the stringent time frame which we have and uh, because i am speaking from delhi the weather is bad here so i'll switch off my video uh, so that there are no issue uh, as far as communication is concerned uh, you know before i start uh, Uh, there is a very very uh, nice and inspirational saying uh, which is given by i'm i'm a sports person also i i like to watch sports uh, uh, and i mean in america we know that basketball is very very uh, you know played with a lot of passion so there is an american basketball coach his name is john wooden and he is once said never let the things you cannot do prevent you from doing things you can and how apt it is for tb eradication we talked about number of challenges which we have uh, we talked about the drug resistance and the issues which are there involved but definitely uh, there are a lot of things which we can do and fokia on its part is definitely committed uh, to uh, you know ensure that the mission the national mission which is there we add our value as far as the industries in kutch district are concerned i would request you to just put on the next slide uh just to give you an idea because uh, some of us would not be knowing fokia is uh, an umbrella organization uh, which comprises of all types of industries whether it be large medium small scale uh, with uh, it was initiated primarily with an objective to increase the pace of 
socio economic development and uh, would be uh, very pleased to mention to you that fokia represents an investment worth 150000 crore just from kutch district so there's a lot of participation a lot of investment which are coming to kutch okay come to the next one now we had a number of objectives which were to primarily uh, increase the pace of socio economic development to uh, also work on the esg model uh, also explore certain avenues for industrial development and also address all the policy related issues and primarily in the csr domain and provide a policy advocacy platform so a great work is being done uh, by fokia by coordinating uh, various activities with the industries which are there okay come to the next one yeah uh, now uh, what is happening here is that in kutch my experience i personally worked in kutch in the csr domain uh, for with welspan group for close to uh, uh, 10 years uh, in kutch say about 8 years and i found that the industries over there whether it are the large industries or the medium or small scale or the associations or the panchayats everybody is so passionate to drive uh, the csr initiatives right so it's it's not just not that there is a business and every activity has to be related to business there is a lot of commitment towards the community and the environment is such so firstly i'll very quickly brief you on what initiatives uh, fokia has been undertaking on tb eradication a uh, lot of screening site screening by the ctp members we got a large number of uh, ctp members uh, with the technical support of union our activities are being undertaken a uh, lot of you know coordination is being done where the district collector is involved uh, where other authorities are involved with the ctp members and to ensure that the focus does not deviate Uh, also a lot of effort is going on to pooling in the resources of the corporates the associations and other organizations for the necessary infrastructure uh, organizing various camps screening etc and raising effective public awareness with more than 150 civil society organizations please come to the next one so we have the following organization we have got big players like adani welspan group cgpl um, anchor you know and 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 also uh, the engineering college at kutch kutch sarpanch association this is beautiful covering approximately 500 villages of kutch this is the community as such with whom we are working and since in kutch we got so many industries we have a large number of trucks plying in that area coming in coming out coming going to the ports so so we have also in our domain uh kutch district truck or association of more than 7000 members so that is a reach fokia has got come next next one please so to that extent a lot a lot of work these are certain pictures which are being done um uh, work being done by various organization including idani as well span cgpl uh, all these pictures are there next one uh adani as such has been uh, organizing tv screening camps at various locations symptomatic screening also being carried out during the employees annual health checkup as was being brought out which is very important is part of the medical checkup which includes x-rays and other tests uh, almost around 8000 people have been screened and certain symptomatic patients which were diagnosed or notified and referred for additional investigation testing and uh, in fact fortunately no one tested positive yeah next one uh, welspan as a fokia member uh, is been working in various domains of health and hygiene environment education and uh, they have also been creating lot of awareness carrying out screening uh, integrated tv screening and this these are the figures which are just before you uh, which indicates as to uh, what efforts are being put up by various organization as far as tb elimination is concerned yeah next one similarly cgpl and fokia member this is again a very very innovative idea apart from giving in nutrition uh, the bags have a message which is conveyed so th- therefore uh, you know it's not that only one is working on nutrition it is also creating an awareness so i just wanted to project this to give an idea as to uh, what all innovative things one can do yeah next one okay again these are some of the pictures of activities being carried out various organizations this is welspan group yeah next one 
now we recently had an a uh, very very mega event uh, in um, booth which i was also fortunate to attend and we had representative from the union and the unicef and this was uh, on a collaborative and convergent approach to uh, you know to various activities in the cso domain and this particular topic of tv awareness was definitely covered with a lot of this thing and with a lot of interest people had uh, displays on that so these are the activities which fokia is conducting uh, year on year and uh, various models are being adopted come to the next one please yeah next one yeah these are the activities which have done by fuji film this is the uh, in, with regard to the infrastructure they are providing they are provided and providing yeah next one johnson and johnson yeah now i'll come quickly come to the the basic aspect you know uh, so far we i've just talked about what is being done right uh, you understand uh, that any corporate which is there or any industry which is there uh, each one of them has got a csr strategy and an implementation plan which is aligned not only to their business it is also aligned to the esg framework and the un sustainability goals and presently with the new policy which has come into being from 2019 it is very important that all activities which are carried out the outcomes are obtained and impact is evaluated uh, by various model including the social return on investment so the objective of the way forward and how we look at it as fokia as to what we need to do uh, uh, is that firstly we are committed to work towards the tv eradication by 2025 as a key result area apart from various activities which fokia is undertaking uh, we are focusing on implementing activities as per the guidelines of the government of india government of gujarat union and the us aid we frankly understand that this being a stringent target but achievable target would require a focused and collaborative approach so that is why we have created this strategy as to how we as uh, you know a fokia and the industries and the associations and the panchayats which are located in the region of kutch and uh, the there are certain industries which are in other parts of gujarat also got to work Uh, that is the strategy we just defined now as various organizations are working in various domains in different areas so we plan to create a dedicated task force we have not yet named it which is going to comprise of corporates and the gujarat csr authority and will take guidance from uh, the the government of india government of gujarat union unicef as also today whatever presentations that taken place various models which we picked up we will take uh, value add from those and incorporate uh, in what we want to do as a dedicated task force and the primary aim of this task force is going to focus on activities to achieve the ob above mentioned objectives uh, it will drive various initiatives by doing the following will coordinate with the government the union in formulating detailed plan and impact based interventions which can be evaluated monitored uh, will mobilize support for strengthening the existing diagnostic and treatment infrastructure as somebody just talked about we have corporate hospitals we have uh, the uh, the government hospitals also but we have got semi uh, hospitals also we have got the uh, you know a lot of infrastructure which is already available how do we mobilize this broad for strengthening the existing infrastructure which is with the government right come to the next one uh also we are working on a, to create a mechanism as to how do we coordinate how do we pool in the resources because each of the industries of the association have got their own thought process as to how do we pool in the resources including the human resource not only the financial resource which is focused on identification of the missing cases notification and bring into the last person providing quality care and also the socio socio economic support which will include screening awareness and preventing protective measures in community and the workforce within the company within the organization which will be other than this csr funds the other resources would be employed deployed and with the community through the csr funding we have a large number of csr teams of the corporates which are working on ground we have the asha workers we have Uh, large number of people who are working on various initiatives like health environment uh, hygiene you know and education livelihood so many things are happening there 
and what we feel as fokia is that a large number of activities which are taking place on ground definitely if we can add an additional component which are related to tb eradication it is certainly possible and will add immense value to uh, this program as such so therefore we are planning to add on tb eradication related activities within the existing available resources so that we don't have to deploy additional resources or it is minimized and also at the same time as far as the csc norms are concerned it is reported on the board also and reported to the audit also monitoring the impact and carry out a detailed impact evaluation from time to time and also to ensure that there is a course correction and we don't default and we are able to achieve and do our bit as fokia to ensure that the national mission the global mission and the national mission is implemented i think i i i just have to add that and uh, i would like to finish my presentation because the time is short and uh, we are open to questions from uh, you know various people who are here thank you thank you so much uh, brigadier wahi ladies and gentlemen please round of applause for brigadier saab uh, thank you for your presentation and uh, one important point i think which you really highlighted well is uh, lot of members there and lot of investment lot of transaction lot of possibilities uh somebody who can convene it bringing it together bring synergy is fokia there and if you can really look at this task force which you are suggesting which is a wonderful idea that you can really uh, coordinate for csr activities between members workplace intervention including hospital engagement and this is how probably uh there is no dearth of resources and an expertise and reach uh from corporate perspective in kutch region but it is one of the probably the largest district in the country it requires lot of lot of uh, coordination and uh, convergence and this is where i think your role is so so very important uh so thank you so much uh, for uh, your leadership and for kia's leadership in this tripti if you allow me two three more minutes can i take one or two question or okay so i have bargained for one question who is that lucky one <laughs> okay there are 5 seconds for the question small question uh, for mr anurag uh, in the family is the great concept uh, as amar said and it's already we are in study mode i just have small question to you that uh, when you are selecting the families of tb patients so is there any economical criteria you are taking or you are selecting all the tb patients uh, in jamna uh, dwarka district uh, we are covering 100% families right 100% whatever number of tb patients are there we are uh, covering them if they uh, voluntarily say that i we don't need your support that's okay otherwise in jamnagar uh, uh, dr peter and team is taking care of that at in that uh, vulnerable people are there if there is a criteria he will tell you about it uh, all the female tb patient all the pediatrics all the md or means pmdt patients and if the kitas uh, more than patient then lower socio class Uh, just like in jhoopadpatti area we are really uh, we uh, they are uh, stay there this is a four criteria for jamnagar districts thank you and uh, sorry great, probably yeah. i don't have the approval of the authority <laughs> uh, so uh, amar if you want to make a quick comment i think we also heard a few of the large uh, sector psus and the corporate hospitals also so my uh, request would also be that like uh, now we also need to digitalized right so what i would request there is a great uh, initiative by government of india on abdm so we want to create uh, fac health facilities every health facility abha compliant so for citizens there is a unique health id you should be aware of it and if not then like just look at it you all have unique health id and second is for all healthcare facility be, being the public sector or private sector they should be you know having the aba health facility id 
So that will help us for all you know, the use cases, future use cases for let's say vulnerability mapping or whatever the exercise we have done, we will be able to track that efforts in future. So that's only one submission. Thank you. And with this, I think I want to thank all my panelists and the audience, virtual, in person. Thank you so much for the wonderful, wonderful session. Uh, kindly wait for a second. Thank you so much, uh, eminent speakers and the moderator for the session. I would request Dr. Richie Mehta, Deepak Foundation, and member of Mehta family to kindly felicitate our speakers for the session. Uh, we are uh, like to thank you, Deepak Foundation, for showcasing our efforts for at, at this level. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Ruchi. It was wonderful to learn about how corporates can support the program in various manners. The current practices need adaption and scalability at various levels. In addition, there is requirement for new innovations and initiatives for improved diagnosis and treatment in TB space. Hence, we have our next session to discuss upon the future of TB care, innovations and new initiatives. I would request Dr. Rashendu Patel, the City TB Officer Vadodra, and Dr. Vipul, the District TB Officer Vadodra, to kindly welcome our eminent speakers for this session with a green welcome. May I call upon the moderator, Dr. Akash Lal, on the dais, please. I request Dr. Vipul and Dr. Rashendu to kindly come forward. May I request our first speaker. May I request Mr. Amit Gadkari, the Regional Business Manager, Medical Division, Fujifilm, to kindly come forward, please. So kindly join us. May I request Dr. Amreen Sheikh Research Associate Foundation for Medical Research to kindly join us. Dr. Vipul, kindly please join. May I request Dr. Shrikan Behra, Project Coordinator, Rise Against Hunger, to please join us on the dais. Dr. Raghavendra Sai, Professor IIT Madras, kindly join us. Dr. Arvind Kumar, National Consultant, TB Preventive Therapy from the Union, has joined us virtually. And may I request Mr. Milind Rana Day, Director, Global Foundation, amongst us to kindly join us, please. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Dr. Vipul. Thanks, Dr. Rashendu. Now, may I request Dr. Akash Lal to take it from here? And uh, I request the speakers to kindly adhere with the timing, please. Thank you. Thank you, Tripti. So uh, we are already late by, we are running late by around 50 minutes now. So what we'll try is that we'll be trying to merge the last two sessions uh, on consortium and TB free village. We'll try to discuss these two sessions in parts uh, during the ongoing discussions of uh, this panel. 
and we'll try to accommodate that time uh, so that we would be finishing by around 5.30. I think uh, uh, all these speakers will be given around 10 minutes to speak and uh, the, we'll be having the following uh, presentation. One will be on handheld X-ray and artificial intelligence that will be done by Mr. Amit Gadkari from Fujifilm. Uh, we'll be having a presentation on pediatric TB diagnosis. That is a very essential part. And people who, have, who are working in this sector understand the painful part of uh, pediatric TB diagnosis. So it will be done by Dr. Ambreen Sheikh, uh, Foundation for Medical Research. Uh, then we'll be having a presentation on, on TB specified fortified foods uh, done by Dr. Shikant Behra from Rice Against Hunger. Uh, we'll have a presentation from IIT Madras on TB diagnosis uh, urine kit by Dr. Raghavendra Sai. Also, there will be a presentation on, on TPT, TB pre preventive therapy from the union, Dr. Arvind Kumar. And one last presentation from Grovel Foundation on e uh, Apart from that, we also have uh, uh, Piramal uh, with us. So they will be also like to share their work they have done some exceptionally good work on active case finding in Madhya Pradesh. So we'll have that also in during this panel discussion only. So we'll start with Fujifilm. Uh, can you please start with your presentation? Happy evening to all. Greetings from Fujifilm. Uh, first of all, okay. Yep. Happy evening to all. Greetings from uh, Fujifilm, and uh, definitely thank you very much, uh, Deepak Foundation, to organize such a nice national conference on uh, conference on end of TB. And uh, I would like to request all the my friends. Please give big round of applause to Mr. Sadab and his team because it's a really hard work to organize such kind of good events and definitely doing a CSR or uh, getting a corporate support and running a, this kind of program. But easy hai, matlab kuch bhi uh, paise dena ya to kuch donation dena, it is very easy for everyone. But usko ground pe lana and real, reality usko create karke usko success banana. So you people are doing a really great job. And uh, I think this is my third event which is uh, I'm attending. And I can see it is a great progress. So I'm, I'm sure that TB Harega. <laughs> so now coming to my presentation, uh, definitely how we connected, connected with uh, this noble cause and uh, how we connected with this. Uh, definitely, Mr. Sadab is uh, nicely explained Jaj B. Mupt, Ilad B. Mupt in uh, session, first session. And uh, definitely, like uh, uh, Fujifilm is believe in, uh, value, in uh, value from innovation. Next slide, please. So, how we connected? And uh, definitely, like uh, we are discussing on AI. Nowadays, like uh, AI, normally it is a become a common, common word from every, everyone. AI, 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 artificial intelligent. And day and day night, when we have mobile phone, bhi jab dekhte hai, there is, what is it? It is an AI. If someone wants a ticket to book karne ke liye sota hai, immediately he will get advertisement for, ya to he will get SMSs for the hotel booking. So that is the AI. That is the AI. So how this AI is incorporated in uh, medical field also. And definitely, it is doing a fantastic job. So what innovation we have done? Aap log kahi na kahi x-ray ke liye gaye hoonge, ya to fir aapke relatives ko milne ke liye hospitals mein gaye hoonge, to aapne x-ray machines dekhe hoonge. Bade bade x-ray machines rehte the, jahaan pe x-ray liye jate the. So it is a completely like that is in a big MA. MA in the sense ki jo x-ray ke radiation rehta hai, to wo body ke isaab se aapko dose diya jata hai, aur x-ray nikala jata hai. So that way, uh, 300 MA, 500 MA, bade bade units wahan pe lage rehte hai. So here is the innovation company ne, uh, Fujifilm has come out with the very beautiful small x-ray machine which is only 3.5 kg is the weight and only 5 mm machine. So this machine you can take it to the patient. Not patient has to come to the x-ray units. 
So uh, this we can take it in the van, we can go in a peripheral ruler area, we can take the x-ray, we have very good uh, digital x-ray diagnostic panel and with there we have incorporate, incorporate with the AI. AI is a hai ki whenever we take the x-ray, so x-ray mein normal hai ya abnormal hai, usme agar kuch usko detect hota hai, immediately it gives the indication. And based on that we can find that there is something in this x-ray, so uh, that patient ko fir usko aage treatment ke liye bheja jata hai. Next slide. So how uh, this complete program run, run ho raha hai and mobile x-ray screening kis tarike se ho raha hai, ye pura uska uh, idea diya hua hai. So uh, normally screening of TB symptoms ko dekha jata hai, identification and screening. फिर रजिस्ट्रेशन एक्सरे के लिए किया जाता है एक्सरे की एक्सरे करने के बाद अगर कुछ उसमें एआई में आइडेंटिफिकेशन होता है तो स्पूटम टेस्ट होता है एंड देन देन फर्दर दे सेंड द पेशेंट फॉर द फर्दर ट्रीटमेंट नेक्स्ट स्लाइड सो मोबाइल स्क्रीनिंग इनिशिएशन में फेज 1 में वी हैव पार्टिसिपेटेड एंड ऑलमोस्ट 117 न्यू टीबी पेशेंट्स वेयर आइडेंटिफाइड like 27 locations mein 190 days mein screening kiya tha. Next slides. And second phase mein like we come out with the Assam, Kutch and the tribal population of uh, Y night. So symptom screening 100 and uh, 1 lakh 50 thousand patients ka screening hua tha. Kutch mein near about 1 lakh patients ka screening hua tha. And uh, y, uh, y night mein uh, 1 lakh uh, patient ka screening hua tha. So apart from the screening, we are participating in uh, nutrition support also. Jo bhi patient positive paaye jate hai, to unko hum nutrition support ke liye bhi uh, dete hai. So near about 1500 packets, we are giving the food packets to the patients. And this is the December 7th se leke maat tak, whatever the exercise we did. So household survey we did individual for uh, voluntary uh, mapping, screening by x-ray, AI detected cases, total sputum collected, total TB confirmed cases. So if you see that in Assam there are 11 cases identified, Wynad may 2 cases and Kutch, luckily there was uh, 0 TB cases we found. So this way we are connected, connected for this program and rather than saying thank you, I will say TB harega Bharat jitega. Uh, thank you, Mr. Gadkari, for a very short and crisp presentation. Uh, I think we'll uh, have the questions and answers after we finish with everybody. Uh, can we uh, go to Dr. Ambreen? Hello. Uh, good evening, everyone. And at the outset, I would like to thank Deepak Foundation for inviting us to be a part of this national conference and providing this platform to share our work. Uh, just shifting gears, I'm going to talk about something that has been one of the most difficult to detect in vulnerable populations is TB in children. And the work that we've been doing is one of the diagnostic assays or workflow for detecting TB. Uh, next slide, please. Just to give you an idea, and numbers speak a lot. The total number of kids affected by TB is 1.2 million globally, out of which India has about 28% of that global population, that's around 0.3 million kids affected by TB. And of these, 60% have pulmonary form of TB. And of them, 11% are drug resistant. That is resistant to both the first line of treatment, that is rifampicin and isoniazid. Next. But there's barriers to TB diagnosis. Identifying or detecting TB in kids is very, very difficult. If you just imagine the kid who comes to a clinic and they come with very common symptoms like fever, many times it's miscommunicated or misjudged as any other diseases in kids. Even the x-ray detection sometimes could be very non-specific, just as a shadow on the x-ray and takes a longer time to detect. One of the major difficulties with kids is they cannot produce sputum, which is the one of the most common ways for sampling TB in adults. And in kids, it's said that TB is posse bacillary. That, is, that means that they have very low bacterial burden. Uh, next, please. And because of all of this, the way of detecting TB in kids, or just collecting the sample to identify the disease, is very difficult. The words that are mentioned are the keywords that come to mind. 
all the methods that are there, when you have methods like using induced sputum or difficult methods like gastric lavage, nasopharyngeal aspirates, or bronchoalveolar lavage, all that comes to mind is they are invasive. Kids have to uh, fast for almost eight hours to just do these methods. It's traumatic both for the kids as well as for the parents who have to undergo all of this. Amount of sample collected is very, very less. Methods are less sensitive. You require special skill in infrastructure for all of these methods, and that's why it's not accessible everywhere. Uh, next. Considering this, even in p uh, pediatric TB diagnosis, the gap is about 56%. And this difficulties in diagnosis is the major problem. Coming to what we are working on, next slide. This is where we are. We're trying to provide a very simple solution, and it comes from the work that we've done before. We do something called as mask sampling. It's the common N95 mask, I think, which you're all very, very familiar now with the COVID situation. And we ask our patients to wear this modified N95 mask. It has a small membrane inside the mask. And the patients wear this mask for about 10 minutes. And when they're wearing this mask, we ask the patients to cough, talk, recite, or just deep breathe. And in this 10 minutes, all the aerosols that are released from the patients are collected onto this gelatin membrane in the mask. We then collect the membrane, put it into a stable liquid solution, bring it out to our lab, it goes under sample processing and then detection. Now, instead of these detections by gene expert, this is a manual real-time PCR detection method. Commonly, that is very common, the RT-PCR methods that were used in COVID, similar RT-PCR detection for TB. Next, please. We started this work uh, with our studies in adult TB patients. And as you can see, in the adult TB patients, we had an accuracy of 95% with the sampling and a sensitivity of 95% and a specificity of 100%. What we actually realized during our adult study was that we could detect TB in patients who could not produce sputum. Next. So that's why we came across this idea. If masks worn by TB patient has, is a potential specimen for diagnosis using a molecular method, and we know that this TB can be detected in patients who cannot produce sputum, and the most important thing that it's a non-invasive method, we said, why not try it out in kids? And that's where our study started. We wanted to evaluate whether this mass sampling can be done in kids. Next slide, please. Uh, so this is what we wanted. We wanted to just test the feasibility of using this mass sampling in kids. Uh, next. And uh, this is why we started with very simple objectives. We wanted to investigate whether this is a good method. We wanted to compare it with existing methods like the gene expert that is available for kids. And we wanted to see what are the practical challenges. How good is the sampling method? Is it easy? Uh, we had very good collaborators who immediately went, uh, joined us into the project. We had a children's hospital, the Wadia Children's Hospital in Mumbai. We had a uh, clinic in uh, Gowandi, Vikas Nursing Home, and the JJ Hospital in Mumbai. Next. Uh, we started with uh, patients. We started about doing the study with about 30 kids. These were all kids we, who had confirmed TB, confirmed in the sense we knew they were uh, positive either through gene expert or through clinical diagnosis awaiting gene expert results. Out of our 30 kids, 24 had never yet started on treatment. Uh, we had a ratio of eight boys and 22 girls at the median age of 12. Uh, next. And then all these kids had given some form of gene expert sample. As you can see, majority, even 50% of these kids had undergone some form of invasive sampling. And the results of the gene expert for kids, as it's very common, more than 55% had a very low or low result in the gene expert. Next. And that's why we decided, why not compare it? Because we were doing a method testing. We compared it to control. These were, again, uh, young kids who were negative for gene expert or X-ray or TST, so non-TB, but were in, uh, at the hospital for any other ailments. And we had 21 such kids participate in the study. 11 boys and about 12 girls with a median age of 9. Uh, next slide, please. And this is what we do for kids. We ask kids to wear a mask, as I said, the same as in the adults. We ask them to wear it for 10 minutes. With kids, we were not very, very strict with what they do. In the 10 minutes, we told them to recite. Even sometimes, some kids cried or played around. Some of them never even came back with anything, just wore the mask for 10 minutes. In fact, uh, they was, it was so easy to sample that we actually could get the kids to wear the mask twice because that is what we were interested in. We wanted to collect two types of masks. We send one mask for our manual processing and real-time uh, detection, and the other we wanted to test with gene expert. 
And these were the findings that we've got. Next, please. So we found that in our uh, real-time detection, we use detection with two different types of TB-specific genes. It's a molecular test. And we found that the sensitivity was 96% if we consider only one of the genes, and 75% if we considered both. And the specificity was about 95%. This was mainly seen in treatment-naive kids, that is, those who are not undergone treatment. Uh, with the gene expert, as you can see, the sensitivity was 71%. And then when we had done this gene expert combined with our mass sampling, where the sensitivity was very low, it was only 13%. Uh, next, please. So what we saw was that the mass sampling, when you combine it with a real-time method like ours, it is comparable to gene expert, the 71 comparable to 75 or 96 with 2. And uh, we saw... One interesting thing was you couldn't combine it or it was not giving us a very good sensitivity with the gene expert combination. As I'd said before, more than 50% of our patients had undergone invasive sampling. The youngest patient that we've sampled using this technique as of now is a three-year-old. We also assessed the patients for how they liked the sampling and we found that 92% of the patients were absolutely comfortable and we asked kids to mark us out. The smileys is what the kids gave us as good or very good and you can see that 87% of the kids were happy with the technique. Interestingly, there were, kids, uh, there were seven kids who were gene expert negative but confirmed by clinical diagnosis and they were confirmed by the mass sampling technology also. Next slide please. If you see our key tech takeaways, it's a promising tool that we are working on for pediatric diagnosis. It detects TB as comparable to gene expert. It has a potential of detecting TB in gene expert negative samples also. We have a, another thing is that it's as compared to the gene expert, which uses a very technical term DNA based detection. We're looking at live viable uh, bacteria, and that's why we use our RNA based detection method. Uh, next. So the main advantage for kids especially is that it's non-invasive. It has higher acceptability among parents as well as children. It's easy and quick. It's a 10-minute sampling, and you can do it at even unresourced settings. It's absolutely safe for the collector because the patient is sampling and using an N95 mask, and you can adapt it to other diseases. We ourselves adapted the same technology for COVID-19. Uh, next. While we were doing our study, we did face certain limitations. Uh, we've carried out in a very small sampling area that is within the city of Mumbai and tertiary centers. We had no detection systems as of now for drug resistance. And the RNA sampling, because it was do being done in our lab, was a little process intensive. Uh, next, please. So we upgraded it. We had a uh, grant from the USAID where we got a chance to upgrade this mass sampling technique. And now that we have upgraded it, we have improved its collection samplings. Now we can do the same mass sampling in any remote sample collection area that could be up to seven days because we've seen that the sample that comes to our lab is stable. And the transport of the sample is also simple. You don't need high transport. You can be transported at room temperature. We've simplified our methods from a very process intensive to a very simple magnetic isolation that could be adapted to any district level labs. You have a low resource setting lab or an upgraded high level lab. Next, please. And uh, next. And then we've developed a new assay for it. We've combined the assay that we had and we've added drug resistance. So now the assay that we have now detects the TB-specific genes as well as drug resistance to rifampicin and isoniazid. Uh, next. And the detection has now gone from just doing a few samples. Initially, we could do 40 samples because we were doing single genes. Now we can do about 92 samples. The time taken is same, two and a half hours, with a simultaneous detection for TB as well as rifampicin resistance. And it's, we've made it open source as incompatible with most RT-PCR machines. Next. So what I'm trying to tell you is the current diagnosis of TB is challenging. You have less than 40% who actually get confirmed microbial diagnosis. The method's invasive. You require advanced facilities. Uh, next. There has always been a very big emphasis, even by WHO, even by our strategic elimination program, that you have need a non-sputum-based test, which is child-friendly and could have an equitable access. And just meeting a few of these criteria. Next is what we're trying to throw with what we call as the smart flow work pre-CR for pediatric TB. It's non-invasive, it's simple. You can combine it with any sensitive molecular test for diagnosis. As of now, when it's combined with our test, it's capable of detecting drug resistance. And we hope that it'll augment early microbiological detection to reduce the extensive mortality in kids. 
next. Just as a way forward, as I said, we have a technique available, which is again uh, the non-invasive and the sensitive technique, next. We plan to move this further. Currently, we have done it in a very small study, and we are now looking to move it to the next stage by trying it out in multiple kids in a very engaging hub and spoke model where we can collect the samples from various PHCs and TB clinics and then bring it down to a district level or a simple lab with an RT-PCR machine. Next. We're trying to see at the field level what would be its diagnostic accuracy, its reproducibility, even look at certain challenges that we would face once we bring it out on a larger scale. And once we assess all of these challenges and bring about a minor optimization if required, um, next please. We would like to move it on to stage two where we can do it with multiple uh, sites with the multiple hub and spoke model. Next. Thank you for patiently listening. This has been possible from various fundings and my team at the Foundation for Medical Research. Thank you. Uh -huh. <coughs> So, Dr. Ambreen, uh, first of all, you, know, you, are, you and your team are working on a very important problem uh, in this sector because uh, not only we are missing cases, uh, but also there is a huge gap in pediatric TB diagnosis. And uh, till we fill this gap, it, will, it won't be possible to eliminate TB. It's very important to knock every door and reach all the cases. Pediatric cases form a very big chunk of hidden cases. Where the, the, people are not able to reach it on time. So uh, we look forward to you. I, I'm sure there will be a lot of questions for you. People would be interested and they will be asking questions. We'll take it after the, uh, uh, the panel ends. So now we can uh, have the presentation of Dr. Behra from Rise Against Hunger. Hello. Uh, so good evening, everyone. So, uh, my name is Dr. Srikant Bhaira. I'm from Rise Against Hunger India. Uh, so, pehle, like, jab, uh, Rise Against Hunger India ka naam sunte hain, toh, malab, kitna achha lagta hai. So, ehi soos ke mein bhi join kya tha. Jab, <coughs> Rise. Uh, so, so, today we are gathered here for, for this conference. Exploring new initiative on prospective and partnership model to eliminate tuberculosis. Uh, so, next please. So, this is a presentation flow. Next. So, I'll just give an overview about my organization, Rise Against Hunger India. Uh, so, it's an international hunger relief organization. So, our aim uh, is to reduce malnutrition and hunger. So for that, we have a uh, few pathways like nourishing lives, empowering communities, responding to emergencies, and growing the moment. These pathways, we are trying to, what our aim is right now. So these are the few, pa like four pathways uh, to end hunger. Next slide, please. So our interventional activities, which we have undertaken, like uh, provision of food supplement and fortified meals, uh, uh, these are the packets. Uh, so inside that, uh, we have a meal packet, like the fortified meal packet. And uh, also, we are supporting nutrition uh, support to patients like uh, TB, cancer, AIDS patient, HIV AIDS. Huh? Also, uh, we are working in health and was, uh, water and sanitation hygiene. And livelihood and community uh, security program. Uh, these are the th th three thematic areas we are currently working on. Next slide, please. So, nutrition support to TV and other persons. So, we have two pronged approach, like in the rural areas and in the urban areas. So, in rural areas, we have registered, like, uh, uh, we are registered as Niksha Mitra, uh, where we are supporting 450 plus TV persons, uh, being a Niksha Mitra, uh, where what we are doing, uh, we are providing uh, the food packet to the TV patient, and also we are doing the individual household monitoring. Uh, liaisoning uh, for registration and support to TB patient. Uh, this is also uh, we are doing uh, to track uh, and to get better support from the government. Uh, and next is awareness and counseling. This is very much needed uh, as we are working mostly uh, in tribal, uh, you know, tribal district and uh, tri tribal uh, state, uh, tribal district. So that time we really need, uh, you know, awareness and counseling is very much needed. And in the next, we are partnering with uh, health changes. 
like uh, Delhi and Mumbai are the two uh, like urban uh, cities like where we are providing our meal uh, packet uh, to the TB patient. So where we are identification and registration of TB patient is happening and a provision of meals. We are providing the uh, meal, the 45 uh, meal. So we are providing that and reporting of uh, uh, how much, uh, you know, like uh, packet we have distributed and how much patient uh, got benefited out of it. So next slide, please. So this is the innovation. This is our uh, uh, uniquely designed fortified uh, nutri nutri nutritional meal packet. So it's my kya hai actually. Uh, so it's a uh, is packet ka andar hai rice, dal hai, and four to five types of uh, dry vegetable. Jaise hai, it depend karta hai season ke hisab se. So we have that and one the packet which uh, besides to that packet the chota wala. So that is the vitamin sachet packet which contains 20 micronutrients. So, isko, uh, just a khichdi banate, it's pure that kind of, uh, you know, uh, the preparation is uh, like that. So, water boil karke, usko fri dalna hai. And uske baad, at the end of the, the, the vitamin sase, we can sprinkle on that. So, the process is very easy actually. We don't have to do, um, we don't have to do much thing. Just like Maggi noodles, but Maggi noodles take very less time, like two, two, two minutes. But for us, it will take more, take more time. So as you see uh, clearly that kitchen packets are full of proteins in the form of pulses, carbohydrate in the form of rice, and uh, dried veggies, fortified vitamin powder. So this is, a, this is itself a full meal for the chronically ill patient. And uh, as it, is a, uh, it doesn't take much time, it is, it is very easy for the caregiver to prepare uh, for, for the TB patient. Uh, which is 100 times more nutrition nutrients next slide please so is my or kya khasiya the just it's it's easily digestible uh, salt can be added according to doctor's advice if uh, uh, any patient is uh, advised to take less salt and people have cooked this in various forms as i have mentioned dosa idli uttapam etc uh, with vegetable so they can make their own recipe uh, with this packet it's uh, whether if they are adding oil they can if they don't have then there is no problem they can still can make it so all in all it is very helpful for chronically ill patient next slide please so in uh, Mumbai like uh, so we are providing this packet uh, uh, it's compact international so they are uh, receiving a food packet since uh, over last five years and uh, they are providing it to the pulmonary tuberculosis patients, HIV infection patient, and uh, this MDR, MDR patient, uh, Holy Spirit of Hospital is also getting a bill uh, for the HIV patient and dialysis patient. So these are the few, like some beneficiaries who are getting a meal uh, packet in the uh, urban slums uh, like Delhi and Mumbai. Next slide, please. So our achievement kya hai? So we are registered as a Nixa Mitra covering four states like Chhattisgarh, Odisha, uh, Jharkhand and Bihar with nine districts and 12 blocks and two urban cities which is Mumbai and Delhi. And uh, what we are doing regular nutritional support to 450 uh, TB patients it has uh, already exceeded that number we have and 250 in urban locations. So total, uh, we have distributed or supported 20,000, more than 20,000 uh, meal packets uh, to the patient. And uh, oh, mo, uh, to, to th sorry, uh, so five lakh uh, meal packets have been distributed and 20,000 more patients have been getting uh, benefited out of it. So household visit and follow-ups we do. Uh, next is uh, till date, like 141492 uh, chronic disease patients were supported uh, through our meal packet. And uh, this is the picture where Chhattisgarh government, uh, when we visited Chhattisgarh, Dantiwada and Vastar district, so that time uh, uh, they didn't get any, uh, you know, Niksha Mitra to adopt their patient. So we are providing uh, uh, the entire Ch Dantiwada district, uh, this uh, like a meal packet. So they have recognized uh, uh, this, our uh, our meal, meal packet as a Niksha Mitra and this is the picture where we are providing a meal packet uh, to the TB patient 
uh, through CSC and PSC and sometimes we directly go to the patient and provide them. Next slide please. So challenges kya hai hum, like hum logo ka and lesson kya hum log se case mein. So malnutrition is both cause and consequences. Malnutrition ke liye uh, as we know on malnutrition jab hota hai immunity power kam ho jata and they are more prone to get uh, disease. Food is an essential component. MDRT quick recovery is difficult. So meal hum log isko provide kar rahe hai. It's not like we are providing for six months. So we have uh, one thing called safety net program where we have added uh, people like uh, old age patient and those who are chronically ill, uh, chronic uh, disease cases and the widow or orphan. So such kind of patient, once the TB patient is getting recovered, he will come in uh, that category like uh, the chronic disease cases and will continue to provide them the meal support. Uh, one more problem is demand versus resource available. So demand is high uh, and uh, as we are very limited our operational area only we are uh, distributing to our operational area the panchayat the block where we are working right now so they are only we are providing and the demand is high like uh, in some district they are uh, demanding so could you provide uh, for the whole district. So next is ensuring the food security of a household so this is uh, one thing as we are also working in live load sector and uh, we are planning to uh, like uh, uh, them like the support of kitchen garden to maintain their like food security uh, in the household level a lack of awareness ye hai jo jisko dur karne ke liye hum log matlab awareness uh, campaign bagara kar rahe these are some pictures uh, where we have uh, distributed uh, our meal packet uh, through psc and csc uh, these, these are some of uh, like uh, Chhattisgarh, Odisha and uh, Jharkhand. Next slide please. So way forward kya ho sakta hai? Hum, uh, we want to scale off our uh, outreach subject to resource availability and uh, strengthening the household food uh, security and uh, obviously we want collaboration uh, network to support TB patient uh, through NGO, corporates, individuals or governments. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Behra. Uh, so we like to understand more about certain pointers, including standardization. How do you do the standardization? What is the shelf life? How is the acceptance? Uh, what is the outcome after you have uh, provided these uh, fortified foods? So we can discuss this uh, after the presentation gets over. And I'm sure we all like to taste also your product, how it tastes. We have. <laughs> uh, uh, so we can go with uh, uh, Dr. Sai from IIT Madras. Good afternoon all and uh, I take this opportunity to thank uh, Deepak Foundation uh, uh, for giving us uh, this opportunity to uh, come and learn a lot from here because uh, we have been working on TB uh, since our my mother got diagnosed uh, with TB in 2014 and uh, uh, by God's grace she survived. And then uh, that actually motivated uh, me to pursue, uh, look at the problems and pursue uh, if I can do something uh, relevant to what I have been doing over the uh, last 15 years. So I have been trained in uh, developing sensor technologies for clinical diagnosis and that also apply for uh, environmental monitoring and uh, food safety, etc. So uh, then uh, in 2014, uh, when such a, uh, when this incident happened, uh, it actually prompted me to really see if I can uh, uh, do something and uh, come up with some technique. Next slide, please. So this is our team uh, at IIT Madras as well as ChemBioSense, which is uh, a startup uh, from our uh, research laboratory. We started uh, in 2018. And the Chem Biosense startup has uh, been incorporated in uh, 2018, and then COVID hit. We didn't make much progress during that time. So, yeah, next slide. So, <coughs> Chem Biosense stands for Chemical and uh, Bio uh, Sensor Technologies. Uh, where all can be used? See, these were clinical diagnostics, food environment monitoring as well as pharma and chemical industries. 
so we want to have a versatile platform that can be utilized for various applications as you see in the next slide so over last 10 years uh, what i have uh, what we have been focusing on uh, is to develop sensor technologies for various applications uh, so we uh, it's a very it's very easy to have a device and uh, have a device make it work for any given purpose but a lot of research goes in in fact uh, blood glucometer uh, it took about 50 years uh, to really come to the market right? the first demonstration was actually concept was in 1967 or something like that and the glucometers came into existence only in 1997 and then subsequently in the 2000s so like this and that's how the research goes on so uh, if you go to the next slide uh, you see that we have now have technologies more or less uh, from any kind of analyte starting from small heavy metal ions all the way to pathogens of course every problem is very specific and the solution is also quite specific like one uh, one shirt doesn't fit every one so it's like one solution doesn't fit every problem <coughs> so uh, moving forward we we see that next slide please so as i said uh, tb has been uh, in our mind uh, and then we when we look at obviously you are very much aware of all uh, this entire information uh, presented over here i feel that uh, even though we are more we more talk about pulmonary tb but there is a lot that we are not aware of as far as extra pulmonary tb is concerned so that's where a lot of emphasis has to be given uh, otherwise we still may miss a lot of cases so in this direction when we look at uh, the existing techniques next slide please uh, i would say the current techniques cell culture or uh, uh, nat based techniques are laborious obviously and i'm afraid if you can conf confront me when i say inefficient uh, because if you look at true nat or any other uh, technique and uh, nucleic acid amplification technique it involves a lot of steps uh, so that really requires a lot of skilled uh, skilled uh, hands so in addition uh, in fact uh, tb samples cannot be handled uh, just like that especially tb cells so for that uh, and most of the times when uh, there is tb uh, present in any other organ not lungs one has to really access uh, the sample through biopsy and then only one can actually uh, confirm so with these difficulties uh, when we looked at literature there have been some reports where from urine one may be able to detect uh, active tb infection uh, using a molecule called as lam so that's what we picked up and then uh, when we looked at uh, literature uh, the lam these are these are simple molecules present on the cell wall of the uh, bacterium they are uh, present at very low concentrations in urine so unfortunately the existing techniques are not capable of uh, detecting such very low concentrations of molecules in urine or any other uh, sample even blood so uh, fortunately at the same time next slide please uh, we realized uh, a technology we name we call it as plasmonic fiber optic absorbance by sensor technology we call it as pfab and we find that uh, this technique is capable of detecting uh, analytes molecules of interest down to uh, automolar concentration that means about uh, 200 molecules in 25 microliters 25 microliters means maybe a one big dro water droplet something like that so it may seem like 200 molecules is still big but believe me that is a very small concentration uh, to detect so uh, we see that uh, we whatever that, that fiber optic probes that we have developed uh, over maybe 15 years i would say uh, from 2007 onwards that's when i started my, my work at iit bombay as a phd student so now 22 so 15 years so we see that uh, these probes can make wonders uh, a simple lateral flow assay, the pregnancy test kit that you typically are aware of, uh, you the assay takes place on the uh, you know paper device. 
So if you can have the same steps in solution phase, that's what we are doing uh, in here with an optical fiber. So I'm being more technical, pardon me <laughs> for that, but it's quite interesting uh, to have an analogy how it's as simple as a pregnancy test kit. So only there are two incubation steps. One, you, you prepare a gold nano reagent and then add urine sample uh, to this reagent, small droplets, 25 microliters, and leave it for five minutes and then subsequently the probe that you see uh, which is just next to the coin, 5 rupee coin, that is our probe. You just dip that probe, of course, that has antibodies again. Uh, dip that probe in this uh, sample reagent mixture, keep it for uh, 10 minutes. Uh, you actually see that uh, if there is lamb present in the sample, uh, you see uh, a response, sensor response. So <coughs> we see that uh, this is... Uh, the slam concentrations down to very small concentrations can be detected, uh, which is the need for this case. And uh, of course, Fujifilm and uh, LE determined they have been trying to actually realize a sensor or uh, a technique to detect LAM. Uh, I don't know uh, what is the progress. Uh, that's what I was actually trying to inquire uh, my friend here. Uh, so, yeah, but we do have a proof of concept and we have published it in a research journal, so peer-reviewed. Uh, so we are looking at uh, going to basically clinical uh, sample uh, testing now. Next slide, please. So what is the value proposition here is uh, it, the sensitivity is quite high. It's only two steps, incubation. There is There are no heating or, uh, you know, uh, cooling steps or uh, overnight incubation, nothing like that. And more importantly, extra polynomial TB where there is active TB, these tests may be applied. So that's the most important uh, value that uh, this test can offer. Uh, which again, which is quite uh, and non polymer TB, but no sputum case where elderly people or uh, children, as uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Amreen mentioned, so that may also be used. So uh, going forward, uh, can you go to next slide? So this is the kind of uh, the early version of uh, uh, device that we have developed, sorry. And uh, this is the uh, new version of the device that we have, uh, more like a pipette uh, that can be, uh, that, that in fact simply has, you have a slot here and uh, this slot is thank you this uh, this is for uh, the probe this is the probe cartridge and uh, the sample will be here reagent sample mixture will be here you can remove it and then uh, put it over here and then attach it and uh, you should be able to get reading over 10 minutes so that's the uh, that's what we are looking at Uh, we, we, uh, thank you, but, uh, but we are yet to test the clinical samples. <laughs> so, next slide, please. Uh, uh, this, uh, in fact, uh, no technology is basically can be done in one or two years. A years, many more decades can actually go into each technology. For example, the fiber probe that you see that has to be manufactured in large numbers. Uh, so, and then uh, we have developed a machine to automate this uh, fabrication process and then readout devices and then multi-channel devices if necessary. All these we have been working over last six to seven years uh, to realize uh, and make this technology viable. So, uh, and in the interest of time, I have a video, but probably I'll skip that video in the next slide and then, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, we, we can skip that video, no issues. You want to see, are you interested or we can skip? Okay. Maybe you have to just click on the video. Right, this is the video. I think the audio is uh, not coming. So these are the optical fibers. These optical fibers are different from uh, what we use in communication purpose. These are little, slightly thicker uh, in diameter. 
and uh, these are manual processes which can be automated uh, still we uh, we in the middle we make a room for the fiber to get exposed and we straighten these fibers and then uh, we have developed a machine we call it as fiber bending machine we load these uh, fibers onto this machine uh, like this and then uh, being glass if you can heat this glass uh, make it uh, soft you should be able to bend these fibers why we bend these fibers is to increase the light interaction with the gold nanoparticles so that we can detect very small number of gold nanoparticles and that's how we can detect very small number of analytes present in a urine sample so once we make this uh, probes we uh, characterize them and then uh, uh, we uh, these are very small as you see this uh, hardly 1 mm 1 and 1/2 mm that's it so we have cartridges uh so that we can ha any user can handle them properly and then uh, we we subject them to clean uh, cleaning procedures so that before uh, putting antibodies or bio molecule bio receptors on the surface and then uh, we we need read out devices like what you see here these read out devices we have developed as a single channel as well as uh, a multi channel ones so so that's a, a version 1 i would say or version 2 of the devices that we have developed and then ultimately we also did multi mode uh, multi channel uh, sensors so that about six samples can be handled at a time so this is version 1 of uh, uh, the multi channel system and this is the version 2 of the multi channel system we call it as r fab r ar means array and fab fiber optic absorbance by sensor so yeah and uh, there of course one can actually have some automation or need not have automation it doesn't matter uh, but more important is the functionality uh, so this should be functional so uh, we can go to the next slide please so uh, we, uh, the first row we are there the second row is what we are looking at we be, uh, in fact want to partner with uh, clinical diagnostic kit manufacturers make this technology available to them so that they can uh, adopt this technology not only for tb but also for many other diseases so with that uh, i thank uh, uh, everyone for your patient listening and then uh, also thank uh, funding agencies could you please show the next slide yeah so this is the team uh, some of the team members and also my former gurus colleagues students everyone thank you very much uh thank you dr sai uh you have taken us to the future of diagnostics and we really hope that your research gets completed on time because it will be a great help to this sector uh can we now have uh, dr arvind is he joining virtually Uh, hello good afternoon all am i audible yes you are audible okay thank you so uh, myself dr arvind kumar is an assistant consultant for tb infection and tb preventive therapy so today we will discuss uh, the innovative and new initiatives in the tb preventive treatment the so next slide please so uh, why because we have a uh, target set by the unhlm united nation high level meeting and uh, uh, sustainable development goal by 2030 to reduce the number of tb death by 90% and reduction the tb incidence rates by 80% and uh, tb affected family facing catastrophic cost uh, due to tb to reduce 0% so this is the goal by 2030 and uh, <coughs> we are uh, trying to achieve this uh, next please yeah so government of india has this uh, uh, aim to reduce uh, the uh, the target uh, 
by 2025. So, if we are going to the current global trend, uh, that is 2 percent reduction in the new cases, incident cases. So, it will take uh, uh, more time to uh, reach this goal, but we have some uh, innovative new things like vaccine, TB preventive treatment and uh, other universal health coverage and social protection. So, uh, by combining all these uh, means, we can uh, reduce up to uh, 2030 or 2035. And next slide, please. So, uh, national strategic plan set by the government of India, they have four uh, component critical pillar for that. One is detect and treat, build and prevent. So, detect means detection of all the uh, TB patient, treating all the TB patients and preventing the TB among the susceptible or uh, susceptible uh, population to reduce the new TB patients coming out. So, uh, <coughs> Uh, next please. Okay. So, uh, through this uh, TB preventive treatment is suggested to the all high risk group people including the household contacts and uh, through the contact tracing of the uh, current TB patients and the secondary TB patients through the uh, other high risk group including uh, immunocompromised status or others are on the uh, immunosuppressive therapies and the wide gr uh, risk group uh, for the 24 conditions or disease. So, uh, next please. So, if you are talking about the burden of TB infection, according to the National TB Prevalence Survey of 2019 to 21, uh, the survey was uh, conducted throughout India and uh, with the help of the test, uh, this IGRA. So, we find that uh, more than 20, uh, more than 15 uh, years of age, uh, in general population, there are 31.3 percent of uh, infected general population in India we have. So, nearly we have 35 to 40 crore Indian population with TB infection. So, uh, which is estimated around uh, 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 26 lakhs. So, we have a huge number and these, uh, these uh, uh, 31 percent population, uh, every year 10 percent of these infected people are uh, diagnosed to the TB disease. So, we have a uh, huge pool of new TB patients if we are not uh, taking care of the TB infection. So, next slide please. So, uh, as we are talking about the 31 percent of the uh, infection among the general population, so uh, 75 percent of these infected people develop TB within one year uh, time period and within the two year time period 97 of the 97 percent of these infected people develop TB disease. So, uh, if we can introduce this TB preventive treatment, so we can reduce uh, uh, development of the TB uh, around 60 percent and 90 percent among the uh, patient living with the HIV. Next slide please. So, if you are talking about uh, the reduction of uh, this risk, uh, if we compare with the general population and the other state of the age group. So, uh, uh, risk of increased uh, TB among the bacteriologically confirmed TB patients to the general population is 25 times more. And uh, next, please. Uh, 16 to 20 percent times more in uh, HIV and co infection, and 3 to 4 times in other immune compromised status like diabetes and etc. So, and uh, like uh, Mr. Shara was talking about, so. And these, uh, if you are talking about the age groups of uh, more than 15 years of age, that is a productive age group having uh, more chance to develop these, uh, uh, the TB disease among the infection. As you can see in this graph, it is highlighted uh, through red. So, more than 15 years of age are uh, more vulnerable. And next slide, please. So, how we are planning to, yeah, how we are going through this journey. So, till 2018, policy for TB preventive treatment in uh, people living with HIV and the uh, age group of less than 5 year, household contact of the less than 5 year was there. Uh, in September 18 to May 20, National Technical Working Group for TB Infection was formed and there was high level 3 meeting uh, to develop the TPT guideline. November 20 to April 2021, uh, Ministry of uh, Health uh, launched programmatic management of TB preventive therapy in Kerala state with uh, six months of isinazide and three months of rifampicin and isinazide in children and adolescents. 
and after that we uh, after getting the result of this in august and september 2021 guideline for Pro programmatic management of tb preventive therapy was released by honorable health minister and national tra training on who india swasti group platform district wise uh, for, uh, for the tpt and scale up plan was considered in september 21 to february 2022 3 hp another regime course was arranged by who and global fund by the primary recipient issue by the global fund tpt project launched to support 194 districts uh, states state wise national review of progress of tpt scale up and introduction of tpt in uh, in the drug resistant tb also in 12 state so uh, in march uh, to august 2022 three rh another regime expansion in five state plan for 2023 to scale up is 3hp regimen and another uh, uh, skin sensitive test next please so what are the target group strategy and regimen option we have for the prevention uh, the preventive therapy so we have people living with hiv uh, who are on the art or without art adult and children more than 12 months infants less than 12 months with hiv in contact with the hiv tb active tb and the uh, household contacts below 5 year of pulmonary tb patient pulmonary tb patient uh, means like uh, who are bi microbiologically confirmed so we have strategy for them is uh, tb preventive treatment to all after ruling out the active tb disease and the treatment option available for them is the 6 months of isonazide or 3 hp another regimen uh, next button please okay so other risk group we have a target population household contact 5 year and above of pulmonary tb patients other risk group uh, including person initiating on immunosuppressant or anti tnf treatment silicosis and person on dialysis or transplant recipients malnourished diabetes alcohol abuse smoker and uh, integrity with the active case finding so we have testing for them uh, at, uh, tbi through uh, igra or tst and uh, after that ruling out of active tb we are uh, providing for uh, tb preventive treatment for them so the regimen option for these uh, risk group is 6h that means 6 months of isonazide or 3 months of isonazide with rifapentin uh, that is given in the uh, more than 2 year old uh, person so another group is household contact of trtb patients so household contact of mdr patient that are fluorocholin susceptible or household contact of uh, h monopoly patient rifampicin susceptible we have 6 months of daily levofloxacin for them and 4 months daily of rifampicin next slide please so how like tpt is working we are uh, now we, in this slide we talk about the efficacy safety and uh, risk of the drug resistance so efficacy if we see that if uh, the regimen we are providing so risk of reduction uh, is 60% to 90% Uh, between those who get tpt versus who do not so if you are providing then tb preventive treatment so we can reduce the risk of tb from 60% to the 90% and this protection lasts between 6 to 19 years in subsequent slide we will see the references for this uh, risk reduction and the uh, protection uh, for 6 to 19 year and safety uh, we're talking about safety a very small proportion of people on tpt develop serious adverse event very few uh, ad uh, adverse event are there which are uh, notifying most adverse event are self limiting and reversible that that means there is no need to stop the tb preventive treatment and shorter rifamycin based regimen have a better safety profile uh, we will see in the subsequent slide and there is no evidence till date uh, that showcasing uh, increase resistance to this uh, tb preventive therapy and next slide please so uh, there are some studies which are showing that if you are giving uh, tb preventive treatment so that protection is last for 6 to 9 years if we can see the example uh, a study in the alaska in brazil thryo study temprano trial and recent study from myanmar indonesia brief tb so uh, they all the studies are uh, uh, telling us we can interpret the result that the protection from the tb preventive therapy is 6 to 19 years uh, next slide please so uh, if you are providing tpt so uh, the mortality uh, is reducing uh, through this 
graph you can see if we are uh, giving the isoniazide preventive therapy or without isoniazide preventive therapy art means uh, antiretroviral treatment for the hiv patients so uh, if you are not giving ipt or this treat, uh, tb preventive treatment so the mortality uh, uh, death probability of death is 6.9% and if you are giving the uh, tpt the probability of death reduced to 4.1%. Uh, so, if uh, the Temprano study shows up, uh, shows that uh, we can reduce 37% of the TB mortality in patient living with HIV with high CD4 count uh, receiving six months of isoniazide preventive therapy uh, independent of antiretroviral treatment they are getting for the HIV. Next slide please. So, uh, <coughs> Uh, sorry, to interrupt you, Dr. Arvind. Uh, sorry to interrupt you. I think uh, uh, we have only two, three minutes left for your presentation. Can you please uh, finish okay. it off? Yeah. Okay. So next slide, please. We can skip this, these uh, studies. Okay. Next slide, please. Next. Slide. Yeah, one, this one. So we can give this TB preventive therapy in pregnant women also, and. Uh, there is no adverse uh, outcome in pregnancy or fetal or neonatal death and uh, uh, no increase in the risk of maternal hepatotoxicity. So, it is safe in the uh, pregnant woman also. Next slide, please. And next. So, this is the algorithm how we are screening for the uh, um, people for the like uh, um, eligible for TPT among HIV and household contact and the other risk group. So, we can skip that, otherwise, uh, I feel I will explain it will take time. So, um, next please. So, what is the contraindication for TPT here is uh, who are active TB patients, we, that is means like they will go on the uh, proper routine treatment and patients having some acute or chronic hepatitis or uh, beneficiary are on a hepatotoxic medication or having regular or heavy alcohol consumption or any, any uh, peripheral neuropathy. So, these are some contraindications for TB preventive therapy. Otherwise, we can give uh, TB preventive therapy to the all beneficiary of uh, the household contact of TB patient and other risk group. Next slide, please. Uh, so, uh, before providing them this preventive treatment, we need counseling for the eligible person and family, information about the TB infection, why we need the TB preventive treatment, schedule of medication, adherence support, benefit and uh, what are the benefit of completing this course. Next slide, please. So, there is a pre TPT uh, assessment also, personal history we are taking about the allergy history of the patient, HIV status, pregnancy and uh, assessment of co-infection, history of medication and uh, not mandatory, but in some conditions we are uh, uh, taking the liver function test also. And uh, after assessing the social and final situation, we are providing TB preventive treatment to the beneficiary. Next slide, please. So, we have currently three regimen. One is the six months isoenergid, another is the three months of isoenergid rifampentine, that is a weekly, and another is the three months for isoenergid rifampicin. Uh, so, uh, and shorter regimen, uh, the government of India and national TB elimination program is Increasing for the shorter resume uh, from this year to the next. Next, please. So, uh, individual on the TPT will be monitored by the uh, clinician, and uh, we are screening for the four symptom: cough, fever, night sweat, weight loss, any side effect, and sign symptom of TB MERS. In between the uh, TB preventive treatment, if they have, so we are referring to them uh, for the uh, further evaluation of TB and uh, through the diagnostic process through the NAT, LP and all this thing. Uh, please, next slide please. So, capacity building is uh, going on through the platform provided by the WHO Swasti Grukul and uh, there is a module for self-learning module is also so, there. Uh, so, any Dr. Sir, uh, Dr. Arvind, sorry that? to interrupt you, uh, but uh, I, and we understand that TPT is a very detailed topic and to present uh, the, uh, the topic in 10 minutes where it is very difficult time still you have tried to put things in a nutshell and we'll try to take up questions during the questions round uh, okay. so uh, thank you for your presentation uh, we'll have to move to uh, mr. Uh, Melinth from uh, Grovel foundation yep 
good evening to all i know it's very difficult to hold people uh, awake after lunch and being the last speaker very difficult i can see most of the bags are packed so i won't uh, take long not more than 5 minutes just 7 to 8 slides each slide not more than 30 seconds this is about uh, uh, we have heard about nutrition kits being distributed uh, so we wanted to see how we can digitize it uh, we have seen the e rupee being launched in september and uh, we have just uh, tried with one poc where we have used uh, e rupee digital vouchers which have been handed over to the beneficiaries next slide please uh, the process flow uh, was very simple the beneficiaries were already identified uh, grovel foundation works in poor gidc and most of our beneficiaries are from uh, the catchment area of poor gidc uh so we have been doing uh, the kit uh, distribution work uh, since uh, many years now so uh, we already have a list of uh, beneficiaries identified we also had as a proof of concept identified a grocer from where uh, we intend to distribute the kits using the e rupee voucher uh, next slide please uh, just to give you a small uh, hint about i i believe everybody has heard of e rupee but uh, just for information of everybody going forward not exactly knowing when but uh, in soon in very uh, very uh, times coming we will see all the uh, what do you say the hard currency notes going away from our wallets and all the currency would be available in digital form so uh, keeping that in mind we wanted to see the ease with which these vouchers can be redeemed by the beneficiaries next slide please this is just a number of kits that we have distributed next uh that's the again we can skip this next uh this is just the photograph which where we can tell you how this entire concept was done we created a e rupee voucher and we handed this voucher to the beneficiary the beneficiary has to go to the identified grocer show this voucher Uh, redeem the voucher in terms of uh, uh, the kit uh, collection the grocer gets on scanning of the voucher the grocer gets uh, the money credited after the beneficiary gives the otp which is linked to his mobile phone so th that's how the financial transaction takes place money is credited to the grocer and grocer hands over the kit to the beneficiary next slide please uh, one more next slide Uh, we did talk with the beneficiaries and we understood the beneficiaries were excited to know that they don't have to come to our place to collect the uh, the kits neither our teams had to put in efforts to put the kit together and then pack it and give it hand it over to them the beneficiaries had the advantage of collection of the kit at their uh, convenience and we would actually get a digital footprint of when and who has actually availed the kit and we can actually have a follow up activity if somebody has not taken the kit and this uh, kit distribution also can be linked to leading and lagging indicators in terms of uh, weight and any other parameters that we would like to do next slide please i think that's that's in nutshell i would not take much longer time uh, the presentation is there but i believe we have heard a lot and we would uh, like to use the nidan uh, what is it the van to identify the patients in the poor gidc to make poor gidc at least tb free uh, thank you thanks to deepak foundation thank you thank you mr milin so uh, we'll have uh, the session open but before that we'll have 2 minutes from piramal can you please uh, briefly speak about the acf part thank you sir uh, so i am narendra uh, from piramal and uh, i'm really feeling like you know host of the deepak foundation because i have been associated with deepak foundation earlier working in piramal so aswasan campaign abhi chalaya gaya tha kareeb 8 uh, uh, months ago humne january mein shuru kiya tha isko kareeb 21 states mein aur 174 districts ko isko liya tha tribal districts ko aur it was appreciated by the president of india also aur isme kuch नए हमने इनोवेशंस भी किए थे और हमने करीब मोर देन टेन थाउजेंड न्यू केसेस आइडेंटिफाई किए थे इसमें थ्री मंथ्स के अंदर और इसमें आईसी वेन हमने चलाई थी मैं प्रेजेंटेशन इसलिए नहीं दे रहा हूँ कि 
माय वीडियो इज इट सेल्फ सेल्फ एक्सप्लेनेटरी और डाटा भी उसमें है सो कैन आई रिक्वेस्ट प्लीज टू प्ले दैट वीडियो थैंक यू वीडियो क्या इस वीडियो इज देर I think there is an issue with the video. They haven't kept that, so you can just explain that. Okay. So, करीब 1120 इसमें blocks थे उसमें और one crore three lakhs के around हमने इसमें जो है prism tube को screen किया था one crore three lakhs और four percent करीब हमारा prism tube identification था इसके अंदर और चार percent जो national हमारा एक guideline है वो कहता है कि चार एक्टिव केस फाइंडिंग में करीब पाँच परसेंट केसेज भी हम आइडेंटिफाई करते हैं तो वेल एंड गुड वी कुड रीच फाइव फोर परसेंट पॉजिटिव केसेस न्यू केसेस और हमारा जो पाँच परसेंट प्रिजेंटिव कहते हैं नेशनल गाइडलाइन की पाँच परसेंट के करीब जो हमारा प्रिजेंटिव आइडेंटिफिकेशन होना चाहिए वो भी हम लोग करीब फोर तक इसमें अचीव कर पाए थे तो डेट्स वाई और इसका जो प्रोसेस डॉक्यूमेंटेशन है इस इट्स अवेलेबल इन टी इंडिया की वेबसाइट पे भी ये गवर्नमेंट ने शेयर किया हुआ है तो इस तरह से हमने इस जनरी को जर्नी को कंप्लीट किया था इसमें 21 स्टेट्स में और अभी हम लोग जो है सेवन स्टेट्स में 75 ट्राइबल डिस्ट्रिक्ट्स में काम करने वाले हैं जिसमें हम लोग टीवी फ्री पंचायत से स्टार्ट करने वाले हैं और धीरे धीरे हम आगे बढ़ेंगे और इसको टू तक सारी पंचायत को फ्री करने का और टीवी फ्री डिस्ट्रिक्ट जो है हमारा उसको डिस्ट्रिक्ट तक लाने का कोशिश करेंगे हम लोग तो इस तरह से हमारी नेक्स्ट जर्नी आगे रहेगी सो दिस वाज द ब्रीफ ऑफ दैट आश्वासन एंड आर वे फॉरवर्ड थैंक यू थैंक यू नरेंद्र सो थैंक यू ऑल द स्पीकर्स वी आर रियली हम्बल टू सी सच गुड पार्टिसिपेशन इन दिस इवेंट एंड we are happy to see that so many people are working in the sector of diagnostics working new uh, working on new uh, areas where which hasn't been explored i'm sure in the future we will not be facing this issue of missed cases because that is what is actually hurting the program when we talk about tb elimination the cases which we are missing right now so can we open the session uh, can we have some questions from the audience uh, can you be very precise with your question and be very precise with whom you are asking this question a uh, fuse film ki jo apne machine bataya tha uska cost kitna hai plus uska recurring cost aur per patient cost yadi aap bata paye to please पर पेशेंट कॉस्ट तो अभी तक वर्कआउट नहीं किया है बट दिस इज द न्यूली इनोवेटेड इक्विपमेंट सो इट इज कम्प्लीटली कॉस्ट इज डिपेंड ऑन द वॉल्यूम एंड करंटली वी आर नॉट गेटिंग द वॉल्यूम दैट इज द रीजन वी आर नॉट एबल टू गिव दैट मच रूटीन एक्सरेज वॉट वी आर गेटिंग इन द मार्केट वो कॉस्ट में नहीं मिल रहा है सो नियर अबाउट ये फोर्टी फाइव टू फिफ्टी कंपेयर टू लाइक एवरीथिंग लाइक डिटेक्टर मशीन with ai everything we can provide but definitely if uh, this is for the noble cause so we can request our management to give some discounts on that definitely we can work out for that so why i am asking if i uh, go to some csr okay so what cost i should say that uh, it will definitely be around will, yeah yeah yes sir i will share my number definitely we will discuss and we will work out something better for that because these for some noble cause so definitely we are also not looking at profit okay i think many of the corporates would be interested in this because this brings lot of visibility to them also yes sir yes sir i, I understand i understand because uh, uh, morning also there is one question we have heard that it is a uh, operating uh, operating of the equipment so these are very handled and very easy to operate so i think uh, this will fit in what we are looking at uh, anybody else
Um, so these are basically more of a comments and not the question. Uh, one is uh, really good to hear about the progress, uh, Dr. Amreen, what you have kind of presented. Uh, and maybe offline, maybe we need to connect. Uh, USAID is also supporting some of the pediatric TB case finding initiative uh, through TIFA and other grants where we can actually think of you know, how you can, we can facilitate your phase one and two of the implementation pilot. So that is on radar and maybe we will discuss it offline. Uh, second, I think uh, uh, on the, uh, uh, the IIT Madras, I think, uh, I think this is a great journey to her, and and maybe uh, we can also think in what are the partnerships options you are thinking of, and where uh, potential uh, collaboration can happen. I think overall we are looking forward to it, and some of the uh, potential operations research, if you have to, the NTP and all other, we can kind of jointly put together. And last part, I think uh, uh, this has been a uh, journey, uh, the Fuji film, I think this is one, but uh, maybe we can actually map out because at least in today's presentation, there were five to seven initiatives were discussed where they were talking about active case finding. Uh, so we really do not have much time. So uh, I think I request union to create that mapping exercise from all states where the active case funding drive is happening. And if someone is actually in uh, process of procuring something, then like we can actually think of you now asking them to consider it because then this can give them a, a, a volume which they are looking for. So I think collectively we can support each other and get the most efficient products out in the market. But yeah, that were my thoughts. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Shah. So as you told, we were on the same lines. There was a thought process of creating a consortium in Gujarat where people can put in their efforts, their new innovations, their practices, and also corporates can connect and uh, link uh, themselves with all the agencies who are interested in partnering with them. So this is what we were uh, uh, into, and we are trying to develop a framework of taking it further. Uh, there are not, yeah. Sorry, I, I, I just wanted to complete because Sometimes no, uh, there was a criticism overall about the ACF that like you are just finding the cases and you are not completing the entire continuum of care. And where I see this panel just wanted to complete the loop here that there is a, what we can do actually is there is a, a diagnostic one which is someone is supporting active case winning drive like say, the agencies like Piramal Swastya who are actually ground level people who can actually do it at scale. Secondly, what I thought that once we ru rule out the TB, maybe through some of the innovative platforms, what our responsibility should be that once they are diagnosed with TB, we provide not only TB treatment but nutrition support and that also something innovative where near uh, e rupee vouchers. And those who are actually ruled out from TB and they are from the vulnerable pockets, let's say what they talk about, right? The, uh, we had a presentation from the uh, union on this IPT. So basically, we rule out and provide the INH preventive therapy. So nutrition support and INH preventive therapy together can actually prevent all of most of the TB cases in society. So I think when we present something as a in future, maybe jointly, that should be the case scenario that collectively we can how each one is contributing to the entire eco uh, the chain of the requirement. Definitely, that is the approach. Somebody wants to add? Yeah. yeah thank you very much. Uh, myself, uh, Dr. Apurva Kumar from uh, Paro Institute of Public Health, Paro University. So I'm very happy to see the technological advancement in addressing uh, TB issues. So I would like to put one point that you know, it is also very important to do cost effectiveness analysis for scaling it up. So like technological innovations like diagnostics, uh, like e rupee mechanism or any other or any innovative public health uh, programs. So I think uh, we should also invest in cost effectiveness analysis and uh, we also trying to, you know, upskill ourselves as an academic institution 
to strengthen ourselves in the area of uh, health technology assessment and we have started new course msc in health economics and technology assessment and that is the first in india to initiate after the uh, based on the guidance from department of uh, health research so one point is about uh, cost effective analysis of any technological innovation that happens and the second the role of academia uh, in you know capturing best practices in implementing uh, not as a direct implementer because we do not have that capacity but at least strengthening the capacity of implementers and i see our role there so uh, as a committed uh, academician i believe that along with all corporate colleagues researchers <coughs> and you know public health experts let us also include academia into the platform so that we can bridge the loop so it does not limited to only research or you know teaching or just implementation but also we can find out uh, the complete cycle of you know program designing till implementation till we get outcome thank you very much thank you dr apur so this is exactly the thought process of including academic partners uh, including implementing implementing partners and also people from the government uh, side so that all the thought processes uh, knowledge sharing and uh, a platform can be provided where all these people can come together and form a team and work together together for plugging in the gaps in the implementation and also in the research side uh, on the also on the same lines what dr shah told that uh, the uh, approach should be integrated and bringing all the uh, components into one uh, one package should be the idea while we go ahead so that is what uh, we have been uh, propagating and now we are into this uh, process of conceptualizing a tv free village concept where where corporates will not only be engaged in providing nutrition kits but they will be taking up village as a unit and doing all the activities that is required in a village to make it tb free so we are uh, we'll be categorizing villages into high prevalence villages and uh, we'll be selecting all the activities starting from active case finding and ending till tpt so this will be a complete package where corporates can get into uh, they can work with various partners they can work with various technical advice uh, uh, partners and academic partners also uh, so uh, thank you everybody for joining in uh, virtually and also in presence uh, trupti uh, you can take over Thank you so much, Dr. Akash. Uh, I understand you have clubbed the session five also on the consortium discussion and the TBP villages. So we are concluding the day for today with this uh, for the sessions. Um, I would request Dr. Hardik Nakshiwala and Ms. Sushma Bhosle to kindly felicitate our speakers. So kindly felicitate Mr. Amit Gadkari from Fuji Film. Ma'am, kindly felicitate Mr. Milan Rana Day. Dr. Hadi, kindly present to Dr. Amreen Sheikh. Ms. Sushma, kindly felicitate Dr. Shrikant Bhera. Dr. Hardik, I request you to kindly felicitate Dr. Raghavendra Sai. And I thank Dr. Arvind Kumar who joined us virtually. Thank you so much. for your presentation now i request dr vipul m trivedi the district tb officer vadodara for his closing remarks and the vote of thanks thank you all the speakers uh dr vipul just a second we have one session remaining i was like in a hurry to wrap up 
So we have one uh, MOU signing. Dr. Akash, would you like to take this up? I will request Dr. Apoorva and Dr. Arvind to please come in front. So as you were telling that uh, including academic partners is very essential for the going ahead. I will request uh, Dr. Zaipawa, Director Deepak Foundation to kindly join in. So this is, uh, we are having a formal uh, ex uh, exchange of MOUs uh, for partnering for research and academic uh, projects with these two universities in the area of health and research. What do we do? We yeah, you just yeah. exchange this. S.P. Savani University is based in Surat and uh, we have Parul uh, University. I would request Dr. Amar Shah to please uh, felicitate uh, DTO Vadodara. Can you please come here? Hmm. Yeah. Thank you for your support, Dr. Trivedi. Uh, uh. Also, I uh, would request Dr. Amar to kindly felicitate Dr. Ashendu, uh, City TB Officer Vadodara. Uh, he has been quite pivotal in organizing the conference. I uh, would request Dr. Trivedi to kindly come and give the vote of thanks. Good evening. Will not take a much of time. Will complete within five to seven minutes. First of all, I would like to thank Deepak Foundation for giving me this opportunity for the word of thanks. And my sincere appeal is, please, please, advances are there in NTEP, but don't forget the basics, right? I had seen in uh, my 25 years experience, patient who is suspecting for tuberculosis, they are not ready to give their samples. So counsel them and don't remain in that image, I will not suffer from TB. We had seen the TB champion, who is a hockey player. In spite of that, he got infection. So please don't remain in that image. TB to na thai, TB to na hoi. Mujhe simple cuff hai, me simple nahi dunga. So we have to focus on that for proper counseling. And 
I would like to thank Deepak Foundation because they had adopted four of PHC from our district in Baroda Taluka. They are giving 89 kits to the TB patients. And again, for organizing this uh, very good conference, that is National Conference Fostering Partnership to End TB. So big clap for uh, Deepak Foundation, please. So, <clears throat> and want to thank all the organizers from top to bottom of Deepak Foundation, from upper level to the grassroots level people. We had worked a lot for making this event successful. And I would like to thank VMC Commissioner, Trustee Sri Deepak Bhai Mehta, Mr. A.M. Tiwari, Honorable Union Minister, who had not joined us, but thank to them. Then retired IAS, then our Rajendra Joshi, DDG, our respected CDHO ma'am, who had not came because of a busy schedule. Then uh, DTOs from other states. And I would like to thank STSU team, then team, the union, then Kaj Jilla Sarpanj, and to all corporates who are supporting in NTEP program, and those who are attending virtually, and all the panelists, dignitaries, and the organizing team again of the Deepak Foundation. By this conference, I think we had got many new things, like a urine test. No one think about the urine test. By urine test, you will find that the tube positive or not. So, so many new things we are supposed to know. So, thank you again and thank you all who are helping to make this event very successful in front of curtain and behind the curtain. So, thank you very much. Thank you all again. Thank you, Dr. Vipul. And with this, we come to the end of this today's event. And I thank to all the participants for joining us and staying with us throughout the day. Thanks to all the virtual, uh, virtual participants and the speakers who were there with us. And we conclude for the day. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice evening. <laughs> Have a nice weekend. Thank you.